couldn't tell you anything about the characters or the story, but it was uh, it was fun to play. Well, hopefully they make a Gears adaptation that's really good, right? In TV or mute movies, that's gonna be that's gonna be cool and fun and not something well, to worry about. Well, I think about. Microsoft Microsoft owns shooters in terms of their um, show adaptations. They they got a pretty good track record uh, so far, so I think that's you know it's reasonable to to say. Lies. What was that? That's that's no. what he says, right? In in Wonder Woman film. Lies. Lies. When she talks about love says, or something. Then I will destroy you. Oof. Oh, that's such a that oh, line that chills that me to the funny. bone. It does. It makes me oh. quiver <laughs> with fear. <laughs> One day we'll only speak in references. That's, it'll be a different language. It'll be quotes. Our lives around. will turn into Darmok. Is that what you're yes. saying? That will be our life. And an alien species um, will be like, I just gotta watch all of their media and then I will understand them. Oh, Light right. And you've gay. given us a watch together. You've, you've given us a watch together, Link Mahler. What, what deviousness have you planned for us? I got us? fucking it's a thing on the, the studio just pops into the screen saying, now would be a good time to have ads. Like, thanks. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. We just started <laughs> two seconds ago. That was YouTube, though, isn't it? You know that they mean every second would be a good time to have ads. That's what they're talking about. Like, what if you ran ads right now? It's a great time. It's like, no, it isn't. You You're fucker. a liar. You're a dead liar. By the way, um, mm -hmm. I, have, I, I guess I never noticed it before, but YouTube has like a whole section of movies that are free with ad breaks in them. So um, my folks at home have been using that to watch all kinds of different movies. And they have... A re they have a really big library, so as far as I know, it comes with YouTube. YouTube's ju YouTube just has this big list of movies you can watch uh, if you can, you know, stand ads every once in a while. But not a bad um, what is it called? Free with ads mm. movies. Um, how do I find the? Oh, I think you click on free. Oh, YouTube movies and TV is the channel. And then they have browse and free with ads, and they have all sorts of stuff. They have they have the they have a, the uh, a season of classic Popeye from 1960. They have the Ghost Stories English dub. Oh my goodness, yes! <laughs> oh, Fringy, they have all 16 seasons of Red vs. Blue. That's interesting. Oh, okay. What else um, they got on here? People saying oh, I lied oh, that we're doing mix. an EFAP Suicide Squad. No, it's called The Fate of It. We're just, we're just going to talk about where it is right now, okay? Because it's, it's funny. But we'll do that later. For now, we're talking about the other thing in the title. Good Lord. All right? All right. Give us a chance. Um, which, to be fair, we may as well just get into. Uh, you, you all we'll know. This is this is this this is this funny thing that we uh, do sometimes where we, we look at like the rest of the world's perspective on what's wrong with the MCU. Um... You, you guys know as well as we do that the problem is the horrific writing and the horrible sort of approach to script writing, basically. Like, the, the, yeah. the, the respect of the craft is gone, and that everyone wants to create a really grand na narrative about exactly what the problem is, and they come up with all kinds of crazy they ideas. Have unique insight. They have the, the key to the success of the MCU. If only they would listen to you. But... Yeah, like hiring the wrong writers, uh, people with no experience, and then people who don't respect the process, and then not spending much time on it, and then not having a script to start before you go. All the foundational stuff that just crashes and burns everything. They've done it over and over again. We have all the information to reflect it. All the, uh, the, the videos that I've done on Doctor Strange and Quantumania, they dig into like the assembled and all behind the scenes stuff, and you just get quotes that are really, I think, made to indicate that there's a passion and a, and a, wow, we did this even though we did this. And then you're like, oh, wow, you did that. And then they're like, huh? Well, no, I mean, isn't it great that we made something so cool despite that? <laughs> and you're like, hmm. Probably revealed too much there. Uh, especially when knowing the only thing from Disney that we've very much like unequivocally enjoyed and consider pretty damn good is the thing that we found out was redrafted several times. Uh, in recent years, I mean, of course. So it's kind of funny, but that's, uh, it's, it's relatively simple for us. But we've got a video. This is recommended by, uh, well, I guess I could say the, the EFAP community to an extent. And so we're going to check it out. It's called The Five Things Marvel Can Do to Save the MCU. Now, okay. Dear think... Kevin. Yes. 
That's the, yeah. yeah that's but what I was going to say would be fun. Uh, this is this is a good old fashioned uh, core EFAB host episode, right? No, no disgusting guests ruining everything. Just no distractions. Three. Yeah. We're gonna have uh, Fringy and Rags, and you have to. You, we'll do Hello. five each. Maybe that makes more sense because I don't want to make you fucking stay here forever. But you've got to do separate ones, one at a time. Guesses for what will be in this list, and then we'll see. We'll give you points according. Okay. So. Oh, wait, so five things Marvel can do to save the MCU. Yeah. What do you I imagine will be in this video? What would what would a video like this say? Yeah, what what's this video's opinion going to be as to how to save the MCU? Um, I'm going to go ahead and guess less to no multiverse going forward will be part of the equation. Okay, rags, your turn. I think, God, I'm half on half on whether I want to say the literal opposite of that of <laughs> more multiverse. More multiverse, just do it right. <laughs> um, but I'm going to go with more. More references to the comics. I think okay. I um, yeah, some of these, like, say, for example, he said, be more faithful. Uh, would that count? Or would you say that's a different thing? Um, maybe. Depends on what he maybe uses as a reference. But eh, probably, like, more, re more, yeah, being more faithful to the comic origins, comic book origins and stories. All right. Frank, uh, your second. Uh, X-Men. X-Men. Like, it's just like X -Men. bring, bring yeah, in the X-Men. Yeah. Yeah, the X-Men. <laughs> okay, Rex. I'm gonna go with more cameos, uh, more like interconnectivity between movies uh, in regards to characters. So like characters being in other people's movies, not having movies be like one person solo acts that focus on them. But we need to have more um I guess, bleed through in terms of when characters show up. Mm-hmm. Bringy, you're number three. Uh, I would imagine that he's going to say that there needs to be a clearer, overarching narrative structure. Like, like that... Like, <laughs> like a that singular kind of villain? One. Well, in the same way that there kind of was an overarching structure leading up to Thanos, my guess is that he's going to say that we need, like, a proper overarching structure. Okay. Rags, you're number three. Classic costumes. That's a good guess. Three, four, yeah. <laughs> Three, number four. Okay, so a fourth one. Um, uh, hmm. Less TV shows. Interesting. Rags, number four. Um, wait, is it, is it, didn't Kevin himself say that? So hasn't that already been said as part uh, of the plan? Maybe he might say it anyway. Maybe, and maybe. Kevin didn't <laughs> say that. It was, um, Bob Iger said that. Less, okay, less okay. projects in general. Oh, Bob it. Huh. Yeah. If I was him and I was looking at it, what would I say that they should do? Maybe we need to have less, less injected comedy. Less out of place comedy or more tonal consistency. That's fair. Bring you your last one. Oh, and um, I, I will get bonus points if he specifically mentions. Um, uh, I'm, I'm blanking out on his name, the Avengers writer. Um, Joss Whedon? Uh, help me. Joss Whedon. If he specifically mentions Joss Whedon, I get a bonus point. Um, I like how you've just ordained <laughs> this extra world like you get a bonus oh, yeah. point. Where yeah. I have no bonus bonus points baked into my like uh, answers. You gotta seize those opportunities to uh, make up the rules as you go. Well, I suppose my fifth answer is gonna be something to do with CGI, something like less CGI. Ooh, stuff yeah, CGI is a general umbrella. I don't know yeah. how he's gonna convey it specifically, but my guess will be that there will be criticisms of CGI that ultimately amount to either less of it or it needs to be better. Real costumes, probably, because I had said like more authentic costumes, like classic costumes, but yours is. Yours would be a good one for, like, if he said, like, actual costumes, not having everything CGI'd on faces and things like that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing that's that, a good that, one. that will be here. That'll be my number five. Oh. What does that leave me? What would he say? That's the thing. Because we would say dumb <laughs> stuff like oh, yeah, well-written yeah. characters and plot lines that make sense. You know, crap like that. So what would he say? What do people want? People want... um. Something to do with hiring 
particular like uh, no maybe he's gonna say stop hiring super famous actors and hire people who care more about the or only hire people who care about the comics only hire people who really care about superheroes don't just hire people who don't care about the about the stuff all right and that is five for each uh, of you is there any sense that I you'd like say, to change your answers but you can't copy the other person's i will mm. say i would never have guessed uh rags as number five i don't think he would i don't think he'd have any perspective on like who the actors are that would be my assumption whoever they are is whatever maybe i can't really remember uh, about, uh you know comic books or not i w i think you might do that for like writers maybe writers and directors but i don't think it would maybe yeah that. maybe can i can i make that fifth one sort of like a general overall have more well i sort of already kind of did that you with already my did, others so. yeah I, uh, you to be fair, i've so, offered you you could both change your answers just don't change, yeah. yeah i don't want to think i might change yet. my f i think i, am, I might uh, change my fifth one i'd have to think <laughs> what what would be said um i'm trying to think of older movies and kind of things that made those maybe okay um i think his number five will be to don't be afraid of being experimental and kind of trying new ideas you think he said that maybe i can't really remember nando that much what was the last thing we covered from him oh uh, well the thing is i don't remember very well either i'm just well, he just blends in, in with general, the rest of them. Like, like, yeah, yeah, that's the video issues. essays to yeah, only ever talk about like Marvel and DC for the most part. Like that's kind of. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm go thinking. with that though. Uh, okay. I think he's gonna say right. try. You know, be experimental. Don't be afraid to try some like new tones. Like try a horror movie. Try like a a mystery you know themed kind of movie. You know, try you know be be experimental. Try new things. Uh, you know, break free of the the formula. Yeah, that's it. Break free of the formula. Yeah, okay. Could be, could uh, be. I don't want to change mine. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm locked in. I'm, uh, I'm curious to see... If it will be right. a curious adventure to see what we got. The yeah, Marvel... What we're, what we're dealing with here. Again, it, it always is funny, the idea of, like, five things, because there really is one thing, which is you need better scripts. You need, um, you need to... You need, you need, need to, to respect the pro script process. For... Simple as that. Yes, you need to have some amount of... you. Because, of course, the umbrella under that is finish your scripts before you start production, um, redraft, don't don't write it in a week. Like, maybe spend a little bit more time. Maybe don't have set pieces as the guiding structure for your uh, every single film that you make. Like, the, the ones that have already been figured out and, and uh, pre -vis. You know, stuff like that. Have ha Let the writers talk to each other so that they yeah. know what the other one is doing. So that they can maintain some semblance of consistency. And then other things that would be adjacent to it is maybe get people who give a shit. Like, don't get people who oh, say, like, oh, well, I didn't really know anything about the comics. Or alternatively, people, you know, you could get people who say, well, I didn't know anything about the comics. And then I read a bunch of them, just so that I had some familiarity with the character and the mythos. Things like that. You guys excited to find out? <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, well, it's funny, I say I'm curious, but it's more so just the bingo card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, that's uh, the maybe, interesting uh, element, uh, I, maybe well, I won't cool say anything, because, yeah. like I said, I know it's five, but, uh, we'll, we'll see who wins, who gets the most. The Marvel right. Cinematic Universe is in trouble, and I know. I, I like this, by the way, uh, already, because it's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> like, it's, um, in trouble, is putting it lightly, They I'd were say. in trouble back at Black Widow. They were, that was, I yeah, wonder, that was trouble. I wonder if I look through Nando's uh, a, a video list, how far we'd have to go back before he was really starting to get critical and got with the picture. Um, uh, I think that the first time that people were starting to get critical was Thor Love and Thunder, yeah. and it was a slow trickle from there. Yeah, and but that's what you remember um, Moon Knight had a bit of a, a drop-off that was quick at the end. People, it did. People it really did. turned on it. That was because um, usually... that was 2022. But if it because it was it was more so the reason why it Thor feels noteworthy is because that was the first time that there was a negative reception when it came out. Not two weeks later. Not a month like, later. Not two months later. It was when it came out. People were unhappy with it. These kinds of videos are so behind in the conversation. Like I said, 2019. Well, we were talking like, about the trouble that the MCU is in because we you know they're lagging. 
yeah, you're like, the plans are awful, what they're going to be releasing, but the, you know, maybe they could be good in execution, and then of course they weren't as they came out, but also like the legal trouble with Black Widow, the stuff with COVID and its release, fucking it up, and it was like, and then the, what, it was in Black Widow itself, and it was like, and then all the stuff to do with the blip and how all the stories were unthreading, like, completely. When was, uh, when was Loki again? Uh, that was, like, the third project, so I think that was, like, the middle of 2021. Yeah, so because that Something was like the that. we were like, oh, and it's I, dead. Fuck. Well, a it's way destroyed. of thinking yeah, about but... it is it's like um, it's it's like you, the iceberg has already been struck, and you're yeah. like, well, the boat's still on the water, so we're all good. It's like, oh, but it's like a fatal blow. It's uh, it's it's going down. It's like, yeah, but we're still above water, and it's it's like now that the tip is starting to like go down beneath the waters, we're like, oh shit, I think we're in a bit of trouble here. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, they'll say the MCU is dead when, like, <laughs> there's no more movies coming out. They'll be like, oh my god. Well, it's, it's already really bad when you're in a place that yeah. you've had two out of three of your films this year were not profitable. One of them was um, a dramatic failure, and the television shows have also not been successful this year. What, what were the ones that. Because Secret Invasion came out this year. What was the. Oh yeah, Loki, which had, like, what, a 40% lower viewership than uh, season one? Well, don't forget. Uh, at least. From the premiere, what was the other one? Well, was what do you mean? One? We just watched it. Oh no, that's this year. Ec oh Echo right. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but yeah, sure, we could throw that in. It. What was the other one last year? Uh, was it just Secret Invasion? Was that the first one? Do you even um, think over at Marvel they they like looking uh, to remember Echo or have it written down or anything? <laughs> it's just like that wasn't. No, that was a joke. We popped that, that out, out as to, a joke. It was. Yeah, a beef. they threw that shit out to die. Yes. Oh, Before yeah, being, I don't remember. I really mean, the fact year. we can't remember is... Like, it's weird, because I remember all the Star Wars shows, as odd as that, like, sounds. But I remember all the Star Wars shows. But I, but the, the MCU ones really seem like they just... I'll, uh, you know? I'll give it to you, I do as well, but the, the it's absolutely the opposite of any kind of, like, fond element that makes me remember them, right? It's like all Oh, yeah, horrors. it's not because, yeah. They're mm -hmm. just, for some reason, I just find them more like memorable i don't think it, well star wars hasn't crossed into doing what marvel has done yet right they haven't they haven't made an actual show called like blimpsky and it's just this character in the background it's like they haven't actually done that um, star wars yet i guess uh i guess what's interesting is that andor uh could have been like oh, that, that is funny actually yeah. like you're making a show based on a um a, one of the characters in an ensemble cast for one movie but because it was so good <laughs> Nobody really thinks about it. It cancelled out the. Uh... Yeah, because yeah, that's what everyone it. was it's saying, and I don't think show. that's unfair. That it's like, why would you make a show based on a character? I don't think it's anyone knows. Exactly. I don't, I don't well, it's, it's part unfair. of what would have helped, you know, not give any coverage to that show. That's that would have been. Yeah. You know, well, it's just like a pragmatic thing. I guess it's the, the the point would be that if Echo was really good, it would have had the possibility to essentially um, escape the the situation that it was in of being based on a really obscure character that, like, the vast majority of people haven't heard of. Well, like, so Andal being... Nothing Marvel show. Andal being praised and recommended is a meme, like, within the Star Wars community. Yeah. That it's like, oh, yeah, those Andor fans. Nobody's doing that for Echo, you know? No, 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 nobody's, nobody's recommending that Echo. Marvel uh, productions for the last, like, three, four years. Where are the, like, oh, you guys, you really got to see Loki. It's like the Andor of, you know, Marvel. Oh, how much of that is happening, really? Dude, they said the Secret Invasion was going to be the Andor of Marvel. Yeah, that was that was hilarious. Oh, look, it's grounded. It's by the way, we're seeing I this. They said strategy. it was something else. No, so um, they said it was. They said that one was grounded and gritty. Because remember, the strategy was Ant Man, Ant Man is really Jesus. important. That was the strategy, and then Guardians was. You know, it's the last one. It's the last one. It's the last one. James Gunn's the last one. Uh, and then Secret Invasion was. It's gritty. It's grounded. It's dark. Ooh. And then the Marvels was, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun. It's fun, guys, it's a fun, fun, a lot of fun. fun. You're having so having much fun. fun. I decided to have fun with this one. Unusual, yeah. I know. The first person to say it's not a disaster, and I do think that's true. It, Many articles... No, video, no, it, it's, okay. it's a disaster. What, what it, metric it is. is it not a disaster? Like, there's so many. They, Financially, it's a disaster now. right now. This is the worst case scenario for them. They've been releasing yeah. shit tons that are not making... Like, They're some of them... Money that, this is like this is well, and, the and bear in mind, kind of bear in mind the amount of crazy stuff that's happening behind the scenes. Daredevil is being completely like reworked, completely to some yes. extent, massively reworked and overhauled. Um, I'm pretty sure they're reshooting like half of the new Captain America movie at this point. Like that, that film has gone. I thought through it was even more than that, like because they've got they're switching out. 
it's when they like, like done and then they said it was like I think it was, terrible um, as i understand it it's like they're switching out like one of the main like groups in the in the film yeah. like the serpent society the the captain america bad guys like that they're switching them out and it's like dude what you shot the movie like <laughs> and then you just got to completely change well, we know it. and then of course the marvel's at... got heavy reshoots ant-man got heavy reshoots oh, yeah, doctor yeah. strange got um, heavy reshoots like like unusually the only one heavy was Loki. Loki was unique in that it had no reshoot season two. That it was unique. It was like the first Marvel project in like years that didn't have reshoots. Mm. Which I can is believe hilarious. that because when we were watching it, um, it did seem to have some deliberate artistry to it. Um, fucking no, nothing made sense. Totally non nonsensical. The character sucked balls, but there was clearly work that was put into the cinematography and like the set spoilers. They haven't seen our Loki coverage yet. It's coming yeah, out now. It's coming out. Yeah. But yes, um, true. And also, you look at this year, it's like, they're now in a position that they absolutely didn't want to be in, which is they got one movie coming out this year. They got one movie, and in terms of their shows, what is it, Agatha? That's like the other one that they got coming out this year. That's mm -hmm. awful. They want they want three movies a year, and like three TV shows a year. That's what they want. Yeah, they, because they can't do that That's what I'm getting at. It's like, so, we agree, financially and like, logistically, the functionality of the MCU, disaster. It's like, what else is there? Critically? Like, it's pretty disastrous, dude. There's, mm -hmm. uh, nobody's talking, everyone talks about the glory days of phase one, two, and three. Nobody talks about how phase four or five are any good. That's just not a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, most people begrudgingly have to be like, okay, fine, I guess, you know, Thor, Love, and Thunder, yeah, bad. Moon Knight, okay, bad. Quantumania, yeah, bad. But I mean, Black Panther 2 was really good, and it's like, no, it wasn't. It just, it, it was awful. So it's like, oh, fucking fine. Uh, no Way Home. It's like, yeah, but No Way Home doesn't really represent much of a flotation device for the MCU, does it? Um, not with more and more awareness of how everything happens behind the scenes. So I don't know. I'm just trying to think, what is the metric? And if it's just, well, I enjoyed them. You're like, okay. I that guess, anything, I yeah. guess that's not a disaster in that way. Videos tend to really sensationalize things when in reality, I think Marvel isn't doing great. But the fact that they finally had one genuine flop doesn't mean the whole studio. Okay, okay. This is mega code. This is one mega genuine code. flop. What do we call like a movie? Batman the... I... <laughs> didn't make its money back. It didn't. Or the Marvels are almost. Well, he, was, he was talking about the Marvels. Yeah, he was talking I about the Marvels. Ant Man, Ant -Man okay. was not profitable. Is he one of those people uh, that's like, as long as the number is bigger on box office than it is on budget on IMDb, that is. Oh well, yeah, and of course, again, to have the regular conversation that we have to keep having, companies really care about opportunity cost. If you're spending two hundred million dollars and you're making four hundred million dollars, and you could have instead split that two hundred million into four movies that collectively made a lot more money than that. Exactly. There's a, you've, you're not doing well. It's I mean, not that's essentially enough. a reason why DC completely reset their whole universe. Well, yeah, Black Adam, I think, might have actually just been profitable, maybe, but it's like, that's not good enough. Like, it's not yeah. good enough at this point. They, they don't just want to be able to pay off the amount that they invested into any given film. They want to make money. They want to make a lot of money. They want to make the money that they used to make on these Marvel films, where regardless of like how the floor was like $600 million. And the ceiling was, you know, like $3 billion. That's what they want. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, to say the Marvels is like the only genuine flaw. But like, so what does genuine mean? Doing great. I guess. The fact that they finally I guess had one genuine, well, genuine flop means... doesn't mean the whole studio is done for. However. And, hmm. But the thing is, I don't think anybody's saying because the Marvels flop that the studio is done for. It's like, well, no, it's because of all of what's happened. Well, I feel so like I feel like the Marvels is just a line. symptom. I think I mean you know you could you could tie it up in the broader subject of you know superhero movie fatigue if that's what we want to call it of uh, superhero films in general are doing worse now than they they were before across the board DC and Marvel like because of course last year was I I'm, I think uh, Aquaman ended up actually. Making yeah. more money than Black Adam, um, it ended <laughs> yeah, up. Actually, I think so, yeah, it didn't do. It still didn't do. It's it's like less than half of what the first movie made. But um, but otherwise, I mean, goddamn, like looks Shazam, looks like uh, the Flash. Aquaman Two has made four hundred twenty four million worldwide. Yeah, which is not good for a two hundred million dollar budget, and it's not good compared to a billion dollars. But it's better than every DC film since Aquaman One, <laughs> which is funny. Damn. Um. But, the, but obviously, you know, The Flash was one of the biggest box office bombs of all time. 
And yeah, that this was all, like ultra leaning into the era of this era of superheroes and multiverse and everything. Of the audience's perspective mm. on superhero stuff, which is, is it worth my time? And they've decided no, which is no. gonna hurt. One of the big problems that they have is that they've they've still got several movies and their Avengers movies are meant to be multiverse, and really the multiverse is kind of like where the stuff that they can still leverage that they didn't create exists, but at the same time, we're already at a point where you say multiverse and people are like, oh, Jesus. I mean, fuck. Like, it's part of the strategy for marketing Madam Web is like, yeah, it's standalone, it's standalone, Oof. it's standalone. It's like, I think you're lying. I don't <laughs> think that's true. I, I think just... this is a multiverse film. Have the people been making videos about how it's like Dakota Johnson just, she knows what this is. Everyone she knows what this doesn't... is. Yeah. She clearly doesn't like it or want to be a part of it, which is really <laughs> funny. That's just funny that you, it could just be that obvious that your lead actress doesn't want to be a part of this. Yes, <laughs> that's going to be a fascinating bit of bit of sludge uh, to see what, what oh, they've yeah. done with that. It's gonna. It looks like it's going to make less money than Morbius. Oh no! <laughs> I know. Kevin Feige, I got your letter that was just a bunch of exclamation points, and I want to help. All so right. I'm going to give you advice. Yes, this is going to be yes, one of those five I'm things give Marvel you advice. can do. This. And this is not the first time we've covered videos like this. It's always, it's always crazy, wacky ideas that wouldn't actually solve the problem. But he says it will, mm -hmm. so let's give it a shot. Save the MCU yeah. videos. But unlike some of the others, this is not going to be one of those videos with vague, obvious advice like write the movies better or spend more time making them or. <laughs> I mean, more time two, making them. So, those two uh, things would help. When someone shoots himself in the face, and then they're like, can you advise me on how to do not die? Be like, oh, don't don't shoot yourself. And then you're like, well, that's pretty generic yeah. advice. Like, Yeah, but you're doing it. But that's I what mean, you're like, doing. It, it, if, it, like, if it's so obvious, why aren't they doing it? That's the, well, you need to I mean, pound this into their heads. If they spent more time working on these films, that would just give them more time to fix problems. It's like, I think and people treat this to generate more problems. Visual effects, possibly, but people then there's a, a lot of stuff. That... The idea that you have a script, which they don't even do, by the way, they don't even have a script when they start filming. But let's pretend they well, did. They have a script like, eventually. There wouldn't be any point in redrafting it because whatever, we kind of we'll figure it out as we go. And it's like, no, just redraft something once, and then look back on all the changes you made and how you didn't have those before, and now you do. Swear to God, I've been saying this for years. It's like just do a redraft, and you will then know the value of redrafting. Please, just try it one time. I beg you. Mm -hmm. It can be boring, sure. It can seem like a waste of time, but you can pay people to do it. Ain't that nuts? Yeah, you, you can have, hire with all the money that you're getting writer. Made, yeah. That'd be crazy. And yeah, so if someone said like, "Yeah, that's pretty vague advice," I'd be like, "This is the advice they need." I'm not even we kidding. can get specific. Well, I mean, yeah. we can start well, off by saying, yeah, you need to write better, and then we can get into the, well, yeah, we all the bullet points of do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. There's no point in talking about, like, characteristics of heroes and villains and arcs to go on when you're not even writing. Like, we've got to get you in the in the building first. Can't tell you which room to go to. Yeah, we, we need to agree that there is such a thing as a good script, and you need to understand what that looks like. It's, it's absolutely insane, because he's course, pretending any, as though more... the script writing process is as intact as you'd imagine it is, but all we know is that it's not. They don't really have a script the, writing process. No, the, the process is figure it out as you go along while we, the executives of Marvel, have ordained set pieces that you need to adhere to. And also, you don't get to talk to each other about like where your story leads and how it fits into the bigger picture. Someone said his point and is that everyone course. else already said it, so why would he just repeat that? No, his point was that that's too vague. Five things yeah, Marvel can do right. to save the MCU don't, is don't what he's saying here. Don't create the points for him. He yeah, said let him speak for himself. He's a big boy. He said um, that it's too vague. It's not, it's not helpful and then enough. Of course, spend more time. I mean, it's a little vague, but I mean, it points you in a direction, which is the amount of time you're spending making these films, increase it. Yeah. Just allow yourself more time to work on it. They literally, well, they the called Michael Waldron least. for MOM. They told him, like, yeah, write the thing. You have a week or whatever. And then they told him to scrap it, which he did. And then they said, all right, we've already started filming. Can you get in and help us write stuff? Yeah. Like, if you if it takes longer and it's just like, hey, you got one month to write a script, that's better than zero months to write a script. Or alternatively, hey, visual effects workers in the in the mines, in the dungeons, toiling, toiling in the dungeons. Yeah, and what's funny Here, then? You have a few more months to work on the shots. What's What's funny about that too is like, oh, so the problem was the not you didn't give Michael Waldron enough time. It's like, well, unfortunately, I don't know that giving him any more time would have solved the problem because he you then need a writer that knows what they're doing. 
Mm -hmm. All you would have Which done is maybe had a terrible uh, movie that looked better. I presume Which a redrafted Michael Waldron script box. is better than a single draft Michael Waldron script. Because oh yeah, redraft. Got to redraft. But gotta completely. Oh, wait, if he yeah. comes into shooting knowing what he's gonna do with the third act, that's gotta be better. <laughs> that would than be not neat. Knowing yeah. What to do. <laughs> yeah, like uh, how do I get? The... Normally, when you leave on a journey, it helps to know what your destination is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Instead of just, well, I'll be wherever I land up. Don't overwork the CG artist. This is not the end. Well, of I mean, it. that would be that would be that would a help. good thing to do. That would just would, be it would, more it would help from like the ethic, yeah, the <laughs> moral thing to do would be to yes, just speaking on that <laughs> level. Yes. I don't even like. What are we supposed to do with that one? Like, well, like, but like, yes, yeah. Though. Uh, don't the funny thing is, people. If we Let made a top thing. five things Marvel can do to save the MCU, number one would be the writing stuff, but the other four would probably include stuff like this. Like, yeah, with CG, give it the time it needs and the space it needs. Like, otherwise your movies are going to suffer forever. Yeah, the movie aesthetics, they are a part of your movie. It is a, you know, definitely has a visual component to it. It is a motion picture, so it needs to look good. You want it to look good. It can only help you if it looks good. In the Winter Soldier, I have specific issues that can be addressed directly and okay. measured within a few years. I'm also not. Oh, gonna... Wow, dude, this is pretty sweet. Then we, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm curious right. if you guys will be correct now. Who knows? Look, look, yeah, Magneto is going. Yeah, woohoo! I'm excited. See him there. He is hands excited. Yeah, he's going. Yeah, I'm yeah. excited to hear your ideas. Cyclops has given him the salute. All right. Oh, he's got all the uh, the X Men from the animated series there by the looks of it. Neato. Yeah, they got there's the old Gene, and there's Wolverine, there's Gambit, there's Rogue, uh, Rogue and Cyclops. Who's the Where's one on uh, the Jubilee? second to the left? Who's sec is that Jean, Jean oh, that's, Grey? That's Jean, yeah. Who's okay, Jean okay. Grey? Jean? Jean? Did you say yeah, Jean like Grey? Jean, yeah, Jean like Jean-Luc Picard. Jean-Luc Picard is her teacher. Hmm. To say stuff like give the directors more control because we don't you already know i do but i've forgotten exactly which yes. i know one of his points because he spends a long time on them but i've kind of forgotten which ones specifically happens. tried that and it didn't work phase four was pretty give the directors more control i feel like yeah that one's an entire discussion the whole you give them give directors more creative control it, it's uh, it's well like I mean, yes and no well there's the bright side it's, it's and the yes dark side no. Yes. Yeah, it's you're making a deal with the devil, sort of. When you do something like that, it can turn out really well. It can turn out horribly. It's just well, it's like, you're gambling on the cre the director's creative vision being good is what you're yeah, gambling on. Pretty much. Well, because yeah, when you have a director vision, who says, great, right, here's the vision, scene uh -oh. where the giant clown stabs Batman. Not even giant. You know what I'm getting at. It's a uh, the, the you know, you'd be like, oh, maybe maybe don't do that. Then a studio guy yeah. comes in and says, yeah, don't do that. And you're like, wow, studio guy, you're ruining the vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes that's what you get. Sometimes the vision's bad. I've said it before yeah. and I'll say it again. Nobody is keeping track of the times that studios saved movies or studios made a decision that people enjoy in movies because nobody cares. Yep. People only care when and studios destroy movies. Those are the, oftentimes those are the things that just don't, like, they don't make it into the movie so people never notice it. It's not there for people to see. You have to dig in that too, the yeah. info to find out that it happened. Well, and if like, I think if there's studio interference and makes a film better, you're not going to catch directors being like, yeah, 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 I know all of you are happy. But that was the studio doing that. I, my vision yeah, was ruined. Made the thing. Like, there just, there's no reason for that to happen. Dressed yeah. directly and measured within a few years. I'm also not going to say stuff like give the directors more control because we tried that and it didn't work. Uh, uh, I feel like I we know. tried it with I, I, people who didn't have good visions that didn't use well, good processes. I think what we got with Marvel was like the worst of both worlds in that the writers in a certain sense got to do whatever they wanted in that they didn't have to figure out how it slotted into the bigger picture. But on the other hand, like Marvel dictates a lot of the way that these films are made. It's not yeah. like the directors, they, they're like, here's your team for the most part. Here's the stuff that we've already got for you. Here's like the process. And you're like, the director on a Marvel movie is not the same as like a director on just a regular film. They, in a lot of ways, no. they don't have creative control, really, <laughs> at all. But also, And if you give a director creative control, but you don't give them the time, and you put them in a situation mm. where the way the movie is made is super rushed, then, I yeah. mean, all the creativity in the world, it's just not going to be able to be expressed in any meaningfully positive way. If, well, if one of these points I mean, was you need to start doing a hundred million dollar budgets and then someone says, yeah, but we had one of those, it didn't work. I'd be like, that both of you are insane. Like, this isn't even, this doesn't address, like, you know, it has to be a particular budget. It's like, well, no, good things, great things and terrible things can be made on any particular budget. And then 
Also, having examples of them that have failed or succeeded on a particular version doesn't tell you necessarily anything either. So in the same vein, saying we need more or less control is like, be specific. And, and it's funny because he's just derided the, the idea of being too vague. Like, so by, by a uh, increased control or limited control, what about the nature of, let's say, just for example, control of action scenes? Should that be given to the director or not? And has it been in several of these movies? Because we, we all seem to agree that Taika pretty much had 100% control over Love and Thunder. But I don't, I don't know if he did for the action scenes. I don't know if that's been a mainstay now well, it's, and all of it. It's been a pattern in Disney stuff, not just in the MCU, but in Star Wars, particularly in Star Wars. But the action scenes are shit. Um, we yeah, have to I, get, like, in, in general, something that I would probably say is you need to take a completely new, like, look on how you handle action scenes in these action-heavy films because the action is shit. Well, and, and what does it do for his point of view if I told him, like, you know, list me your favorite movies, and then he names five, and I go, oh, yeah, that one was made with basically no input from the director. It was all, like, committee. I was like, oh, shit. It's like, yeah, it's possible that they can be good. I think that we just need to agree on what the standard practice should probably be close to, and it's like, oh, yeah, respect the vision, but also have oversight, have limitations, try not to overspend, have people in place to, you know, cover all of these things to understand them and like, you know, maintain the integrity of the artistry while also respecting the fact that this is an enormous industry tied to like thousands and thousands of jobs. We get it. You know, the balance of money versus creativity and stuff. It's just the, it just sounds so weird to be like, we tried giving full control. We got love and thunder. So that doesn't work. It's like, well, so no, we have yeah, you're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I feel like that doesn't address anything. Like we had a bad president, so democracy um, has failed. Yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a very bold sort of thing to just say. Like, yeah, there should be less creative control. Probably, it's like, wow, that's uh, that's fucking bold, Jesus. Well, that's implication, uh, but maybe he would say, well, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just not going to use that as advice because I don't know what. Like, mm. maybe he would say, I don't know if that'll fix anything, but his ideas yeah. will fix it. So. Ah, yes, that's I'm also right. not going to say stuff like give the directors more control because we tried that and it didn't work. Phase four was pretty much the giving the directors the most control they've ever gotten phase, and it led Do, no, or is it no, or is it no. the opposite? Uh, but we had explicit remote. claims about uh, Black yeah. Widow that there were the, there's a director who refused the project because she wasn't given control. Like the yeah, yeah. I, feel, I feel like that's happened a lot the, of times. The reality is, if you want to look at the era when there was like the most creative control, you got to go back to like phase one. That's where you got to go back to in terms of like a, a lot of like. I mean, Thor, you know, people pointed out, Thor has, like, a visual style in terms of its cinematography that just isn't present in a lot of other Marvel films because Kenneth Branagh just got to make a Thor film. Iron Man, also, you know? I know it's same, technically, yeah. it's not Disney, but didn't this just happen with the new Jurassic World movie where the guy that we're going to have do it uh, uh, yeah, he left backed because out because of creative differences? differences? And it's the same thing that happened with... um. Uh, with uh, Solo, the directors left that because of creative differences, and then Ron yeah, Howard came. Oh, dude, Star Wars' his history right now is insane with yeah. creators leaving for control over the projects. And of course, this is a problem that stretches further back even than Phase Four. We know several stories of people who left the MCU because they weren't getting what they wanted out of control of well, the project. Well, Scott Derrickson left, but then nobody cared because uh, Sam Raimi was on, so everybody just kind of moved on and didn't give a shit that he left. Well, yeah, and most people who oh, love strange. Sam Raimi don't even believe. The MOM is much of a Raimi film outside of like shot references, which is sort of an again, yeah. The, the idea of creative control, it's like, yeah, maybe he had creative control on the camera to some extent, but how much control did he have over the script? I would almost use the word story to implicate like he's he's he didn't. It's not a Sam Raimi story. It's a it's a collection of stuff made in focus tested rushed and uh insane like systems that somehow did actually manage to produce enough money that they're going to be running a sequel for it i wonder how that'll probably do. doctor strange is, is one of the few things that they still have that they probably can expect to make money off of oh yeah whedon did uh he left the mcu after avengers too because of creative differences so yeah that's right it was really by the time that you get into phase two it was already starting to get not great on yes. the uh on that yeah, and because... fuck, even even in phase one, you know, Iron Man two. I think that you can get that kind of Iron Fist sort of grasp on on all of this in terms of control if it's working. Now that it's not, people are gonna be like, hmm, seems like that was a I bad think that's idea. The thing. They had the attitude of, well, it's all been working so far. Um, I mean, it's 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 funny. There seem to be similarities between the way Marvel does it and that whole Bioware magic thing. You you remember the idea of like, oh, well, it it always gets there in the end. 
except then Anthem didn't work, and, like, Mass Effect Andromeda didn't work, and it's like, oh shit, yeah, I guess the way that you're doing it is not reliable, just because it's managed to work so far doesn't mean, and uh, yeah, and then it gets worse and worse and worse in terms of the way that Marvel makes stuff, to where now it's like a runaway train that's going to be very difficult to stop. Yeah, and it's super weird that he's got this perspective as far as I'm concerned in terms of, uh, you know, uh, we've tried giving them full control in Phase 4, so now it's time to stop. It's just like, you're wrong, and you've got a really bad conclusion from being wrong as well. But, mm -hmm. uh, I suppose, that's what's happening. It's a multiverse of madness, which I like. Eternals, which I think is better <laughs> than people problem, give it. Well, that's, that's part of, well, again, it's a little thing, but it's part of the problem is that you liked it. Yeah, Which it was, I know it I'm was policing. I, yeah, it's like I know I'm policing what people like, but like that—that that is the problem. The problem is that the worst movie like ever is created, and you come in even now that you've had time to process it, you're like, yeah, I like that movie. I was like, no, that that shit is the problem. It's uh, the the dramatic success of films that are practically anti-films in terms of we know so much about the process of it. I'm surprised that he's still seemingly chill with all of it. And treats it as well. Doesn't it undermine his opinion? Isn't the the going sort of perspective on it as a as a as a phase four film is that it was given Sam Raimi had complete control. Like if he's gunning for that narrative, which is insane. Um. So that, how how does he make the point that more he control not is know. not something we want? You know what I mean? Well, like he must I, not I, know, right? Does he know? <laughs> does he know? I don't. Well, I would. I would. I we're gi we're giving him more credit by saying he doesn't know. It's interesting is from an analyst point of view that wishes to save the MCU that he's like, well, uh, we need we shouldn't be given them more control because it d didn't work. And then cites MOM, which I assume he believes is a Sam Raimi controlled uh, project that he likes. That seems incongruent because, um, you know, like liking any film is is uh, on one hand just, you know, just whatever, but then trying to highlight what's wrong with the MCU while saying that, you know, MOM works. Like, well, that doesn't seem right, does it? Yeah, I, I, exactly. It just seemed strange. Led to Multiverse of Madness, which I like. Eternals, which I think is better than people give it credit for. And Thor Love. What does that mean? It's better than people it's give it credit. better than Eternals. what people Eternals. give it credit for. Like, Eternals for the sake of this video... One, one that has a notably lower reputation, which I find funny, because, I mean, it really is, like, just as bad as all the other ones. Um, but I guess he's saying, ah, uh, well, you know, people judged too harshly. It's actually all right. It, which is weird, because now, every once in a while, like, even my very casual, you know, bumping ins with Twitter, as I see people talking about, like, are we just going to forget that there's this massive giant sticking out of the earth? Um, <laughs> so Talk even about elephant people in the room. are starting to re Yeah, it's mm. like, it's this weird kind of thing where people are finally starting to recognize that that's a thing that happened, and they're coming to terms with it. I don't know that we'll ever Wake get up, sheeple. any kind of interesting terms on it, other than it's almost like it feels like it's prompted by the amount of memes about it. Like, that the writers are mm. aware of, because they're on Twitter, they'll be like, oh, we should probably have a, a line in there, because they kind of did that with She-Hulk. They were like, hee hee, look, we referenced it. You're just like, eh. But, I guess if that's enough. Thunder. Now, that doesn't mean that we need to Russo up Phase 6, but the solutions I'm offering are more tangible. I mean, that wouldn't even fix anything. Russo up. Like, Russo get the Russo up? brothers back, I guess. But what which it, I, I well, guess. they made in well, they they made made Endgame, made end unfortunately. So. They made Endgame, that's what I feel compelled. But I don't get it. And like, plus, why people, would it... people kind of don't like him anymore anyway, like, because of some of the, uh... I mean, what's what have they made afterward? They made the, the Grey Man, right? That Netflix movie? That, that disappeared. That came and went. Yeah, that was the most expensive film Netflix had made, I'm pretty sure, at the time it came out. That just came and went. I wouldn't aren't recommend they attached it. to the Hercules reboot? They're doing a remake, like a live-action remake of Hercules. Mm. They've, uh, they've, they've chimed in on the AI discussion. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know, I just find it funny, the idea of like, oh yeah, get the Russos back, they'll fix it. It's like, they made Endgame, man. <laughs> well, but like, think of, break it up into the nature of what he's saying. Does he want the Russos back because of, like, like as the, he's saying, no, I don't want that, but the, the, well, that would be the thing he is... doesn't want that, but he, he seems to understand that that might actually work but why because they would have control because uh i guess it would just be well they made the films that i like because i presume he really likes endgame 
Um, so, you know, well, even still, you get what I'm getting at, right? Like if one of the components of them being a good at. choice to bring them back is that they would have the control as artists, but he's also said giving them more control isn't the way to go. Yeah, no, I, I get you. I totally understand. It's, it's, there's something here that is Unless incongruent. He's pretty much just saying, well, we know the Russos are banging like 11 out of 10 people every time, but let's find a different solution, you know? Mm. These are simple, achievable goals. Okay. Starting with. Number one, we go. make more small connection. Hey, Rags, Congratulations, you Rags, you've got a point. Yeah. Interesting. You're, I guess you're it number two. Maybe. I guess we'll see, but maybe, yeah, maybe he'll say what I said, but I wonder if... Oh, no, I'm telling I you, I wonder if what he says... For, oh, all right, well. That is, that is okay. your number two prediction, so congrats. Hooray. Uh, as you can imagine, before we see him develop this, I, I imagine that just this, make more small connections, all three of us would agree this is, has nothing to do with improving the films. A uh, nope, film can not. be good with it. It can be bad with it. Yeah, um, yeah I think that ultimately this is ruin everything. I think that, I mean, if you can do them well, I'd say do them when they make sense. It's a neat well, thing but... to do. It's neat to connect the world. But if you do it poorly, then it just it just hurts you. You got to do it well. As far as I'm concerned, uh, this is just a thing that will happen naturally when you're writing good scripts, anyway. Yeah. There's nothing to do. Like ha ensuring this is happening does does nothing for whether or not your script is actually good. Like but, this uh, is like a byproduct of having a, a well-written, connected, you know, series of stories. Yeah. But let's see the the explanation. Okay, so this one seems pretty straightforward, but it gets trickier the further we go. People often get on Marvel's case with the criticism that the movies only exist to set up the next movie. And when I see what they mean, I think a it's wildly uh, not, overstated. It's not that you see what they mean. That is true. That is, it's one <laughs> to of the point where uh, James Gunn himself was lamenting that reality. How sad it is! It that... seeps into the meta. A lot of the time, when people are going to watch the film, they're not that interested in what happens in that film. They're more interested in what it sets up so that they can speculate. And then when that next film comes around, they don't really care what happens in that film. They're like, people... Ooh, what's next? X Men? Ooh, Fantastic yeah, yeah. Four? Ooh. When the Marvels was coming out, right? Ooh. Before the Marvels, anyone had seen it, people were talking about how interesting it's going to be to see the X Men because that's what's getting set yeah. up in the Marvels. Well, it was so bad that they basically they, they teased as much as they could without outright stating it that the X Men were going to show up in a post credit scene. It was crazy. Like, it became part of the marketing was be there to see what comes next or something. That's crazy. Like, if it's gotten to the point that even Marvel is saying that, that that's kind of what they know that you're there for, yeah, it's a big problem. Also, it's always said it's just nitpicking. He agrees with you. So you're just nitpicking because we have stated, we understand the, the perspective, but that he's not going hard enough at all. He's saying, like, I can understand exactly. it. It's like, no, it's just true. Yeah, that's right. Uno reverse card. Yeah, you just nitpicked, yeah. so don't do that. Yeah, good fuck. Bad, according to you. <laughs> and B, it's something they do for a reason. First, like, sure, Doctor Strange ends with the Ragnarok tease, but who cares? That's not why the movie's made. It's just a little thing tacked on to the end of the movie. And they're usually made in such a way that if you miss them, you don't miss any of the story in the next one. Like, in Thor Ragnarok, you still got plenty of setup for the Doctor Strange cameo. It's just that if you saw the Doctor Strange post credit scene, you know that Doctor Strange... I would argue that technically all of the scenes still have that even the shitty ones that set up like that you know like the x-men scene in the models you cannot see it you'll be fine yeah exactly you cannot see it and be fine but they know that people are going not just for the post credit scene but the idea of like what well, it'll be like um you remember when uh when uh bruce was like reference wakanda in uh age of ultron it's mm -hmm. like they're looking for little stuff like that too throughout the film it's not just the idea of the post credit scene it's also other things that happen in it like how people were, weren't people in She-Hulk, they had something, it was another thing similar to the, to the referencing of the Celestial, the referenced, um, Wolverine that was just there. People are looking for stuff like that. They're looking for all yeah, of these it's little things. Like, it's commentary little on both the films up. themselves, but also the nature of the audience and what they've sort of churned into and how they are no, no longer reliable to support, like, your stories because you've actually, you've essentially trained them to not be interested in the stories as much as they're interested yeah, you, in the next thing. Yeah, you've trained them to... When they watch She-Hulk, you can tell them all you want. Oh, well, you know, it's just a fun little comedy show. But a lot of people are going in like, ooh, so we're going to set up, like, Hulk storylines, World War Hulk? That's that's happening. And it's not just the post credit scene. It's the it's it's like an expectation throughout the whole thing of, I wonder what little teasers and tidbits if we're going to see a character show up if um in the post credit scene or earlier than that. It's like, if you focus it in on the most narrow realm possible, which is... 
the post credit scenes aren't that big a deal, maybe you'd have a point, but it's not just relegated to the post credit scenes. It's it's the whole film people are kind of wondering. Yeah, if people I go mean, wild I, over remember like Remember Doctor Strange? When um they're going through when yeah. they're going uh, through all the different multiverses, people are like, oh, that's like Spider Man twenty ninety nine or something. It's like, dude, it's like two, it's like a split second. But people like that's, and then you see all the videos of people speculating on it. Like you know that this is the case. You have to know this. They're and not even they'll... making the big connections, and a lot of the times the small connections aren't going to be able to you know shoulder the weight that's left behind. Yeah, there's no um, reason why the Marvels wouldn't have an amazing payoff that would be referenced till the end of time. But it doesn't. They didn't seem to care that they could. They were like, well, whatever. <laughs> it's like, the amount right, of... I think Homecoming's a good example of a story that takes place very appropriately, that clearly inside of a universe uh, that's bigger than itself as a movie. Um, and it's not a small detail. It, like, the story kind of it, it hinges around that. It's, it's reliant on that. It's not just that these little things happen in the movie and interact with the characters or drive the plot. It's big stuff. Well, yeah, the, but, you yeah, can tell the focus you, with Homecoming was that you can have significant repercussions from the Avengers, one being Vulture, one being Spider-Man. Like, in that Yeah, universe. whereas a lot of what we've seen in, like, Phase 4 is the worst outcome of that, which is grabbing little things that can be like, oh, that's a fun meme, but the story that you're telling is so incongruent with a lot of what's happening in other films that you're just creating new that's problems. like Black Widow. Yeah, exactly. Black Widow like, is Black like this creates new problems because it takes place in the MCU and it kind of wants to take advantage of that, but they also want to tell their own story regardless of all of the massive implications it can have on other films. I mean, the fact that we're not allowed when in Black Widow when none of the other Avengers get involved and are completely absent from the movie, that's inexplicable. There's there's no reason why that should happen. Totally a meta thing and a meta decision. And it hurts the film when there should have been connections and there weren't. So it goes both ways. Um, make appropriate connections because that's kind of the way that real people are. The real world. When you watch, you know, EFAP, when you talk with your friends, when you do anything like that, we're constantly making reference to the world around us. We have shared cultural things. And the nature of these stories is such that you have these big, iconic characters, large events, big things happening that would just naturally be referenced and spoken about from character to character in these stories. Again, and they don't do that a lot of the times. Yeah, like I said, th th those should be coming in with just strong script writing. It shouldn't be something that when you're making a script, you go, make sure you have references to other stuff. It's like, that shouldn't even be something that should just happen. It's just an emergent yeah, element of the story um... that you're telling. Yeah, it should be that, like, if something's happening in New York, maybe one of the characters who is in New York shows up, as they might. But if there's another character who's unavailable for reasons that have been established in the prime movie, it's like, well, if they don't show up, then that's chill, because they're not around. But, like, and that would also, be a really normal way of going about it. And you can totally fuck yourself over if you do something like Secret Invasion and the Skrulls yeah. and them being on yeah. Earth. And there's no way that, y like... You have, you have fundamentally changed the kind of stories that you can tell going forward, unless you want to just ignore it. Which, which they is, will. Which they will, because you cannot account for it. You cannot reasonably account for the things that you decided well, to greenlight story-wise. So you uh, doomed yourself. The, the Eternals would be like one of the films to point to in terms of, you wanted to tell your own story, because this story doesn't fit. You can't have these characters exist and have not been involved all this time. And alter and on the, the flip side as well, you cannot just leave a Celestial poking out of Earth and then have every other story ignore it. Because they, they're, like, connected in the worst way possible, which is that all of the errors leak into everything else, but none of the benefits of the shared universe are actually being... Um, I don't, I don't know if I want to say exploited, because that's, that's probably the more cynical way that they would view it. They're not being leveraged, they're not being utilized, you're not, you're not utilizing yeah, the connective and I, I genuinely, storytelling. I think this happens very naturally when you're super invested in all of this stuff, right? Like, you, if you had in, a, in Thor 1, when he kills the, the big robot sentinel thing, the destroyer, right? Like, if he had killed it and a line he has after it saying, that's probably the biggest creature I've ever killed, or some, some shit, it doesn't have to necessarily be true. But, like, f if you have him then in Avengers 2 and he kills something that's twice the size and says nothing, you'd be like, oh, 
That feels weird. Like, remember he had that little line about how he was like the biggest thing, and he killed something big. Yeah, and, he and if anything, you actually huh? had the line, people would be like, "Oh, that's that's cool, cool, cool." Yeah, back. Uh, you know, he kills it. He says, "I guess that's bigger." There's something like that. You just go, "Oh, sweet, they remembered the thing from the thing," and it's like, "Yeah, they did because they watched it and they were like, oh, yeah, we can use that.'" And that well, like could have been a good. Yeah. That could have been a good guess for a number five is make sure the director watches the other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because obviously my example is like crap, but the, you know the thing there are th examples mean, that yeah. exist throughout. That I think that when you're invested in writing these stories, you will try, I think, to remember the lives of the characters as they may. Try to remember all the things that have happened to them, what they might say when certain things come up, well, you know, and and just having them in the background. And every once in a while, a thing can be prompted, and you can even have people be like, "What do you mean by that?" And you go, "Oh, it, it it's uh, if you watched his film, he basically just did this thing that and you're like, oh, okay, cool." Um. So yeah, I just don't I don't see this as a solution as opposed to a uh, a result of fixing the actual problem. His cameo is coming. And sure, sometimes a character like Riri or Echo is clearly being introduced with the expectation that they're getting a spin-off later on. Did anyone think this that about is, Echo no, in these Hawkeye? Are not, uh, I haven't seen it. Uh I think I think that they had announced a spin-off. Oh, well, the show so I know that I, I'm talking about within the the thing itself, not any kind of meta context. But watching it, do you get the impression like, oh, you, she's going to be getting oh, her I don't show? Know. I, I, I didn't watch, remember, I only watched one episode of Hawkeye. <laughs> if there's even one person in chat who watched, <laughs> maybe they can let us know. I just uh, I find it hard to believe sometimes. It's like because at this point, by this metric, it's just like, oh, fucking everybody gets a TV show, which I guess is what happened. Everyone was making those jokes. Even uh, the writer director of Quantum Mania, it's in the video. They joke about. The girl that Hank d dated while Janet was missing called uh, Linda having her own TV show. Like, that's how much it's become a meme. But if they work in the introduction, who cares? Like, if you did not know they were getting a spinoff, would this matter? But then second, it this might. is something... It might. It might be just like a... What, do you think every, like, side-ish or, or B-level character should be made with the... I like... What about non-protagonist characters? Like, you have to write them like... with the expectation that they're going to get a spinoff series? Or do you just write them as good characters who aren't protagonists? There is a character like... in, uh, in, in Buffy. I don't know if you're going to remember him, Fringy. And this, this wouldn't be a spoiler. He's a, he's a season three character, and he's in the show for one scene. He's really good. He's a therapist in the school, uh, and he gets killed. Um, but he, he has, like, a selection... Yeah, he has remember. like one scene with a character and it's really good. He, he's really insightful, really charming and really supportive. And then he gets killed and it's like, oh, and it's like, is that better or worse? Like, like, wouldn't you rather any character that doesn't have a future, any character that doesn't get a spinoff being made as well as everyone else in terms of strong character writing, as opposed to, um, you know, some kind of weird universe where we only write based on like what their f futures are. I feel like you should treat it fairly, try and make everybody interesting for the time they have, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. instead of like basing it around I hate this like meta logic of um, better write them you know knowing where, the, where, where we're gonna put them in franchise wise it's like, I mean, imagine if Lord of the, the Rings movie. was made with that where Merry and Pippin and all these other characters they're thinking about yeah we're gonna do the Merry movie and the Pippin and then and we're the gonna have a Faramir and movie. Harry and Pippin will return. Oh, and by yeah, the way, will return I've been wanting to say this for ages. Every time I mention anything to do with Buffy, people are like, oh, I hate how much he fucking references. How come you never say this for Lord of the Rings? We talk about Lord of the Rings uh, way more. <laughs> <laughs> Lord of the Rings got extensive <laughs> double coverage. It's like, you fuckers. <laughs> like, I barely ever talk about Buffy, especially on this show, because Rags hasn't seen it yet. Also, right. Angel is better than Buffy, but that's not that's a different conversation. Okay. Work in the introduction, who cares? Like, if you did not know they were getting a spinoff, would this matter? But then second, this is something Marvel does for a reason. Phase 1 felt connected because Coulson showed up in three movies leading up to the Avengers. Tony was in three. Fury was in three. The shared universe is part Yeah, I mean, characters so... will make repeat appearances based on their roles. That should be a natural element of connected stories. Well, it shouldn't also, have to be about... like. You know. They showed up in three. It's like, well, t one of them was a direct sequel. So, you know, you, you know what I mean? Show up in that. Yeah. It's like, I, yeah, I mean, I would expect Tony to show up in. And also, it's funny that he says Tony showed up in three. It's like, oh, are you including Incredible Hulk? The one that actually, I, I'm pretty sure, just flat out doesn't lead anywhere. But uh, this, by the way, feels, it's, it was definitely Rags's one, but it does feel like adjacent to one of yours, uh, for him being the. Clearly, like an overall narrative. You said proper structure. I don't know if this would count, but it's just interesting that he's yeah. saying like 
He's doing the meme. Phase one, everyone everyone was like, oh yeah, so connected because of all these people being in it. It's like, we've had millions of cameos and connections in phase four and five. What do you mean? People are everywhere. Yeah, and that's not been helping. No, like, it doesn't that, do anything. <laughs> It doesn't. It doesn't help. This is not. This is like a, a gaslight in everybody, into in, including yourselves, by the way, into thinking this is a thing. Like, oh, Valkyrie was in the Marvels. So, uh, okay. It's like, oh, that's an oh, interesting connection. Oh, your language Hawkeye. Oh, that's always that's always happy to see a slave trader make her cameo appearance in the. Uh, uh. Mm. Showed up in three movies leading up to the Avengers. Tony was in three. Fury was in three. The shared universe is part of the fun. I understand why it can feel overwhelming, but when done well, it only adds to the experience. I, I, I hope he scene. doesn't think this is done well. I don't this like, isn't even, I don't even a, this is, I don't yeah. like this scene. This is a shared like universe. It. Like, that's what this is representative of, because, look, it's it's Hulk, he's there. It's this, like, was, uh, this was the beginning of them fucking up Hulk, um, was this. This was the beginning. Yes, and uh, and this damage done to Iron Man is only corrected in Civil War. It takes ages. Mm -hmm. No, it took like another three years. Yeah. And why you may have been hesitant to include these recently. COVID forced schedules to move around, so guaranteeing that a certain character was going to appear at a certain time was difficult. I, we actually advocate in that we like, get more cameos in. Like, seriously. It's so funny, though, Sean Doctor Strange is like, remember the reason why he didn't show up in WandaVision? It yeah, was it wasn't COVID. COVID scheduling problems. It was it was <laughs> wacky and stupid writing ideas that prevented him from getting in there. So, how about we focus on the writing? <laughs> how about we get that? I love the idea. That it's like, oh man, you know, we just get got to get more interconnectivity, more cameos, just like Phase One. When, as far as I'm concerned, we've been overdosing on fucking cameos. Dude, this scene Thing is hilarious. The one that he's yes. got on display. Uh, well, uh, not this. Like the look at that eye. Looks so <laughs> third eyeball. Um, <laughs> it's like, it's uh, just. The idea that like you've you've just got Charlize Theron showing up like oh we you got to come with me to the multiverse Doctor yeah Strange. we got to go Let's on go. adventures together I'm gonna cut a hole in in space here are Let's you done go. screaming in the street you know, we have to go do some stuff <laughs> I've seen people saying it and I could totally buy it that in the third Doctor Strange he's gonna die and that she'll how she'll then be takeover. taking his place and stuff and the reason why I think he's... it's very possible is because I can't imagine how much longer Benedict Cumberbatch is gonna be wanting to do MC why would he want to be involved in Anymore. But then again, crashing and burning. It's not like she's like lacking work. You know, she doesn't need um, to do this. That's true, but like at least he's actually done it. You know, I could see him being a, yeah, a kind of actor man. like a Robert Downey Jr. That's like I've I've done my time. I'm go I'm, I'm I'm good. Well, yeah, he's uh he's been part of it for yeah. We're getting close to a decade at this point, which is insane because it with Doctor Strange, I always felt like uh, Infinity War was a really cool way of getting him in his first proper like experience an, an, an avengers one kind of way and that's really where it stopped oh, yeah. for me like i've not felt he's he's moved through and on in the world much at all since then well, and it's like I, mean, and I, I may be at the end of his journey already like he it would be so cool to have him go through the iron man journey but it's like well that's never gonna fucking happen is it like he's never gonna get no significant the ride development. Is good enough no was going to appear at a certain time was difficult. Famously, Val was expected to appear in Black Widow before Falcon and the Winter Soldier. This, this literally had no effect on how good they were, I'm sorry. N nor nope. how much people enjoyed it. Who cares whether or not she was correctly timeline placed with it. I, 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 it's fair to highlight, I, I totally don't disagree with that. What I'm saying is that uh, the problems with Falcon and the Winter Soldier and Hawkeye, or Black Widow, or whatever you want to talk about in terms of where these characters end up and what timelines, it's really not to do with whether... Julia Louise Dreyfus is her name, right? Yeah. Whether or not she it's was available lane. because of COVID stuff. Like, that, her scenes are not really the... That's uh, it's well, okay. Well, he's talking about the... Uh, well, moving the them around, yeah. In this one, yeah. That's really... It's just not at all what the problem is. Sure. Doctor mm. Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was supposed to take place before Spider-Man No Way Home. Isn't this not... The, this isn't even what he was highlighting. He was talking about more con connectivity. No. This is... that The connectivity is there. It's just out of order, but that they try to account for it. Mm-hmm. Like, this they've, was a huge Doctor Strange cameo in Spider-Man. He was practically a secondary character. I, 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 I don't, I don't even call it a cameo. Not, I, yeah. It's not a cameo, yeah. He's just one of the characters in the story. How is, how is that he was, not He was the thorough. only other character on the poster. He that's, was on the poster the thorough connectivity. Like, that's not even, you know? Yeah, so the connectivity was done poorly. They've, they've, they've... 
made a tangled web here of connections and they can't well, pull it I guess off. The thing is, um, obviously Doctor Strange did not come out of Spider-Man unscathed, not at no, all. No, like, he was he was again. sacrificed well, and so what, upon and the what we learned was that um, things in that movie work. Originally it was supposed to be America Chavez that gets all the spell shit fucked up or something like that. That was one of the Which, original uh, makes more sense because once she again have over her powers. we, we get all the components sense. on the table and he's standing there saying you see it's cameos and connectivity we gotta fix it we said they're like no it's the fact that they had to get those cameos and connectivity they couldn't put them in the right places and the stories had to bulk and break in order to account for it and they now don't make sense it's the script fundamentally yeah. the script Oh, yeah, but schedules needed to be changed, and you guys made it work. But now that the machine is rolling, they didn't again, make we, it work. They didn't make no, it work. That's the problem. You problem. thought that it, this this is it, the it issue. Work. You thought that it was working when it wasn't. Need the check engine light up. has been on like, for ages. Yes, secret invasion. We need to pick these back up, like secret invasion. Wait, so he's referencing Guardians Three as having lacked connectivity, which is funny because a lot of people who come away with saying Guardians Three was awesome and the best in like Phase Four and Five put together, I don't think any of them care that you didn't see fucking, you know, the Hulk flying around in it or anyone else no. or Valkyrie cameo. Nobody cares. Nobody even. To be honest with you, it's one of the things I liked about the film: the fact that it was off in its own shit in a different part of the universe. That yeah, was neat. I mean, in the MCU, that's yeah, that's something. Of all of our list of issues, I don't think we mentioned anything to do with wanting to see characters, but we did want the repercussions of having been a part of the MCU to be more represented. And then we found out that James Gunn feels very bitter about what the MCU did to the Guardians. So, yeah, that's why for some reason. Which is probably not the best attitude if you want to make the script as efficient as possible. The fact that they were able to crack medical technology that can insta-heal almost any wound is the kind of thing that you're like, oh shit, that's going to change mm, everything forever. Yeah. You should probably tell Earth about that. You guys made it work, but now that the machine is rolling again, we need to pick these back up. Like Secret Invasion. You don't, but okay. <laughs> ...and Loki both did not feature post credit scenes. Guardians 3 had some, but they focused exclusively on the Guardian. Okay, so now we're at the point of actually advocating they need more post credit scenes. Uh, I'm happy to wipe them out. Yeah, what, what are those? Uh... Uh, yeah, they could go away. Um, I, yeah, they, they could go away. I don't need them. If I don't anything, need them. It's yeah. one of those, like, I guess if... If the post credit scenes were neat little funny things at the end, that's like, okay, that's cool to have, but like, just don't have them if you can't make them good or meaningful or interesting, you know? I just guess get rid of them. What I'm trying to say is that it would change nothing about the quality of the scripts to wipe out post credit scenes. Like, I, I don't care right. about them. Um, I care about them in the sense that I'll watch them and I'll keep track of what they're setting up and everything to do with meta information, as well as if they change anything about the main narrative, like uh, Far From Home's almost like completely fixes fury in that film by arguing he's not fury which is funny because he has since become completely incompetent like that film <laughs> took efforts to be like this is why he's incompetent and the rest of them like he's just incompetent <laughs> they rewrote his history to say he was All incompetent of his accomplishments with someone I mean, else that was or... the they they literally inserted his wife with the, the clip Dude, that he showed I just here brain blast the they invented for him in far from home right what's his perspective was if fury's fucking up then it's more than likely a scroll. And then Secret Invasion's perspective was, if Fury's doing well, that it was actually a scroll that did it. <laughs> that's yeah, crazy. That's How long did it take for that to it flip? Uh, a couple of years. Damn. And they that's definitely don't talk to each there. other, huh? Mm -hmm. Wakanda Forever had one that was only about baby T'Challa. And I know what you're thinking. That's the point. The Guardians are better separate from the rest of them. Wakanda Forever? Not necessarily. Um, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, like, I mean, it, everybody we kind of... enjoyed seeing the Avengers and the Guardians made up in Infinity War. Absolutely. That. that was great. Everyone loved Rocket and Thor Rocket and, and Thor. all those guys meeting. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of those, I mean, not to sound like a broken record, but like, it depends on if you do it well or not. Absolutely. Exactly. That's what it all comes back to. All these random rules that we're throwing out. We need more connectivity. We need the Guardians to be separated because they're better on their own. Like, what, what do you know? Stop. The underlying these weird foundation. Things. He's already at the very beginning of this. He discounted what the underlying foundation should be, which is that the writing should be good, because that's what kind of predicates whether or not all of these ideas are going to be successful or not in terms of quality. It has to be done well. There's not that many ideas that you shouldn't do just like on principle. Um, you, it's it's about execution. It's like we say it all the time. Ideas are cheap. Execution's everything. Execution is everything. Or couldn't follow the Chadwick tribute. Loki was a finale, Secret Invasion was bad. Sure, but these don't.
Uh, you, know, you know what video I want from him is tell me why it's bad though. Like, yeah, tell mm -hmm. me why. I need to know how have you identified Secret Invasion as being the bad one, and the rest as being good to okay. Oh, well, how is Secret Invasion bad, but you like Multiverse of Madness? Yeah, know? yeah. And I would like to know if you it. imagine he said like top five reasons Secret Invasion is bad is like five bad CG, four bad pacing, three not utilization of multiple characters that deserve more time, <laughs> two the story was hard to follow, one Nick Fury was not benefited as much as he could have been from the show. We'd be like Jesus Christ, <laughs> like these these are not why the Secret Invasion. Is, you know what I mean? Like I I would imagine that's what he would say instead of look how inconsistently written the entire thing is. Look how much of a disaster the world building, the plot, and the characterization is. Um. It's all these weird ways of framing everything that makes it so difficult to understand what the MCU would even look like if he got everything he wanted. I don't know. You get those uh, viral tweets every once in a while where people are like, oh, I, I want, you know, this, this, I want Batman to fight the Transformers. Then it'll be like, thank fuck you guys aren't in charge sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, oh yeah, I don't know. Don't always need to be post credit scenes. So here's recommendation number one. Tell people by the end of each show or movie where they can see at least one guy or thing again within the next two years. Oh my I, god. I, I, don't, I feel like they do this already. I don't understand how this is a solution. It will fix the MCU to do what they, yeah, to do what they've been doing already. Like this, because he's showing this, this is one example. This is recent. That. Yeah, this was only a couple of years ago. Um, and then I'm just oh, uh, Wonder Vision that was for Multiverse of Madness. Uh, Miss Marvel was for the Marvels. Uh, what a, dude, they do this all the time. What's why is he presenting this like it's some new idea? I don't know. So this can be a post credit scene, but it can also be something within the movie or show. Either way, I'm <laughs> I love that he says that like it's a novel bit of information. You could talk about the future at any point in your movie, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, that's so. just called writing. It's part of the, it's part of being I mean. able to make a movie. Some yeah. of it's so condescending that I'm like, why wouldn't you agree that we need to just fundamentally go back to how we even write a script? Like, opening that conversation up with, with Marvel, because they clearly don't know what they're doing. A moment like this can give the universe a sense of cohesion and set the expectation that there is a plan. The, the belief yeah. that the cohesion comes from the post credit scene setting up what's next rather than the Sad. universe being congruent throughout. Yeah, because again, Rags pointed out, but like Spider-Man Homecoming is what happens when you treat the universe as congruent. There's yeah, like going on, on everywhere, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to compartmentalize these things. Like, this is the movie, and this is the little part where it connects with the rest of the world. And this is the movie, and this is the little part at the end where it connects with the rest of the world. You don't want to have these, like, like a, a switch that flicks on and off, or whether exactly. or not a world is connected. It just needs to be in, it needs to be inseparable from the story itself. I thought that was well, the whole I mean, point. It's the idea, like, in a comic book that you could be reading it, and then it's just like, oh, and then another hero just shows up because they were in the area. You know, that kind of thing. Of like, oh, yeah, because, you know, this is a world where other characters exist, where they can interact with each other. Rather than, like, well, you've got your story, and then at the end, put a post credit scene that reminds people that this is a shared universe. You shouldn't need to remind people that it is. It should be apparent that it is. Or if your story has no connection to the other stories because of where it's set or what's happening in it or the stakes, then that's fine too. You remember, um, because it's gotten so bad now, but in phase two, when the president got kidnapped, it was like, where's Cap? I was Cap not involved uh, in this. Yeah, of course. And then the flip side, where's Tony in, uh, in uh, Winter Soldier? Yeah, it's, uh, it's stuff like that. You can kind of get past. You're like, all right. You'll even have people saying, like, eh, it's their movie, which isn't in-universe at all, but, like, whatever. But it's gotten so out of hand <laughs> with everybody everywhere, portal technology readily available. It's just like, I can't do with this anymore. It's not possible. No, this makes any fucking sense. It, it, and unfortunately, inaction is is qualified as character. It's just like that none of them you know or care, I guess. You're going to need to deliver on that plan, but it's worth doing. And to be fair, this has been done well. Ant-Man 3, the <laughs> Ant-Man 3? <laughs> what are you well. referring to? What are you referring to? he's made Is it clear. Is this Kang stuff? So in Quantumania, you hit the credits, then you hit the scene of Loki watching Victor timely, and this means that the audience know to watch Loki season 2. This is what he means by done well. Jesus. I, All right. Well, I guess the MCU's fucked then. The MCU's Thanks, fucked, Nando. yeah. With advice like this, like this is how to do Gosh. it well. You fixed it. Good. Wow. It's incredible. At least this is one um, of five rags. Okay, so we, one of them is okay, useless, if that's not right. actively He's... damaging. But we've got four left. Get...
get the bad one out of the way first so that we can exactly. get to the next four. Tease of Loki season two worked pretty well. WandaVision having Monica meet the scrolls worked pretty well. Did it? It worked well. Did it? Well. Did it? Well. <laughs> it well. Worked pretty it well. well. I thought they'd forgotten the this because of how much it doesn't match up with the Marvels oh, or Secret Invasion. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. And also, wouldn't this be an example of doing it wrong because this was three years apart rather than within a year or two? Yeah. This is a long time. What is it? This you know was what? the first Phase 4 project and the Marvels has just come out. And he's he's full of shit, no offense, Nando, but like the, the information to do with these scenes is not what people use to know what's coming next. It's meta, it's trailers, it's announcements, it's stuff from different accounts online. When you see this scene, ask everybody oh, who back. watched this scene, so where are you going to see Monica next? They'll be like, I don't know, something to do with scrolls, I guess? Well, yeah, why would the average normie viewer be like, oh, and I'll see her in Marvel Studios The Marvel? Exactly. I don't know That's, that. They'll only know that from announcements, social media stuff that they're keeping track well, of outside of the fucking only, scene. If they're paying attention. And if they're paying attention, if they're the kind of person who's paying attention, they're not the kind of person that you need to, like... They're the kind of person who's probably going to watch it no matter what anyway. You know, it's not like a winning strategy for general audiences, which is what Marvel needs. They need to have a winning strategy. Their films cost too much money to appeal to a niche audience. They need to appeal to general audiences. And general audiences are not watching this post credit scene going, Oh, I see. I can see Monica Rambo, uh, Photon, in The Marvels. <laughs> Marvel if, Studios, The Marvels. If my dad watched WandaVision and he saw this scene, I'd be like, So what are you excited for? Are you excited for Monica? He'd be like, Which one's Monica? <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly it's like nobody nobody knows this shit and you don't even, you only know what you know because of stuff outside of this scene it's not this scene that gives you that like, no, expectation of a particular tv show or a movie why would Hawk... why wouldn't somebody believe that this was a tie into secret invasion you know mm -hmm. rather than the models Black... could be anything it could be nothing we've had it could be nothing we've had we've after had credit scenes that go nowhere <laughs> We've had them as early as fucking 2008. The Incredible Hulk one doesn't go anywhere. Meet the Scrolls worked pretty well. The Hawkeye tease in Black Widow worked really well. The problem. I, it worked really <laughs> well. It worked really. They, she, look at this photo. Look, look at this photo of Hawkeye. See her. Look at this. Look at this photo of Hawkeye. Nando was like, it's a photograph of character. Holy shit. I, I think, he, like, if he's being completely honest with us, what he's talking about is, isn't this awesome because it sets up Black Widow oh. 2 versus Hawkeye? Is he about to say the Eternals 1 is bad because it's not going anywhere? Let's see. He's in Black Widow worked really well. The problem is, it seems really like the recent well. Marvel post credit scene seems recent. to exist. That was a recent out, one. Like, two months after. Yeah, this what one the came hell? Out, like, well, it's just funny he's shown this. It's like, dude, this, this one is more recent to Black Widow, the example you said that was good, than to now. <laughs> Not only that, but like, what do you said to qualify as a yeah, good one? I think the Marvels passes, right? It's like, oh look, the X-Men, they'll be coming. That's They're right, coming. they'll be coming, probably in the next couple of years. What's more hilarious though is that it proves the negative of his point again, because it's like, Fringy, what property will you see the X-Men in next? I, I mean, how could I possibly How could know you possibly that? know? <laughs> you other, this. other than Deadpool, but Deadpool has probably got nothing to do with that post credit scene. Absolutely not. No, I don't think there's any reason to assume that. But even still, it's all reliant on information that's not in the scenes. It's all outside exactly. of stuff. In fact, I think that that's what they're built for, is to make you go, ooh, ooh Google, what's with the scene after blah, blah, blah. What and then watch go? the YouTube videos that say where it could go next with yeah. a big circle and an arrow pointing at it. <sighs> to introduce a character that there is no clear plan on when we will ever see them again. The yeah, but the reason so, why there's no clear plan is because Eternals failed. There is- That's why- I'm gonna go out on a limb. Bad. There is no clear plan for when we're seeing any character. No, not, not, a, not a real plan. No. Um, but, but in this case, if, if Eternals had made a billion dollars, you would probably by now know where this is going. But it failed, and they might not make another one, and that's why it doesn't lead anywhere. I just don't. Uh, this this advice is so bad. Like, um, you oh, can yeah, you only do the post credit scenes for stuff that you know is in stone and is definitely happening, and that they can logically understand that's where it's going from the scene itself. That seems to be his advice. Except if they're funny, but then he didn't seem to like the funny uh, ones. Hmm. Big three are Eros, Clea, and Hercules. Oh, okay. So, but what if what if we get Thor four? 
next year announced, and it's called Four Five. Four, five yeah, fucking hell, it's what it's hard to get Or Or Love and Hercules or something. Well, if it was Thor like, versus oh, Hercules, well, that's, that's the title. Yeah. And then you'd be like, okay, yeah, so, so, so now and, now this credit is good. It has now become good. Yeah, it's good now. Exactly. It has now become good because Disney announced a film. <laughs> that's so that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, this has nothing to do with the scenes themselves. It has to do with meta information that you're not it's even so privy to most of. This is, this is the first one he leads with on how to fix the MCU. That's funny. It is funny because it does nothing. I genuinely cannot see a clear entrance point for any of those characters in. It's, what do you well, mean? That, it's easy. The, I mean,. They just turn it's up in the sequel movie. Eternal, I, Eternal yeah. 2. Yeah. I Eternal haven't seen 2, the movie in sure 5 and Doctor Strange 3. Those are way simpler than, hey, okay, you watch the, the Scarlet Witch and Vision show. Be sure to watch Monica Rambo in the Captain Marvel sequel titled take, The Marvels. Take us two examples, one good, one bad. The good one is where, uh, why don't you forget her name? Helena? Yelena? That's it, right? Yelena. Yeah. She's got a personal reason to go after Hercules. It's. <laughs> Hawkeye. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so it's like, oh, that's exciting because we know that that's, that's going to happen in the next thing. Cool. And it's like, oh, but it doesn't work with Hercules, who has been personally sent to possibly kill Thor and, and has a personal reason to have it's, issue it's with him. It's the same. It's yeah, exactly it's the, the same. fucking same. But it's like, yeah, okay, but but we had the project announced for the future of Yelena and Hawkeye. We didn't for uh, 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 Hercules. Like, so it has nothing to do with the actual scenes. It's just to do yeah, with the meta. exactly. As and soon as they announce Eternals 2 and then say that Harry Styles is going to be in it, it's like, oh, well, this becomes go, a good post credit scene now. Yeah. As soon as they say Doctor Strange 3 is coming out and... Uh, Which we already know is Leah. coming out, so I don't even know why the fuck that Yeah, and she'll be like in a, it, and that doesn't make it good. It, yeah. doesn't make it bad. It should, why isn't it not judged on the merits of itself? I don't understand. Yeah. Any movie or show that's coming out in the next two years. You'd be very generous and say maybe Hercules shows up in Thunderbolts. Or maybe Clea shows what? up in... What? Why? Why, <laughs> Why, Why wouldn't it just be the off? sequels to their movie? We've, we've, we've done this for I centuries, like... decades, I should say. I'm... We don't know. I, I feel like we're getting way off track with like, yes, the we are. <laughs> this movie. I feel like we've, we've gone down a road and there's a point... I feel like that sign... That's, that sign is what I feel like. I just want to say... Sot. I mean, stop. Stop this. We need to stop and we need to rewind. We are getting into the weeds on shit that is really not going to be helpful. If we can't even talk about writing it good and we're starting getting into oh, the specific connections of these characters and maybe you see them again and I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's, but, oh, we've gone off track. It's like, this is madness. it's like a road trip around all of America and the first state you're going through, you have a McDonald's and then you're like, I actually want to try all the fast food restaurants in this state. And then you're like, by the time you hit the seventh one, you're like, what were we doing? Like, we were traveling across all them, of America. <laughs> they're building them faster than we can eat at them. We need to go. I'm, uh, I'm just looking at the screen here, looking at this costume and going like, man, that's, like, lame. Yeah. That, that's a lame costume. That looks like that's something so you gotta spend, uh, like, I some, feel like I've seen it before. microtransactions Marvel, for. You know? This looks like a Scarlet Witch costume, but purple. This is how I'm People feeling looking at it. Pointing out the side looks like it says slop. <laughs> yeah, which is uh, very appropriate. Yeah, very and appropriate. And they fucked up the L on it and to put it upside down. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. They would do that. House of Harkness, but it really doesn't seem like I like, like how I'd... all those people are just casually walking around when, like, there's a woman in a crazy costume standing in the middle of yeah. the street and Doctor Strange is right there. There's someone who has saved the world, someone who would be yeah, fucking surrounded by people who would be saying thank you. But, yep. whatever. Uh, also, the fact that he's built into his explanation of how this would be better, that, oh yeah, well it can still be good, even though I've said it's bad because of announcements like, oh, fucking Hercules will be in Thunderbolts, Basically, as if that has anything to do with making it that... good. If Kevin Feige says um, Charlie's Theron is going to be in, you know, this movie, then it's like, ah, okay, it's good now. All right, good, good job, Kevin. I commend thee. Neither of those are happening. What it seems like is Marvel wanted to use this post credit scene to introduce a far future project, and that's not what the uh, post credit no, scenes to, are for. No, they wanted to for Eternals two that probably isn't going to happen because it failed. I feel well, like or can we well not well just enough. be honest? All post credit scenes since the start have been bait. They are to get you to yeah, be like, ooh, right. and I don't have any they problem with bait. that fundamentally. But they've overstretched well, I, to the point where we can have as many as like three of those types of scenes in a film now. 
I think they're going to try and start mm -hmm. rolling them down again. But it's it's the kind of th and and you have people being like, oh, I saw the new X, and it's like, oh, what was in the post credit scene? It's like, why the fuck is that the first question? Holy shit! Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Like what, at the end of Iron Man, when he says like, you know, bigger universe, everyone goes, oh my god, he's talking about Avengers. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, like, that yeah, took a few years to get to Avengers. These scenes, again, I feel are symptoms. They're not the problem. Mm -hmm. Nor are they the solution. Here are some examples of connections I think we could have done in past MCU stuff. Oh, Thor, oh, uh, th this go. is a list right. of this. Oh, here we go. Now oh, we're yeah. going to Taco Bell. And it's like, there's another I Taco did, Bell over way, there, I, actually. Before he gets <laughs> into this list, this is like when someone you barely know thinks they're your friend, and then they start <laughs> telling you about the dream they had last <laughs> night, and you're just like, <laughs> and you've already zoned out before he's even started. <laughs> they explain uh, it for like 20 minutes, and then you go, yeah. Yeah, uh, Damn, yeah. Man, that's that's pretty that's pretty wild. That's pretty. And then crazy they go, "What do you think?" And you go, "Oh fuck." <laughs> I, think I, I think I have to go kill myself over there. If you'll excuse me for just a moment. You go, "Oh shit, sorry, my food's arrived. Give me one sec." You write back, and you're like, "Okay, anyway." So then they go, "What do you think about the dream I told you about?" And you're like, you're "Fuck." Just, you're so detached. You just tell them, "Just a second, I think I'm getting a call," and you what don't you even pull out your thing? phone. You just walk away. <laughs> you walk away. Yeah. Yeah. I love like something that Joel would do. Not Joel from The Last of Us. Wait, why did I say Joel? Joel McHale. Um, that feels like something that Jeff would do. Jeff you know, would do that. It would, Jeff wouldn't care if you noticed he didn't care, though, right? Like He would just be like... Well, well I, I'm reminded of that joke. You remember the, when it's just like, but here's the thing, and he just walks away. Yeah. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he just leaves. <laughs> Thunder. A scene with Valkyrie in it can start with her ending a phone call with Carol. Oh, my God. God, this uh, doesn't uh, matter. Not even a little bit. Why are we, I don't want to add anything to these. These you know, movies shouldn't have anything added to them. No. On the note of how this would be done properly, is when you're right in the scene with Valkyrie and they establish a huge threat, she would have to say, if you're in her mind, oh, what about Captain Marvel, who I'm directly connected to and has the most power in the universe? We should probably enlist her to help us with this thing that could destroy the universe. You don't go, mm -hmm. make sure you have a scene where she picks up the phone and says, what, sorry? Uh, oh, Carol. Carol. Yeah, Captain Marvel. Carol. Yes. 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 I will. Oh, Hi, yes. Carol. We will do the thing. We're going to do it later. We will do that at some time, maybe in a two hour long film coming to theaters near you. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe he's advocating for this shit. <laughs> I don't care. I want a good story. I don't care if they Can we set skip up to number two. <laughs> it's not even a setup. It's like, oh, look, it's going to let you know they Here's have something... a conversation in the Marvels. Yeah, this is like, here's what they could have done. This is like, we're, we, he's just talking about his fan fiction ideas. Just a little thing, because those two apparently talk. She-Hulk can meet Hope Van Dyne, the new CEO. No, of why? She can go to hell. <laughs> why? What difference go to does this fucking shit make? hell is where she can oh, go. I, I think my favorite part is he's not even explaining why they would no, meet. He just says it's they just should be like on a they call. Could meet. We need a You're scene in She-Hulk that begins with this saying, oh, that's great, that's great, Hope, Van Dyne. Yes, that's great. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> yes. And puts the phone down. Like, oh, wow, it's so interconnected. Can meet Hope Van Dyne, the new CEO of PIM Technologies, since they both live on since the West Coast. Right. They could be at some sort of They event both live on the West Coast. So, so like, I often bump up. into people who, yeah, who just well, live on the same by coast the way, as me. Yeah. They don't live in the same city. Uh, She-Hulk lives in same LA. Coast. Come on, uh, same coast. Ant-Man lives in... Aren't they like five hours apart? Oh, How far whatever. is LA from San Francisco? And also, aren't they both like massive metropolitans filled with Yeah, but he said there'd be a, an like event. Water? And then they both go to it. Oh, Vegas. there'd be some event and they'd both go to it. Okay, is that how... That's so They're funny. 347 what are, well, miles again, from each other. With the analogy yeah. of driving to all the Taco Bells, you're just like, what are we doing? Why are we talking about this? Like, trying to get It's the... like a six-hour <laughs> drive. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? That's so <laughs> funny. They both live on the West Coast, though. And we know how good <laughs> we know how She Hulk is with driving, so uh, this, uh, this oh, makes yeah, so much right. sense. <laughs> Something like that. Wakanda Forever should be one of the easier ones. Just to have Everett Ross do a scroll thing in nah, a post. Nah, that's so have him no. do a scroll thing. Fuck off. That doesn't even Dude, work. This... It's supposed to be a no. surprise that he's a scroll in no, Secret Invasion. This is so awkward, considering that the ending of that film is meant to be like a like a, a memorial, like a eulogy for Chadwick uh, Boseman. It's like you know, and after that, we should have the post credit scene of, for of Secret Ever Invasion. doing a scroll like, thing. What, what the hell, like, man? Dude. What the Jesus, <sighs> man? Like this is like, the solving. I, as you said, 
spoiling the actual surprise that they were trying to set up in that terrible the, yeah, show. We all guessed it before it happened, but like that was supposed to be a surprise. That scene or something, or, or even something. just have him call Nick Fury and be like, Nick Fury, I have that information you're looking for. Oh, it's the meme. Oh, well, you're, you're, oh, and then, just oh. go, go to number two. Just go to just fuck Just off. so we're like, oh, oh, right, Nick Fury's in one of these coming up. Quantumania. That's it's okay. We'll just move on. It is one of the uh, ones that does this pretty well with no, the Victor Time no, Loki T. No, it has nothing to do it with Quantum Mania. Nothing to do with the adventure they go on, other than the fact that it's uh, Kang. There's no connection. Ugh. It's it's actually ad he's advocating for advertising. He's like, you got to make sure you yeah. have your ads in your movies. Guardians three have one of the characters just reviewing distress calls and stuff like that. And one of them is that the jump points are acting weird. That's all we need. Uh, why would no, you we do don't that? need that. Why? We don't need it. That. But they don't Just even show up in the movie. The they don't even show up in the movie, though. They don't, don't show it. up in the Marvels. Don't need so don't why need would it. you don't even need do it, it. it anyway? You know what's funny? Oh, He's just highlighted another it. problem with the Marvels, because they should be involved. <laughs> <laughs> the jump points are being manipulated. Yeah. To the Marvels. Secret Invasion, have Fury meet Monica on Saber. No. Loki Season 2 what? has that line where they talk about the Kang from Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. While I don't hate that, I think that could be replaced with something related to Deadpool. Because apparently... <laughs> just, just leave <laughs> me alone. Why? Why are you doing what this? Are, how is this going to save the MCU? I don't or know. Or is it just like random shit that he sort of thought of and have, hasn't even... Holy. These aren't even... Form, these aren't even... These are like... This is the, the rough-hewn rock of an idea it's barely been worked on it's like oh. the concept of a concept Jesus. what if these two characters met it was like i don't know that sounds like but the beginning right, of it's a worse than that process. because we can imagine the potential of the meeting he's talking about we need to set up that they do meet in some other thing by having them say something to each other have a phone call be at an event it doesn't have to be long but make sure it's there otherwise people will feel it's disconnected I mean, if if you need these kinds of things to make your audience feel like your cinematic universe is connected, you're already fucked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because well, uh, that's kind of the point. We've already talked about how they've missed all the major things, and you're like, yeah, well, make sure you get some small things. Like, <laughs> and then staple them onto the very, very end of the movie after most people have fucked off the, out of the theater. Yes. <laughs> Do something. The guy who claims oh, that's up another the popcorn, thing. Give, throw him a bone, guys. This, like whatever you put in after credits scenes, as Rags just highlighted, isn't going to change the the box office numbers. You know what I mean? Like that's going to no, have no effect. No. Well, I mean, as we saw with the Marvels, they basically marketed the post credit scene as much as they could without doing it. They literally had stuff from the post credit scene in the trailer. Didn't say that. And it was the worst performing Marvel film. Yeah, and they were like Tony Stark, Thanos, Captain America, which, by the way, still like, are they going to be facing? Yeah, well, if a <laughs> court case on yeah, this well, shit, if, such a lie. Yeah, well, if Kamala Khan met She-Hulk and sued the Avengers, then that would probably Ooh. be really great if that showed up in the post-credit scene. Yeah, so. if they could just have a call at some point, just a little telephone yeah. call. Apparently, Deadpool three has a lot to do with the TVA. You don't even have to say Deadpool. Why the fuck Just say, hey, mean? what about that prisoner that won't the shut up? The reason why is because it's probably going to have crazy time travel multiverse stuff in it. Yeah, and this is why I'm always worried about Deadpool three. I can never be like in a position of actually being excited. If and we went with like, his advice oh, and you had what's her face chick here saying, "What about that one prisoner who won't shut up?" and you think that people will think that means Deadpool? What's funny is I wouldn't I, have. Um, because I, I would have been yeah, like, oh, I, is this someone we're seeing later, like Brad? Yeah, is this <laughs> like, hey, Brad. Brad is who I thought of, like, they might think <laughs> of some Brad-esque character, or just someone we have yet to meet. I'm not like, oh, uh, Deadpool, he's loquacious, he'll, he's the one that she's referring to. Of course, Deadpool's at the, knows the TVA. Well, you know what he wants to say, Free, he wants her to say, what about the Merc with a mouth? And then we yeah, don't that's die what he wants. <laughs> okay. That's, then she that's what the he wants. That's winks. what he wants. Yeah, that's so what he wants. It would be painful and cringe and just, yeah. Like, how about no? And I, I'm starting to think, like, is he advocating for small connectivity stuff because he believes they've nailed the broad ones? Like, Maybe. You know, for example, the blip. Nobody in this fucking planet now believes they handled that well, right? But that's, like, the primary issue of connectivity. They fucked it completely. You have written a check for yourself and you know what? you cannot cash. If you'd said top five things to do to save the MCU, number five was fix the repercussions of the blip. We'd probably be like, yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, it's a bit difficult now because you need to decanonize a lot of them saying it doesn't matter. But, you know, that, that, that was a significant example of not respecting the events of past 
the events in the in the in the universe. But no, we need to nail the parts where little characters are saying little things on the little scenes. Get that right. Step one to saving it. I'll go deal with him later. And then we don't have to check on him, but it's like, oh, right, Deadpool and these guys know each other. Connections are uh, what made the early MCU so popular. This is where, this is where I'm getting at. It's like, how is he focusing no, on... No, little, no, no, little, no, Not only no. is it not true, but even if he believes it's true, why is he focusing on telephone calls that don't have any substance to them other than just saying those two characters will interact later? But he's not talking about the blip. Yeah, it's it's fascinating. I, I, but again, if he actually does believe that what made the MCU popular was like this shit... In the first place, then oh, uh, well, you, yeah, yeah, it's just it's you have to remind Mando people. You're like, oh, Iron Man was like good. Did you Iron not know Man that? Was a really good movie. Captain America is a good movie. Avengers a good movie. Like these things really helped. You know, crazy. It's like no, it was the connectivity. Like oh, okay. And there's something that while it doesn't need to completely pull focus, it can't fully fade into the background either. Number two, oh, thank make God. more Avengers movies. Um, this is not oh, what he wow. thinks. Because I, oh, wait, that's you not what he thinks, not Ringy. What thinks. It's not no. what he thinks. Okay. okay. Let's, see, let's, see what chance, he, let's see what he actually... Because, right? yeah, bad title if that's not what you mean. Because <laughs> that was not in our 10. None no. of us were... <laughs> if no, you were asking Freaky and I, we would be like, they need more Avengers movies. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was right say, now, do we I don't even know who the fuck the Avengers are. Exactly. Like the, uh, more Avengers. Let's see what he means. Obviously, yes. Making more movies in the Avengers line, the most successful title in film history, is a good idea. The most successful. I, hold up. The most successful uh, title in film Endgame, history. Right? Endgame. I guess, I, well, Didn't Titanic I guess take over it again or whatever? Uh, Which, or was it Avatar? Sorry. It was, it, Avatar did, but then Endgame got above it again. Um, <laughs> that little fight they have. All right. Let's see. It looks like highest grossing movie of all time. It's Endgame. Yeah. Uh, Endgame's yeah. number one. But uh, I, I guess he's still... Yeah. The, I mean, yeah. It's made a lot of money. Well, so if, if his only point is it's a smart thing to do because it makes money, right? It's like, it, it, sure. Yes. But the thing is, yeah, like, it was smart to do all I'm kinds not... of things in the MCU that they, they don't make smart decisions is... anymore. I think it is Avatar. No. Is it? I, I think these... It's I, between multiple them. Lists are, multiple lists are saying Avatar is, is beating um, it out. But what does Wikipedia say? Um, let me look at Wiki. Let me look at Wikipedia. Um, I'm talking about is a little more complicated. Avatar. Yep, Avatar has beaten it out by. Let's see. Did it's it get two point, again? Two point nine two billion to two point seven nine billion. So they're close. Wait, did they? Did like they like re-release it again? Because well, I remember that the thing was that didn't they before Way of Water came out? Um. Oh. Okay. So. Oh. Yeah, maybe, because, yeah, Avatar, okay. Which actually, almost Avatar seems unfair acting. to release it a second that's, time. So, that's really yeah, funny. Can, yeah. that's, hey, that's well, funny. you know, there's a lot of reasons why box <laughs> office numbers aren't fair in terms of a comparison <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. I guess. Uh, it just isn't dude, sporting, that, you know? Well, dude, remember, that, inflation funny. destroys the entire record, like... Uh, I guess. I'm, I guess well, yeah, because yeah. Gone with the Wind is number yeah. one, I think. And it's uh, never going to be beaten. Inflation. No, probably not. Um, film history man avatar good... 2 made 2.3 billion dollars yes it it's did it's a high yeah, 2.32 billion time. jeez holy shit uh, anyway, james cameron his... is responsible for three of the top four movies yeah no that's right hey look when avatar was coming out that was like the meme he made titanic that made a lot of money did you know that he made the highest grossing film and now he's made the next highest grossing <laughs> film i remember that back in the day Oh, yeah, you're right. It says here that Gone with the Wind held the record of highest grossing film for 25 years and Adjusted for Inflation has earned more than any other film. Yeah, Adjusted for Inflation is still number one. Um, yeah. And like Star Wars, you know, A New Hope is really high up Adjusted yeah. for Inflation. Line, the most successful title in film history is a good idea. But what I'm talking about is a little more complicated. Ooh. But here, before we go into this, he needs to realize what made it the most successful name. Uh, well, how did that happen? The connectivity. That didn't well, happen out of nowhere. Oh, it's I true. The, the after credit explaining. scenes. Yeah, the after credit <laughs> scenes made it. The nature of it. Basically, you taught us how to watch these movies. You invented the cinematic universe. And when you did, you structured them like this. Solo movie, solo movie, sequel, solo movie, solo movie, Avengers. There's some variation there. Sometimes there are more sequels than solo movies, and sometimes a movie follows the Avengers movie. Sometimes there are even two Avengers movies. But the formula stayed the same. Always at least one Avengers. Oh, there's two. Bringing, I, I mean, think we're inching toward three. your point. 
I, I feel like we are inching towards my point here, yeah. Which point are you referring Number to? Number three, uh, clearer it, it overall was, uh, narrative structure, yeah. like with, you know, phases one, two, three. With the earlier structure. ones, yes. They, he might be, he's on the might cusp, because I can cusp, see this yeah. going multiple yeah, ways, but he just might be. Point here. There's well, a movie near the end. And you may be saying, well, that's all great, but we already have the slate lined up. Kang <laughs> Dynasty is phase six, I can't push it up. A, yes, he could, but not the point. But B, I'm not talking about making new movies or changing the order. I'm talking about branding. Kevin, do you have any movies in Phase 5 that maybe could be called Avengers? It's Wow, he, he's hey, being, what? like, literal. Wait. So he's saying we need fuck? to take advantage of the Avengers IP. The name Avengers. By calling so things I, Avengers. This is, this is why I'm like, I'm not sure you get a point, Fringy, because this is... I don't oh think I get God. a point for this. Fringy, no, he did this something un unbelievable yeah, and robbed uh, you of what it would have a bit a better this point. Is a little, uh, this is a little more unhinged than I was expecting as like a <laughs> It thing is. It well, just like, have been... I, yeah, maybe there's one of these films in Phase 5 that you could change from like, so instead of just Captain America the New World Order, just call it Avengers New World Order. Captain America the Avengers. People joke, right, about calling Captain America Civil War Avengers... Four, three at that 2. point. 5. Two point five. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Like, I, I, why do, why do they make that joke? That. It's like, well, because it, it has all the Avengers characters in it, and it was pretty fucking good. Like, it's 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 a good entry, yeah. and it's a it's a big event, and it's like it would have made some sense to call that an Avengers movie. You could have. Yeah, yeah. I think it has a hell of a lot of value calling it. A, it's a Captain America movie, you know. Um, well. I think so, yeah. We could have been in a position where you could have applied that to a lot reason, of the movies, yeah. but we're not. And and the the reality of let's just start stapling Avengers as a title onto movies in order to boost them in terms of popularity, yeah, engagement, and box office is sad. Um, not only is it sad, it's profoundly stupid. Um, it's like an insanely stupid. Avengers at this point, I imagine, from like someone like Kevin Feige's perspective, is this thing that you don't know yet what its value is now in the market. It's... How much is Avengers worth as a brand now in the market? And if you just start yeah. haphazardly going, that's an Avengers movie, that's an Avengers movie, you're, you're going to fucking ruin, ruin it. that brand. You ruin yes. it. Yeah. This you is like their last ditch attempt. I, I think we kind of talked about this. Um, I, I forget when and where. It, a lot of these discussions kind of blend together in terms of you know what happens. Not in a bad way. But I think we had said something about how if they... If they bank on using the Avengers, they'll ruin that name. And that's kind of like their last ditch effort, potentially, of really mm -hmm. revitalizing the MCU. The problem is, you cannot. The Avengers isn't a super compartmentalized thing. The reason Avengers worked is because we established all the characters and then had them connect and then meet. And then we actually had an investment in them meeting. The problem now is that you can't just slap Avengers on something because people don't know who the Avengers are. The Avengers, the Avengers are specific people that you put on the poster that has all the people and the, the very iconic, you know, here they are, and they're in the street and they're looking around and Black Widow reloads her gun and Hawkeye's got the bow and everything. And that, that's the, one of the most iconic scenes in, I guess, film history at this point, I'd probably say. But it was built up. It didn't come out of nowhere. You got to build this up. You can't just slap it on something and think, oh, well, I guess because uh, Monica and Captain Marvel, and whoever, whoever the fuck it would be, because we've called it Avengers, now people care. Yeah, that's not I how just, it works. And every yeah, time you, you do it... You ruin it for your future self. Every, every time, time you, you slap that label onto something that doesn't have the impact of an Avengers film, you completely, like, annihilate it. Like, the half-life of it will degrade so fucking fast it'll yeah, be worthless. It's, it's yeah, why, you're gonna um, screw over your future self. It's the reason why, I, I guess I find it interesting that there's speculation of, oh, they're setting up young Avengers. My guess is they're not gonna call it that, because that would dilute the brand of Avengers if you had a young Avengers film. And um, be like, yeah. wait, young Avengers? Is this, like, an Avengers movie? That doesn't sound like an Avengers yeah, it's movie. Like, I'm not gonna watch it. Babies. And then when the next Avengers comes we along, know... it's like, oh, maybe I don't wanna watch it. We know they've traded villains, uh, potential pr protagonists, like and how the teams will work, and the writers and directors for the next Avengers film. The way I see it is they're all aware Avengers is pretty much their last hope, outside of, to a degree, uh, Daredevil as well, right, outside with uh, of, Born Again. Uh, outside but of Deadpool and Daredevil. It's a, yeah. it's a token they haven't spent yet, and they've held it since Endgame, which is better times. That was the best times for them from their POV, right? So when they've got that, they're, like, there's a big table, all the different people who have any kind of impact on the design of this film, they're all holding cards, and they're like, okay, Sam Raimi. And then someone else goes, hmm, maybe. But can we get a director that we maybe have more experience or control with? And they said, that I was like, oh, this, this, there's like, they all pull up the sides, like, okay, writers, 
this guy. Well, his movie didn't do as well as it could have. It's like this guy. It's like, yeah, that could work. It's like this actor, this team. What I'm trying to get at is like, do you really think they're willy nilly gonna throw Avengers on top of fucking Doctor Strange 3, for example? Like, or alternatively, because no. it was something that he mentioned that we went past because we were waiting to see what his full point was. Uh, he said, you could just move up Kang Dynasty. It's like, oh, you could just move that up. No problems at all. No problems for what even I mean, Marvel would consider their story integrity. And no problems in terms of, like, scheduling or any of the things that are already in the pipeline. You could just arbitrarily move up an Avengers film when these films have been moved back because they're not ready to make them yet. Absolutely. Like, and he thinks that that would solve their problems. If you pushed forward and fast-tracked a $400 million big, like crossover movie when your story is in shambles and you're not making as much money anymore and people are criticizing you for your production methods and the outcomes like with the visual effects everything being rushed and it's it's just crazy he, he said oh well you could just move it up like it's arbitrary like well, they just he, the date he made no this video eight days ago yep it's new king dynasty yep. i don't know if that's even gonna happen because they don't have their <laughs> yeah own. that's a good point so why would that's if he made this video eight days ago why would you say yeah just push up king Dyn king dynasty it's like i don't think that nothing e can even exist now yeah there, there's so many this is what i mean we don't even like the way it. that they make shit but that we have to that i respect the fact that this process is can we use jonathan mages it's like well it's complicated right now there's a lot of things that you know when they were deciding been it fired well, that's well, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is when they were creating like the the structure, they were like, "Yeah, Kang Dynasty." But because how long ago did this start with Jonathan Majors? Is like two years, uh, year and a half? I think it was like maybe it, a year ago. I think it was ago. shortly after. Yeah. Well, these things take time. After, point point being after. is that was we know from the fact that they delayed the fucking assembled right behind the scenes video. We know that 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 screwed them up completely. The uh, Jonathan Majors stuff. So like, you have yeah, to respect to that, now, that, that that's a thing. Well, right now, they're probably having conversations of, do we recast Kang or do we pivot? Do we change from Kang to someone else? And they're probably asking this even more so now because of how badly everything's going. Of like, fuck, people don't like this multiverse stuff. That yeah. They might even be waiting to see how Deadpool 3 goes for them before they like actually decide whether they want to cut off the multiverse stuff and then move on to something else. And like, if you want to put... Because I think they're late with Avengers. They should have had one by now. And that you could have used, like, what storyline would you have picked if you had to from phase four and five to tweak into a an Avengers film? And it'd be like, uh... uh <laughs> I mean, I guess the thing is, is that Secret Invasion wouldn't be something that would be tweaked, but I would have probably made that an Avengers film with massive setup leading up to it. If I, if, I don't like, think... If, uh, not I... the story as it is, but, like... Secret Invasion in the comic book storyline is equivalent to something like Civil War in terms of a big crossover event. So that probably gives would have you been big the potential one to do if you're going to do it. And then and then you can leverage a lot of your cosmic characters that you already have um if we were going to take something that exists right now and then and then turn it into something. But again, it wouldn't be tweaking, it would be a totally different story, completely rewritten. Yeah, well, that was kind of the, the point to be made with any of these choices, I'd imagine. But um, you could have gone No Way Home could have been it, I suppose. Instead that of a Spider-Man film, we just add in a bunch more of the characters. Or Doctor Strange, you know, Avengers yeah. in the multiverse. Of yeah, you could do that. Oh, um, it's so painful, though. But uh, also... the, the, I guess the reality we're talking about here is had they done that, let's say with Multiverse of Madness, and it was as good, we'd just be like, yeah, the Avengers name is worth less now than it than it was. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, is that Avengers is built on all these other IPs that have all been degraded. So there's still, I, th I think, well, and this goes for Star Wars too, we haven't seen yet the damage that has actually been done, but we know it's there. Well, yeah, because this is what it will be. The next Avengers film comes out, and who are you going to put on the poster? Who's going to be on the poster for that? And who's going to get excited? Like, oh, Captain Marvel, and um, and She-Hulk, and uh, Shang-Chi, and uh, uh, Yelena, and, um, like, Miss Marvel. Ooh, what in the oh, and, and we got Captain Falcon as well. Wow. What an exciting team compared to... Yeah, oh, I shit, like look, so it's much. Iron Man. I loved Iron Man. Oh shit! Like it's Captain America. He that was yeah. a cool movie. Uh, oh yeah, shit, yeah, Thor. Him. And of course, Ooh, the fact Thor, that that yeah. was the first time that it had happened. That was working. That's something that's worth emphasizing. Is that Avengers had the benefit of novelty. That novelty is gone. Yeah. Now, Endgame and Infinity War got the novelty of being much bigger than continuations the first two of that films. same story in a way. The same characters. Uh, well, Age of Ultron. I think people expected more. 
in terms of like it being a bigger thing. But then Infinity War comes along and it massively expanded the roster to the point that it was novel again. But like, obviously, Endgame is sort of like a critical mass in terms of you can't push it any further than yeah, that. Yeah, we can only be in this theater for so long. And also, the yeah. movie sucks balls. So well, that yeah, doesn't help. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and you know, it's really interesting looking at this particular screenshot now that we've entered, you know, February of 2024. And you're looking at like, oh, Echo, that got pushed way back. That didn't come out in the summer. And no. then you're like, Blade, that's not out. Ironheart, Ironheart that, that's out this not year out. At all. I think um, that's coming out next year. And Blade is, yeah, far away. And then you got Agatha, and it's like, oh, I guess, yeah, it's like, I guess oh, that's oh. coming out sometime this year. And Captain yeah. America is now delayed by over a year, I think. And Daredevil is not coming out in a couple of months. <laughs> it is. Uh, it's interesting looking at this with yeah. hindsight, being like, coming out next oh, year too. Okay. Like yeah. half of this stuff is. <laughs> But oh, if only they knew. If only if, that man on the stage knew. If all these were bangers, it, it, we, we, we would then, and they, then they bait the Avengers as coming right after Thunderbolts and New World Order, the hype would be unreal. That's not the problem. It's, not, it's yeah. not about where Avengers sits or where we're using it as an IP. It's so insane to think that Avengers' power is built on all the other things that come before it. Exactly. Um, not like exclusively, of course. If Avengers itself is just a really good movie on its own, built on a bunch of bad movies, I guess that would still work. It's just we're talking about maximum profits here. And so to address the issue is not to say we need more Avengers. It's to address the fucking script right in all of these. They're all fucking bad. Yeah, maybe he just kind of hand waves it away at the beginning, but... It yeah, it's really crazy that he did was just the most important issue. foundational key. It should be five things Marvel can do to save the MCU, and all five things are in regards to writing better stories and scripts. I mean, that's the video that should have been made instead of what seems to be slap the words the Avengers on a movie, and I guess cross your fingers and hope for the best. Like I told you, if, if we switched out uh, Spider-Man and Quantumania as Avengers, you know, five and six... Uh, Avengers as an IP will be fucked by now. But I think it'll be fucked anyway. The second they finally pull I the trigger and release yeah. it, it's going to be bad. Probably. Like, in, in more ways no, than just the script will be probably. bad. I mean, like, in a financial and pragmatic, and the, it'll show... Everyone will start making videos like, is the MCU fucked? Like, doomed, going down. And I'm sure he'll make a video saying, you know what? It's time to admit it. The MCU is kind of a disaster. <laughs> Yeah. Called Avengers? It's especially easy now because nobody knows who the Avengers are. Like Sam no, that so makes it easy. Harder. It makes it harder. That's easy. That's cool. That's what makes it harder. No, how do you say these things? Who is this guy? <laughs> it, it's He's easy a to call. Guy. I mean, I guess technically it's really easy to just slap the Avengers on anything because who the fuck are the Avengers? I guess they're the Avengers now because we slapped the title on it. Boom. Filmmaking is easy. I think what's so this funny is a too wacky video. is the we can all kind of agree Captain Falcon is going to be in the Avengers, Captain Absolutely. Marvel probably like pretty likely. Probably. Um, um <laughs> Doctor Strange. Yep, yep, he'll be there. Yeah, he's Doctor Strange. Out. Um, he, in fact, he might, and and then it's like Spider Man. It's like, whoa, mm. we don't know what's happening with Spider Man at the moment. They uh, are. We don't know. Maybe I don't. I don't even. I don't know. Would she? Would she Hulk be in the Avengers? I, don't, well, I guess people. they still technically have the Hulk is around. Um, uh, yeah, I guess he'd be in it because I guess Mark Ruffalo would just do it. I, I suppose uh, so. I don't know what he's up to these days. Um, um, th would Thor be in Avengers? Would he be in another no, Avengers? No, I think movie? he's gone. I think he's going to be off doing his own thing. I, I think, think he. I think I put him in the maybe pile. Will be, yeah, I think yeah. he's maybe. Ten it's like it depends. I think he is. Uh, he, he has been extracted from the MCU. Uh, oh, <laughs> and, and, and maybe if they want to get their shit together and allow him to play a fucking character, then mm. uh, it's so know. sad I'm, too because not only is he invested in doing so, but he's a really good actor. It's like use he him, is really please. Good. I mean, that's what he. That's what he said. He said, "Like you gotta have to. I'll only do Thor if you treat him seriously." Which is so funny that we're back to. Let's take him seriously, please. There was a time where people said, thank fuck Thor is not no longer being taken so seriously, but that's <laughs> that's a dead yeah. time. I'll bet Nando said that. <laughs> Thor's too serious. We need some levity. Definitely involved, and I assume Hulk and Hawkeye are grandfathered in, but that's it. So
Oh, because Hawk, they're alive. I don't think. Uh, Jeremy, I don't know. I don't think Jeremy Renner can physically Renner do that. that. I think he's. I but think he's, he's recovered a yeah, lot. Recovered. Actually, I think so. Um, but I guess that's the thing is is he is he still interested? Well, he's in, not. Uh, I don't. Them. I doubt he's recovered in a sense of doing what Hawkeye was doing before. He's probably recovered in a sense oh, that sure, you'll turn up and talk. Recovered enough to be able to do it and be a part oh, of it. Um, yeah. Oh, hold up. Uh, I just put from six days ago, um, uh, People Magazine, uh, Jeremy Renner talks returning to MCU after harrowing recovery from Snowplow accident. He says, now? if they want me, yeah, Snowplow. It's what moves all the snow out of the way. Uh, he said, if they want me, they could have me, uh, Renner said of his Marvel okay. castmates, adding that it would be something. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it looks like he's, uh, he said, he's, I'm always game. He's 53. He looks like a he definitely he looks like a good fifty three too. Um, Jeremy says, is awesome. Uh, He's another see, I'm, waste of the MCU. To be honest with you, absolutely. He says I'm always game. Uh, I'm gonna be strong enough. That's for sure. I'll be ready. So all right, yeah. It looks like he's got he has a, That's excellent. That's really good news. That's really excellent. Well, yeah, because I remember at the beginning when after the accident happened, it yeah, sounded it was like, like so catastrophic. That it might have been very, very, very like nearly impossible to get back to like a place of normalcy. So that's really good that he's recovered. Yeah, I'm very so glad. On the path didn't, he, um, recovery still. didn't it happen as well because he was trying he, to save somebody or something? Uh, I remember that being the case. Yeah. So yeah, best of this is the thing. Best of luck to him in, in life, but also like hopefully in career as well. Mm hmm. Captain America um, New World Order. Why are we not calling this movie Avengers New World Order? Oh, wow. That is literally what, what? I said. Yeah. <laughs> yep, what you said. The beep. <laughs> I wonder I like if how... I should get a pity point for that. Like a peep or yay or something. It's Why not worth is, anything. What's with, the brave, <laughs> what's with the Brave New World asterisk? Ah, uh, they changed That's the they changed name. It, yeah. it was called New oh, World okay. Order. And now, they, it's now it's Brave New brave World. New and now they're reshooting the Like the Aldous film. Huxley novel? What? Well, they I, I don't know. That film sounds like it's a disaster. Yeah, like this, they're be. reshooting like the majority of the film right now. I, like it's crazy. And slapping it at the end of Phase Five, they'll probably have a bunch of Avengers in it. And for that reason, it they should are. be a big event movie. You know what? It probably won't have a bunch of Avengers in it. It probably won't. It'll have. Maybe it'll have we don't even know who the Avengers are. Yeah. Maybe maybe that yes, movie will be yeah. the one that kind of helps establish who. I don't think it will. No. I, don't, I don't think it will. I think it'll. I think that a lot of the speculation people had of oh maybe Hulk will show up and stuff. I think it would just be that he's in it, and then you'll have like maybe a couple of new characters that they introduce, and maybe one other character shows up, and I don't even know if Bucky will show up because he's doing Thunderbolts. That would be my guess that it's actually not going to be Avengers scale at all. So why not treat it like one? Or let's get creative. Thunderbolts. Cool name if you've already read the comics and know the team, but if you don't, it's a movie about Zeus's weapon from Love and Thunder, I guess. That's not even uh, what came to my mind. But I thought uh, Thunderbolts was meant to be like Marvel Suicide Squad. I thought that's what it was. It's weird because I'm thinking about what comes to mind when I hear that, but I don't even think anything comes to mind because I don't even know what that really is. Well, most people don't know what the Thunderbolts I think about are. Lightning McQueen. I, um, if you would ask me when I knew nothing about any of it, I would have just said, like, I don't know, it's a team. I don't know. I guess people saying it's a joke, but he said before that he thought Hercules was going to be in Thunderbolts. So is it a joke? Well, is, I guess does he what they're trying to say is, he's, just, is okay? he's playing coy with the idea that most people wouldn't know what they are, and they might just assume it's about Zeus's yeah, Thunderbolt. Yeah, most, pe most people don't know who Guardians of the Galaxy were before Guardians no, of the yeah, Galaxy. No, yeah, it's what I mean. It's, it's a worthless point. It doesn't. Doesn't work. And nobody remembers. Nobody remembers fucking that Russell Crowe was in a Marvel movie. They don't remember that. Yeah, or no. We played. We've, we've addressed Bolt. what the point is, which uh, people don't don't recognize the Thunderbolts, which is just like I don't think that matters, uh, one way or the other, whether or not it's good. Well, whether or not... Yeah. well, that's the thing is that if all of these things were good, you can introduce anyone like yeah. say Guardians of the Galaxy, and they could people would be really interested, and they could become crowd favorites when really no one knew who they were. But now, they they have to bank on recognizability. But they've burned so many you know cards that th they're really running out. That's why I mean, Fringy saying X Men is one of his five. It's literally like a really good <laughs> probability here. I hope so because zero points is not. I don't like it. But really, it's about a team, much like the Avengers, assembled by Val to do bad guy stuff, probably. Why are we not calling this movie Dark Avengers? 
Well, I mean, why are we not good. calling this movie Dark uh, Avengers? Oh, because that di- dude, this is so funny. This is just like terrible business yeah. strategy. What's well, the opposite Don't of what yeah. we would advise? <laughs> this no, is yeah. If if this would, is baby. Mu- this is Muppet Babies. Producer, is what it is. Seriously though, if you were in strict producer, I just want to make money. I don't give a shit about like the art mode. Why would you call anything any variation of Avengers? Why would you not leave Avengers? It's, well, there's room for it like in the comic the same, world, oh, especially when the expansion of the like loads world, of yes. universes and stuff. But, but in the film front, Avengers and Daredevil are the only names they have left. What well, and D- Deadpool? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with that. I'm not sure. Um, but, but I guess I, I guess the point being that I think that it would be a strictly bad financial decision to have any variants of Avengers as like a thing. I think it would be a terrible idea to do like Dark Avengers or Secret Avengers or West Coast Avengers or yeah. Young Avengers. Or I young think Avengers, all yeah. these are bad financial decisions because all that they do is make it so that when you do the Avengers film for real, people will be like, well, I saw that like Dark Avengers film and that was fucking crap and didn't seem like an Avengers yeah. film at all. So you now I don't trust you wolf. and I'm not going to watch the new Avengers film because I, I just don't believe that it's going to matter. You need to keep Avengers special, kind of in the same way that Rockstar has now made like Grand Theft Auto like a once in a decade game that comes out and that that bestows a level of uniqueness and specialness to it that is um, impossible. Like Call of Duty doesn't have a specialness to it. It's fucking Call of Duty. They make a new one every yeah, year. It's, it's not I mean, it's like synonymous with fast food. Game. food game exactly. Game. Meanwhile, Grand Theft Auto is like, well, fuck, the last Grand Theft Auto game was a decade ago. So if they announce a new one, that means something. Also, this is terrible advice. Just a brief search and, as well. Dark Avengers, the team. Like, do you know who was in it for you? In the comics? I don't. We got, no, no just to name a couple, Bullseye, Greg Goblin, Sentry, Moonstone, Trick Shot, yeah. Scarlet Witch, a hyper, it, Ares. It's a villain team, not an anti-hero team. It is a and villain also, team. And also, John Walker is a fucking hero, and Bucky oh, well, is a hero, well, sort of. So, no, but, don't... No, well, these are the Thunderbolts, they're anti-heroes. Though. They're anti-heroes according to the MCU. Bucky is an oh, anti-hero. Okay. Which yeah, that doesn't make any bad. sense. Bucky is... He's not even... Also, Yelena. Yelena's not an anti-hero. She was a victim and then a hero. This is what, I mean. what the what exactly are we to believe about um Ghost? Is she uh, who? And, and to be, I, every time I mention her, I want to make sure because people in chat will be like, "Which who one's the fuck? that?" Mother, wake up! Slap, slap! You wake up, Ghost. Mother, you're, you're two from the the, the left there. She in her movie, yeah, she was willing to kill people to save herself from the horrible fate that she had. It got solved by the end. Guy. So now, yeah. is she a good guy? Is now she she's an anti-hero or something. I guess it's so. funny because when, when Marvel wants to do anti-heroes, it picks several people who are not anti-heroes <laughs> while realizing that their their actual anti-heroes slash villains are the people that they think are the heroes, like She-Hulk. She-Hulk well, and, and fucking like Taskmaster a, was mind-controlled. Exactly. So not really the only, but but in their that view, character was made to be disposable in that it, movie. It, yeah, it's just so funny that they're like, ah, yes, it's the anti-hero team, and it's like, what are you talking about? I don't Most understand. of these people are just good guys. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, uh, you've got if these you have this characters like, this selection of if people, you your, if you had them in a room, mm-hmm. right? First thing I'd expect is Taskmaster to just run off. I don't even like they've got this shit to deal yeah, with. They wouldn't even be here. Uh, Bucky would be like, why am I here? What is what is even going on? Exactly. And then when they presented why with, we I need here? to steal a bunch of Fluflonium from the, the, the Avengers stronghold, and it's going to help us power a weapon that will defeat an evil that's greater than anything they could handle. So it's a bit of a dodgy, dubious task. I could just see the bull being like, why are we here? What is going on? Like, who yeah. put us together? Yeah, why don't we just <laughs> tell the Avengers or the government to do it? Yeah, but what, John Walker it, is like an actually a heroic person, so I... I, I I don't I don't know what you can do with this cast of you you're gonna have to well this is part of the process of you have to give me a reason to think all of these characters would meet interact with each other I and then get form along. some kind of a camaraderie yeah because the thrust for but whatever it, reason this team exists is going to be set up at the beginning of their movie I guess or TV show what well, is you think I if you were to tell me before like Infinity War. What would happen if Thor and Rocket were, like, in a room? Like, I could imagine, like, I can imagine Drax and, like, Black Widow having a conversation. Because they're, they're characters. Yeah. Right? I know things about them. I can imagine how that conversation would play out. If you're asking me, what would Bucky say to Taskmaster? I'd be like, I don't <laughs> or what know. Would, what would I have not no clue what that even looks like. 
What's nuts is what would the... Yelena say to John Walker? I don't care. I don't know. What's nuts is that you can actually do something with it, but it would take a lot of time, right? It's like, so what's the connection they could possibly have? It's like, well, mind, mental manipulation of some kind. But what they've experienced, the two of them are completely different. Like, uh, mm -hmm. and what, what oh, they've and taken course. away from it as people and what parts of the world you're... But the thing is, like, what, what do you know about Task? What do you know anything about her? She was I'm she's not a character. She is not a know, character. Pointed out as well as it's a boring team in the sense that all of them basically have the same ability. That most of them are just super soldiers. They're good punch, at fighting. Punch, yeah, punch, 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 they, punch, they punch. Punch, yeah. Ghost punch. has different abilities, kind of, but I mean they're she still, still boiled down to <laughs> punching compared yeah, to the event. Taskmaster feels Iron that Man. way when she shouldn't. Yeah. Well, yeah, because Taskmaster is meant to be able to and of course, if you had the real Taskmaster. I could imagine a be lot of interesting, interesting interactions yeah. between him and many of the characters here. Cause, and of course, it would be interesting because it's like, god damn, that's like, you never know what you can expect. But with this one, this lame one that they made, I can't believe they did that. Why wouldn't you use real Taskmaster? Why, why would you... Why the fuck did they do what they did? <laughs> that's... <laughs> It's an older question but, at this point. But the point being, if they called this film Dark Avengers and then it came out, which it would be confusing to a lot of people because people would be like, what do you mean Dark Avengers? Yeah, like Most mind-controlled Avengers? Or Avengers have yeah, been cloned as none of them people? are mind-controlled anymore. Um, well, and they're not and reflections they want... either. You wouldn't be like, oh, no, there's the not. equivalent of blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, there's just a bunch of random characters from films you don't remember. Yeah, and if they did that, and then it came out, and it was just like a normal shitty Marvel movie that didn't feel like it was a big deal, then you're fucked. You 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 fucked up big time. Like now, when the actual Avengers movie rolls around, people are going to be like, "Oh well," because remember, you got to remember what general audiences are going to think. They're going to think, "Why well, watch that film that said it was Avengers, but like that wasn't really like an Avengers movie at all, and it kind of sucks." So fuck it, I don't feel like watching. You know what I mean, this I, one. I feel like they are you, holding on to the Avengers token and they're going to spend it as best they think they can. They're not going to throw Absolutely. it onto Dark Avengers or Young Avengers or Avengers the Holiday Special. Yeah, the, like this this is this is actually a terrible this is like a remarkably bad idea. Um well, yeah, and, and, and I, I don't think that any of us would have predicted this one like no. if we were given 10 each and they had to be different. No, no way. Um I could have imagined, I could have maybe imagined that there needs to be more Avengers films, but, but not, not in this like context, this. no. No, it would yeah, it'd just be like, is... an, an Avengers film, like a regular Avengers film should have happened sooner, not, uh, we actually need to start doing variations. I just don't think they will. I think they'll come up with new team names whenever they want to do something that's approaching an idea from the comics of like an adjacent Avengers team. Or, the, you know, like Midnight Suns or something, but not, not Avengers. Why are we not calling this movie Dark Avengers? It even apparently has the That's Sentry, dumb. who was never on the Thunderbolts, but was on the Dark Avengers. Why are we overcomplicating this? Why is that the why reason we Why are we, we overcomplicating it? <laughs> but why but, are we? Why was the presence of Sentry a reason to call it Dark Avengers? Nobody even knows who that is. Wait, he's, <laughs> he's the one who Nobody proposed Dark Avengers and then said, why are we overcomplicating things? It's like, motherfucker, you're the one who made this well, up. So you can't, it's not, you Rags, made from up. his POV, if we have Avengers and we move into Avengers and Thunderbolts as opposed to Avengers and Dark Avengers, that the Thunderbolts one is more complicated. Which it's not. It's not. It's less <laughs> like, I think it's more complicated to have Dark Avengers because obviously everyone's heads go to, are they mind controlled? Are they alternate reality? Are they clones? Are they robot versions? Are they people who've gone mm -hmm. bad? And it's like Thunderbolts. Like, what is that? You know, it's just like a bad guy team, but anti-hero team. You're like, oh, okay. And if we're thinking about names more generally, some of the names of Phase 5 and 6 might need work. If this Thunderbolts team is going to consist largely of characters from the Black Widow movie, why are we not calling this movie Black Widow 2, colon, Thunderbolts? Because it's... Wait, wait, sorry, can we... Can I just hear that yeah, name again? Yeah, I need to hear that again. You, you, I, think I, I need to my, hear that name again. You're saying my, that we should call yeah. Thunderbolts Black Widow 2, colon, Thunderbolts. That would be a better use of IP. I think that's a worse use of IP. That's, like, really I confusing. Think putting, yeah, I think I think especially when, especially when it's the... not mostly characters from Black Widow. It's got a disproportionate number of characters from Black Widow, but it's not a Black Widow team. What does John Walker or Bucky or Ghost have to do with Black Widow? That's stupid. Well, That's a stupid idea. It's also kind of, I don't know, it feels weird to say the Taskmaster is a Black Widow at this point, you know? Yeah, not a really. Black Widow character. 
Well, he's uh, like, well, the, she had the training. Idea. He's like, eh. <laughs> that's a terrible idea. Black Widow two Thunderbolts. That sounds stupid. It also, I think we'd be just saying like, wait, Thunderbolts are their own thing. They're not Black Widow's thing. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking. That's a. That's a stupid idea. <laughs> Hating. Yeah, but it uses more IP. You should, you know, call it Avengers Black Widow Thunderbolts. <laughs> yes. And if we're thinking about names more generally, some of the names of Phase 5 and 6 might need work. If this Thunderbolt... Can you believe we're back names, at Taco Bell like again? The... Like, it's, this is... We're not we talking are. about what matters. Uh, get the yeah, names the, right, guys. I feel... Uh, yeah, the, if you had a healthy cinematic universe, I don't... You'd have to work hard to pick a name that would, like, damage your... Your, your cinematic universe, you know, like you'd have to really fuck up. I feel. Thunderbolts team is going to consist largely of characters from the Black Widow movie. Why are we not calling this movie Black Widow Two: Colon Thunderbolts? Yelena wears black now. Let's say <laughs> <laughs> Yelena wears black. So there you go. Stop it! Stop! Stop it, Rod! This, this is a joke video. Yeah, it is is fun the new Black Widow. And now, immediately, people have a sense for what this is. No, they don't. What do you mean? No, like, I don't, don't know what the fuck that means. If, if, <laughs> if the film was called Black Widow 2 and it was about Yelena on her own, that would make a lot of sense to people. Be like, oh yeah, yeah she's in Black Widow. She's yeah. in Black Widow. She wears black. Oh, yeah. well, it would make sense because she's in it and she wears black. And she wears black and she's in it. Uh, there's Bucky and, uh, and Captain She's America. not a forced woman, though, so who knows what people are supposed to think at that point. I can't believe that's the advice, you know? So stupid. I can fix this your Thunderbolts is... movie, call it Black Widow 2. You're like, what? <laughs> you did it, you saved the MCU. Didn't Black Widow struggle to make the money back? It did, it did, but you could blame that on COVID times, but if you release Black mm. Widow 2 today, I reckon it makes 400, 300 million dollars, maybe, Tom. Maybe, yeah what they need to watch to understand it, and if Black Widow was positively received, which it more or less was, this is something... And again, another no. problem that it was, um, but also another problem that I think Marvel's gonna start having is, you know, after this movie's done, does Florence Pugh want to do this, or does she want to, like, do other things that are, are, like, more worthwhile that she can do and get paid money for? Like, a lot of money for, you know? Let me ask you a question, Frankie. What do you think was the most popularly shared element of Black Widow as a film when it came out on social media? Uh, Yelena, oh, for sure. Know. Florence Pugh, Yelena, yeah. W what do you mean when you say that? Just, just her, that she was a really good actress and that people liked the character. Not the answer kind I was going to give. Rags, what I thought the answer I was going to give either. It would also be Florence Pugh. Yes, however, my answer is going to include Florence Pugh. <laughs> It, it would it would not be a grandiose moment for her. No, it would be her flying away from the explosion <laughs> yeah. of the helicopter as when oh, he took the stick. Oh yeah, 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 right. I yeah, that's true. My but point, of course, being out, when it was gonna, coming out, everybody fun. was making fun of it. That's true. So the but idea that he was like more or less well received, like <laughs> more or less than more. Something audiences will look forward to. Why was Captain Marvel 2 called The Marvels? Captain Marvel 1 made- Because no one gives a fuck about <laughs> Captain Marvel. Uh, I mean, I agree with him that this, this was probably one... a tremendous mistake, in a sense, to call it The Marvels. That's a weird name. Yeah, the, to explain this one, I think it's because of the fact that this was set in stone really early on, and they thought, we've got so much power, we can start launching anything, and that we're going to launch The Marvels as a new team. And how cool is it that we have Avengers, and our first new proper hero team is going to be all women? Like, I'm sure they felt really good about that, and that now it's crashed and burned, and so they're like, fuck. Um, well, they I sold mean, Captain Marvel's, like, popularity, which wasn't much at all, because they misunderstood why she got a billion with her movie. So, yeah. I think that's why that happened. They wouldn't have called it the Marvels if they were planning to release it today. As in, like, a no, no in planning state. They wouldn't, they wouldn't make it at all, but if they were, they wouldn't have called it that. Probably not, because it's, I mean, Marvel Studios the Marvels. It's just a weird name. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's it bad is, Yeah, you're using that word too much, and now I don't really know what it means. Well, that would be an example of why they shouldn't call things Avengers, because when you start calling things Marvel and they fucking suck, like, regardless of whether they're actually, like, a broadly, you know, meant to be reflective of Marvel as a whole, you know, Captain Marvel being a lame movie and then the Marvels being a massive failure... That hurts the word Marvel, which you don't want to hurt because that's your brand. I feel like this is a good example of why we shouldn't just randomly call things Avengers movies. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm surprised he hasn't said, because it sounds like it would be in line with his thinking. This is an awful idea, by the way. 
that we should have called the Marvels Avengers Five, you know, subtitle the Marvels yeah. or something like that. I guess and we have of... the same story, but we plug in a bunch more Avengers. You know, we got to defeat Dar oh, Ben, maybe. and we got to use the power of Doctor Strange and whoever else to blah 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 blah. He's using the word the like he wants to use the Avengers in the same way that the words Disney presents is on the poster, which is a fucking blight. And it won't be long before Avengers is a blighted name as well. If they release two yeah. movies that are shit, that'll be it. It's much easier to destroy a franchise IP than it is to build than it up. Than it is to create it, yeah. Made a lot of money. Why not use that to your advantage? Call it Captain Marvel 2 Galactic Boogaloo. You know so, what? That's right. If you want to release uh, the next uh, Captain, if you want to release the next Captain Marvel movie in between the equivalents of uh, Avengers: Infinity War and Avengers: Endgame, man, feel free, go for it. But uh, until you do that, I feel like you don't have that much room to work with. One well, for the record, uh, they cut off the box office recordings for the numbers for this at two hundred million, right? So we didn't even know yeah, exactly like what it made. But for the sake of the argument, let's just stick at two hundred million. How much more do you believe it would have made if it were called Captain Marvel Two? Maybe like 20, 30 million. Yeah, I think it would be maybe. more, yeah, but really not much. I could mm -hmm. see it going, yeah, any sort of way. I don't know. Blue or something. Why is Armor Wars not called War Machine? Nobody knows what Armor Wars is. Uh, that's not... I mean, that's... We don't do it this way. We don't do it based on what people know the titles. Of. Does anyone know what Civil War referred to in the comics specifically in the yeah, general exactly. audience before we had the movies? Like, you don't have to. Armor Wars? Mm. I feel like you can interpret some stuff. Yeah, I assume it'll be like War Machine, Iron Man, Iron Heart. Well, and, and the politics related to it, possibly, you know, something further than that. It doesn't. I'm I'm almost now at the point where I'm like, why do we have to know exactly what these things are going to be before we see them? If the whole point is to make good things that people want to see anyway. Well, that's not mm -hmm. how movies typically work. It's not the norm for movies. Normally, you you see a trailer or you get an announcement, and you're like, oh, this could be interesting, and then you go and see it. It's not like you have to have it drip fed by a different movie telling you what is to come in this other movie. Well, when someone tells you, "Rags, you should see American Fiction," you'd be like, "You know what that's about, don't you?" And you're like, "No, <laughs> like, I have no clue." Watch the trailer, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, well now I know what it's about." It's like I don't, I don't understand this attitude. This is not what saves the MCU by letting people know what's coming next. Like using IP this way is so weird. The IPs are generated power should... by being about a good thing. Exactly. Yeah, you need to focus less on telling people what comes next at the end of the movie and get them to think, I really enjoyed what it was that I just watched. I think he's got it backwards. I think the, the content being amazing and the marketing being amazing is what generates the power of the IP. Like it's, yep. uh, I think not, so. It's not, not the, the IP's around. power generates the quality of the movie or anything, or the interest of people seeing it necessarily. Well, It'll it's play funny in. that that that's true. That's it's funny that because I think calling the Batman movie in the the DCU the Brave and the Bold is a bad idea. I think it should be called Batman. Well, or so something, something when we when Batman's we just said the it. the Marvels being called Captain Marvel would likely get it a little bit more money, at least relatively. Uh, th this is not something we're denying. The The fact is, though, this is all a smokescreen. What's important right now is oh, making yeah, it fucking it, good. This, this won't help you tremendously. No. But there is some amount of cl but a, a clear communication to some extent can be useful. Hence, I, yeah, I, I I don't know if calling a Batman film The Brave and the Bold instead of, like, Batman The Brave and the Bold, even though I know that's a what about the What about but, the man and the bat? Uh, wait, what? What? Okay, all right. What about the bat and the man? Uh, why would it be called that? Oh, what, just well. like a an idea for a title? Yeah, yeah. Instead well, of calling I, it the I'm, Brave and the Batman, the Brave and the Bold, just call it the Bat and the Man. I, I guess the Man and the Bat. Hmm. Well, I guess kind of mix the that, two yeah. together so they know what they're getting into. You know, my guess is the reason why they want to call it that is because so many films at this point have been called Batman. <laughs> they're like it's it's starting to it's starting to be like, do you want to just call it Batman? Because that's a film that already exists, but. I don't know. I f I feel like I feel like that's a name you'd want to take advantage of at any opportunity. Like, wow, not at any opportunity. You don't want to have a movie called Batman, Batwoman, or something. Something, Batman, yeah, like the Batwoman. That would be not a good idea. Yeah. Use your most recognizable brand to sell these movies. Like, and then it won't be the most how recognizable do you brand. Do that? And, then, and, then it, and then you ruin the brand. Yeah, yep. this is so And then the brand can't sell movies. Short-term thinking was what got us into this mess. Nick Fury was a big player in Spider-Man Far From Home, but we didn't call it Fury and Spider. Branding matters. And 
Yeah, we wouldn't call it. Why? Yes, <laughs> you're right. We didn't. We didn't. Well, it's because call it's that. a Spider-Man movie. So we called it's it Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What and in the world? Nick Fury is no, in it. That's it, like, oh yeah, that's neat. That well, he's here's in a question. It. If 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 Madam Web was called Spider-Man, Madam Web, do you think that would? It probably would, would, would but it would then damage the Spider-Man IP. <laughs> yeah, because then people would be like, "Well, I they told me Spider-Man was in it, and he wasn't." I feel lied to. Exactly. I don't this, trust you this anymore. Is, this is an actual thing. It's so funny to see this. Like, we're treating it as though IP can't, can't be drained of its power. It, it, it's just constant. Which it can. Well, we, it we, we've watched can. Batman and Spider Man essentially fight each other over decades for being like top dog. Yeah, exactly. And and that's been a matter. I mean, Amazing Spider Man too, right? Like that didn't do that well. No. And it's like, oh, what happened? It's like, well, when you make Spider Man movies that aren't good, like that's starts to hurt. The perception of Spider-Man as a whole. I guess Homecoming should have been called Avengers, because Iron Man wasn't in it. Avengers Homecoming, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Avengers Spider-Man Homecoming. Why couldn't I make the argument? I'd be like, well, Vulture's an Avengers bad guy at that point in the, in the narrative. He was created by them somewhat, and Spider-Man is trying to join the Avengers, and his arc relates to him understanding his, his nature within the Avengers. Iron Man is in it. It's an Avengers film. There you go. Avengers and and it's a the Avengers will draw more money and then Spider Man you know because Spider Man for yeah, us not a... the whole thing feels so consumer like yeah. to the point that we're getting to a film that's called Marvel Studios Avengers cross Spider Man colon the Thunderbolts Return Eternals two like yeah the... they name it like they're <laughs> like they're tagging an image for an art site or something and it helps set expectations. Number three. Oh, finally. Oh, we're done? Okay, <laughs> three. Number three. No. Come on, right. give me a point. Give, give me a point. See if either of you oh, will get boy. this one. Make at least one movie for less than $150 million. Wow. Holy shit, so, I was not ready for that. I don't think I either of you mentioned budgets that at all, sounds, so... Well, yeah, that sounds reasonable, I'm, so... Like, I wasn't ready for that, yeah. Well, I, yeah, I, I still I, don't I actually... I was in a particular mindset. This isn't even the advice to give, I don't think. The, the advice to give is uh, budget better. Be more careful spend yeah, with reason yeah, yeah. and intention because it was like so no good movie for them could be made with 150 millions that will little generate loads of money it's like well no it's not that it is it is seriously because telling them that they they cap at 150 million doesn't necessarily solve the problem no you need you need more the, the advice here should be careful like take more time to carefully spend your money on things that matter i do find it funny that in his mind a reasonable budget is like 150 million yeah. or less compared to something like 100 million or less or 50 million dude i'd love less. to cap 10 movies at 10 million and we have yeah, that would be uh, that would be brave and bold that's it'd be sure. cool you make your money back and I'm pretty sure it back. would, yeah. I'm pretty sure one of them would create a banger, and then we'd be good. Well, again, it's, I mean, there's a reason why Jason Bloom is, uh, is it Bloom or Blum? I keep saying Bloom, but I, he, there's a reason why he's one of the most successful producers right now. It's because he turns around, he, he makes movies for not much money, he's and a, then they make a fuck ton of money. Yeah. Shotgun producer, and, you know. Yeah. And, well, yeah, he makes a lot of stuff yeah. that's, you know, that's, look, all right, but, but Only there's one something of, One there. of them has to hit. There's, there's a lesson there. Uh, of of you don't need to spend two hundred million dollars. You can you can spend way less money, and then the risk of failure is way lower, and the upside of success is tremendous. Yeah, and you could make a lot of movie for not as much money as people are led to believe. And Disney mm -hmm. played a huge role in that mindset. Um, yeah, but yeah. You can well, get the point that, he's, try new that it's a bold and... idea that you spend less than one hundred fifty million dollars in this guy's mind. Like I mean, the, the, this should just be budget better. Just, that's that's it. Just, Basically, you yeah, shouldn't be spending two hundred fifty million dollars on Secret Invasion She Hulk. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, but you could still end up at three hundred million, and it was actually a good idea because the thing itself was incredible, and it's going to make like two billion or something. You know, exactly, it's, it's going to make them more billion dollars. So it just needs to be about how you spend the money, and not make sure it's under one hundred fifty million. Because fuck it, if if right. Quantum Mania and Love and Thunder were both one hundred forty million, it's like that doesn't solve anything. I guess what I'm curious about is I wonder if he's going to praise Sony because Sony's movies, their Marvel movies, are not as expensive as, uh, mm. as um, like, I think Venom and Venom 2, it's something like a hundred, like, in the realm of a hundred million dollars, and both of those films made a lot of money. And then, of course, Across the Spider-Verse, I think, was in the realm of about a hundred million as well, so cheaper than a lot of, uh, cheaper than, like, a Pixar film. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's, and of course, of course, good old Morbius was, uh... <laughs> Good, Good old Morbius, Morbius. was uh, 
a relatively inexpensive film. It still failed, but hey, that that you know they spent two hundred million budget dollars. Was Seventy-five million. Yeah, imagine if they spent two hundred million. That would be an even bigger Jesus disaster Christ, for them. Yeah. Well, the box <laughs> office. I think the box office of the movie was. It was 160, like 150, something like that. What, let's see. Yeah. Which is not good enough. Um, but if it was if it cost two hundred million dollars, then it would have been a spectacular failure rather than a yeah, kind of just, failure. Yeah. It just a just a dud. Like look at the next few years of Marvel. It is difficult to find a movie I would not expect to cost over hundred fifty million dollars. And that's before reaching. It's difficult to find a movie that costs it. less than two hundred million. Most of them know. cost more. I am so disinterested in this point because it, it's just about how yeah. budgets have yeah, ballooned. Yeah, yeah. You need yeah. to be more careful. That's it. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna. I'm just gonna go pee. Actually. Yeah, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know if you miss anything significant. <laughs> Before marketing, but look at Deadpool three. These films star Ryan Reynolds. And Wait, this one Deadpool is three. In... Look at Deadpool. I thought he was gonna point. Deadpool cost fifty million dollars. That's the one you point to. Cost fifty million dollars. Maybe he's about it was to say like... that. And then it made like eight hundred million dollars. But this one, right. this Deadpool movie is going to cost like probably two hundred plus. Yeah. Star Ryan yeah. Reynolds, and this one is bringing in Hugh Jackman. There's tons of expensive cameos, multiverse stuff. This movie costs money. Then we've got Cap Four. Oh. It's a Captain America movie. Oh, I thought okay. he was going to say, "Look at the difference." Between I thought Deadpool he was going to point three. to Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah. D yeah. Captain America flies around. We've got a Red Hulk. Lots of other weird superpowers, probably. Harrison Ford is in this one. Also, probably tons of cameos. This is also going to be expensive. After that, fan. What? So, I'm confused here. Like, does he not know that films... The, the whole point of filmmaking uh, for some of the most legendary films of all time is that they're made by people who are so good, they look expensive, but they're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so or alternatively, saying... there's a... There's a real cause for them being expensive. Terminator 2 was the most expensive film, I believe, when it came out. It's like, yeah, but look at all the shit they were doing in that film. Incredible. Well, that it was it was amazing stuff. Meanwhile, it's like, oh, the Marvels cost two hundred million dollars. Oh, do, does it? <laughs> like, wow, that looks yeah, awful. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Now we watch these films and we're like, damn, this must have like, were they rushed? Did they have a low budget? And you're like, no, higher than. Well, ever. yeah, I mean. The the creator is not a good film, unfortunately, but for a film that costs like seventy, eighty million dollars, looks way better than a Marvel film. Well, I it mean, Godzilla minus one was fifteen million. Yeah, fifteen million. That that's I mean that's the that's the one you point to. That's at the talking point. point. Fifteen million dollars. It's uh, enough is enough. You need to slow the fuck down. Give time for everybody to make these films, especially with how much money you are bleeding from all of this. But him like, saying yeah. like, "Well, we got this movie coming up, and it's got all these people in it, so we expect it to be big budgets." Like, what are you even saying? Just get back to saying, "Stop spending so much money badly." Mm -hmm. It's not even I mean, spending I mean, so much money. Be, spending it badly. Oppenheimer had a lot of people in it, and that cost half as much as these films. But the reason why is because the actors were willing to get paid less money to be a part of it, which you will never be able to do for a Marvel thing. People want to get paid a lot of money because they don't think these films are of value or of quality, and they're not wrong at the moment. No. Fantastic Four. Rumors point to it taking place in space. This is probably going to be Marvel's most expensive movie of 2025 because of how much it needs to hit. After that, Thunderbolts. Uh, no, Captain America has got so many reshoots that that has to be the most expensive one. I feel yeah, like he's, I mean, that's he's, the um, thing that made Han Solo, the Solo movie's budget so incredibly reshoot, big, reshoot, was yeah. the massive reshoots for it. I just don't, uh, the, he's not even qualifying his position very well here at all. Um, no, no, he's not. And this could have been over in an instant. It's like, stop spending so much fucking money, this is insane. Done. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving <laughs> like, on. Yeah, but it's a, there's a, like, these things cost a lot because of the fact that they're high in effects, high in location. It's just like, wouldn't it be fun if Marvel made a movie that was clearly on like a kind of a bad looking obviously physical set for like in space but it was like just yeah. think of it like it was really like, well written and really charming and to the point where yeah, you probably um... actually attract talent through pitching it to them like that um maybe you can make an in-universe reason why it's happening that way but i was just saying like it would be a fun experiment to spend about five million on something what you can do yeah, yeah just just to see what and then you, can you can't do. just you can't just outsource everything to the editing dungeon and inflate that budget you might have to say oh wait guys 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 we might actually have to write a story that's good here because we can't rely on the cgi and all that and also we can't just have everyone on a green screen we might have to we might have to Oh, oh, the thing. We might have to build some sets. So, chat, you may not know about this, and I would link you, but I don't have it right now, but we were made aware. We, we, we were just chatting, and, and it was a tweet that I saw. 
there is efforts now um in the behind the scenes for Bobby they actually try to make it look like they're not on green screens by presenting the behind yeah. the scenes with CG edited backgrounds like it's hilarious we've gone to a point now where it's so unpopular to spam green screen that they're trying to trick you into thinking there's not as much when they actually film the films uh, like which said, is um pretty insane because it's like in your behind the scenes you're trying to erase that there was work that had to be done through extra work i suppose what's nuts about it is one we like the transparency because we want to know how films are made two green screens blue screens gray screens whatever have you they are not the reason films are bad uh, no, they're not. It's they the aren't. overuse and misuse. Yeah. I mean, it's, again, it's it's kind of funny that when Mando Season 1 was coming out, everybody was looking at the uh, the volume as like, wow, this is a fucking cool piece of tech, which it is. But then because of all these shit Marvel movies, now it's at the point where, you know, you don't want to talk about it or use it, call attention to it at all. The volume is now seen as, like, the root of all evil. But there's nothing wrong with the tech. It's how it's used. Yeah, and um, it's kind of nuts too because you watch it and like the video we were checking out that was highlighting it, they show how badly a lot of it is cropped and how like slapdash mm. the effects are to try and convince you that they didn't use effects. It's like, what world are we in right now? <laughs> What's happening? It's so bad. Uh, mm -hmm. There we are. And again, expensive. This team consists of Florence Pugh, David Harbour, Wyatt Russell, Sebastian Stan, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, and eventually some actor playing the Sentry. And maybe Harrison Ford. It is structured like an Avengers movie. And I don't think Sentry is going to be cheap. So wait, if you believe it's expensive almost solely because of the fact that there will be effects tied to it because it's a superhero movie and that there's lots of actors in it, what is your solution? Yeah. What is the uh, solution to I mean, this problem? Yeah. Let's, let's see, because well, obviously gotta... in our world you can get enough actors and enough effects done over enough time and money that it wouldn't be up to, it wouldn't need to cross over like 50 million necessarily, but it seems to mm -hmm. me he thinks otherwise. This movie then, is also... If you can't get that budget down, then maybe these are the kinds of movies that you save until you've really made sure to establish this is going to be one that, you know, it's a big hit. I guess I would... Like, Deadpool feels like the film you point to in terms of they clearly didn't have that much money, so the nature of their set pieces was for the most part, working within the limitations that they had. Um, though, then again, Deadpool is the kind of film that probably would convince you that it was more expensive than it actually was. Um, but, it, but that would be, like, the lesson that you try to learn from stuff that costs less money. Like, Daredevil Season 1 costs dramatically less than every Marvel TV show. And it's like, well, how'd they do that? What, like, just, what, what did they, what was it looking like behind the scenes? What were the kind of limitations that they had to work around and work with? Yeah in order to achieve the results that they wanted. Oh, and, and it's so weird that we haven't heard him mention reshoots yet. Uh, yeah. It's going to be expensive. After that, you have Blade. You've got Mahershala Ali, and he can walk and jump and wears a leather duster. 150, wait a second. This movie does not need to cost $100 million. It barely none of them needs do. to- None of none them, them do. None of them do. Yeah, none of them do. Uh, this one in particular seems like it could be fairly, you know, yeah. Low budget and practical. In fact, you can use that shit as a big selling point now. People will praise movies that have a lot of practical stuff in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To cost 50. Sure, Mahershala is expensive and there'll probably be another yeah, no cost 50. What, what he, actor yeah, is being paid $100 million like, to get into a Marvel movie these days? What's happening here? Like, I guess it'd be that he'd probably be getting paid like at least $5 million, right? Probably yeah, but something in that that's, we, we've got a significant portion of what we need when we have that. Yeah, really, exactly. Really good actor. So, for Blade, you don't actor, need to make Blade. We've got the yeah. Yeah. There's sometimes task. sometimes you want to you want to sometimes you want to spend on the actor. Sometimes you don't need to, but sometimes well, you really now do. I'm curious. How much did Blade cost? The first Blade. Ooh. Um, well, someone else the that we should highlight Blade too. The first Blade cost forty-five million dollars. Uh, someone else that you could. It's almost too late to do it now mm. because you actually need actors to sell movies in the MCU. But there was a point probably phase four, where you really could have done a Blade movie with an unknown, as long as they were really good. Well, mm -hmm. th that was the time to start introducing yeah. characters whose actors weren't necessarily famous. They wasted that huge bit of goodwill they had. Everyone was ready to join yeah. the stuff. 
now it's like, ooh, these are, uh, this is a movie I really like, and there's this new character, and I don't know the actor, but they did a good job, and it's in the MCU, and that's, you know, regularly good in this alternate universe. And yeah, so, for the record, yeah, people would go along with it. Blade 1 has a lot of effects in it. It doesn't need to, but it doesn't, like, damage the film. Obviously, we're talking about a potential Blade film, which is focused heavily on choreography, sword fighting, mm -hmm. kill the vampires. You're going to need the effects for when they burn apart and stuff, but you can do that. Um, do you remember Daybreakers? Yes. That had a budget of twenty million. Didn't that have Ethan Hawke and Sam Neill in it? I believe it did. Neat. Well, yeah, we we. Do you guys were, remember? Do you remember Ren Priest? Ryan. Did you ever see Priest? Who was in I that? I recall that that was a film that exists. With <laughs> Paul Bettany was oh, the Paul uh, Bettany, Paul Bettany one, yeah. played Priest. That was that was a sixty million dollar movie, and boy, was and that how a much film. money did it make? Well, you know what? It's not how much money it makes that counts. <laughs> it's how crazy and silly the movie is when you watch it. The answer, however, is um, 78.3 million. Oh, so, um, Ooh, Carl Urban was in it. Oh, always yeah. nice. But yeah. most of this action can be practical in camera. And that doesn't mean it's free, but you don't need to fully create characters and backgrounds and basically animate half of the movie. If this movie costs more than $125 million to make, Disney is out of their damn minds. John it will. Wick, it, it will. But it will, yeah. But it, it, will. Yeah, it will. It will. Shot, Disney like will find times. a way. They'll find a way to make this a $150 million movie. They'll find a way. Four cost $100 million to produce. Blade should not be more expensive than that. Um, I, I don't know that I probably. agree that fundamentally a John Wick film should be less expensive than a Blade film because Blade has to deal with the vampire and special effects. I think so. Yeah, like, I, I think I know what he means, but... I mean, it could, it could potentially not be... And the then case, what happens if you make a Blade that. film where, like, Doctor Strange shows up? Yeah, it's in the MCU. Then it's like, oh, well, almost, yeah, I'm not even talking about Disney's doomed. stupidity right now. I'm just saying, like, yeah, it's more than likely a Blade film will outpace a John Wick film for costs. But probably, like, I just feel like this is missing the point, which is that they need to budget better. They need to spend their money and time better. If it ends up mm -hmm. being 200 million for a Blade film, if they've spent the money and time really well, it might just be well spent. Yep. Listen, I know making movies is expensive. And these days, studios are expected to spend at least $150 million on a big tentpole movie. But they don't have to. Just make one movie in the next phase. This point is soy. Like, it's, it's just so weak in terms of... <laughs> just... <laughs> does this, Mahler, does this look like the face of soy to you? Listen, I just want him don't to that. Don't that. have a bit more of a spine and get to the core of the problem instead of being like... You don't have to spend 150 million. It's like okay. okay yeah, yeah, there this there is that there is some admirable quality in kind of taking a bit of a stance and having a bit of cojones, you know, especially when you're a 292,000 sub you movie just, channel. Just like say, you could like, you know, have some balls, man. Yes, spend whatever the fuck you want, bleed out if you want on the fucking street, but how about you use the money to actually buy things instead of just wasting it constantly? It's amazing you guys can spend as much as like several billion dollars on things no one's going to remember. How did you get to this point? Can you look back on how the films were made, what the budgets were actually spent on? Talk to people who know what they're doing. Stop casting directors. Get the ones that actually have experience from making things for a very good amount of budget and creating things that people fucking like. And then talk to them. How did you do that? How did you, what did you spend the money on? What did you do? Did you, are you magic? Like, how does this happen? Instead of just constantly relying on this system that doesn't fucking work. Yeah, do you think that just because you spend more money, the movie will have the aura of expensive all over it? Do you think that's, that's what just I... magically translates into quality just because you spend more dollars what i got triggered by he's treating this like it's like i know it takes more money to make the big films like ugh, mm -hmm. useless is that costs less than 150 million dollars why because success is not just based off how much money a movie makes it's how much profit it makes i mean yeah but also, I mean, opportunity cost again. I'm gonna keep so much more. It in. It's so <laughs> important. Yeah. If you're Resource. putting all this work and effort and trouble and risk, and you're not really making all that much from it, that's mm -hmm. not good. Yep. So many 150 million plus movies make hundreds of millions of dollars, and they were still failures. It's so, it's so, I just, it's just, it's just so funny. This is so like fucking. Wet noodle. 
it's so much in like the world of, of superhero films that like you've lost sight of like the nature of of like the broader film industry where you need to remind them you know you don't have to spend so much fucking money on these movies there are some films that don't cost that much money that make a lot of money like as if that's like yeah like that's just normal that's normal that's just how that's it just works normal. <laughs> <laughs> like a movie making $70 million in its opening weekend is only a failure if it costs $250 million to make. Number four. Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, we're done? Okay, thank you. Right. Right. Come let's on, give see. me a point. Let's, let's see if you get a point. All right, let's Cancel do Armor Wars. Oh. Ooh. Okay, well, I guess <laughs> no point for me. <laughs> um, okay, Cancel Armor Wars. That's one of the five things, Mark? That's well, one of the five things. It seems very MCU. specific. The, well, this is this is this such movie. a weird one. We can't even address like this. We have to wait for his explanation because I don't understand yeah, how this yeah. helps or takes away from anything. I was like, "What?" Oh, damn. Listen, no one wants to see this movie more than me. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, therefore, you but you, you want should to see what, this though. movie a lot. Okay. <laughs> it's a, an interesting start. Let's see how it develops. Because it is most likely that Armor Wars is where we see the live action return of everyone's favorite sassy arms manufacturer. Justin the live Hammer. action return? Why do you say it like that? I don't know. I guess is, it because put, it like is it because he it's... puts far more legitimacy in his mind if it's like a real person rather than an illustration in a comic book or an animated version of the character? Unless wouldn't he, be that, he just wanted it? to clarify he likes... Why don't you just say Sam Rockwell? That's obviously what he likes about Yeah, it. why don't you just say, I want to see Sam Rockwell again? Well, you say Sam Rockwell's Justin Hammer. That's the easy way to put it. As that. Justin Hammer, yeah. Rather than... Because it will, it will finally bring about the eagerly awaited live like, um, action return. I know you can write whatever you want to happen, but he is in, he is in permanent uh, Apparently jail. he was in What If. He was in oh, What If season okay. two. Wait, but uh, like... But that doesn't, that doesn't mean much to him, though, because that's animated, you see. It means more if it's live voice action. Him? At least. I guess he probably did, right? They get the voices for most of the, the, the stars. So that's for, probably why uh, he said if. it then. So he doesn't want us to be confused. Because uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't really care about the animated he one. Doesn't, like. He doesn't count that. Yeah, that's not very important to him. However, Dude, I, it, really, it really is like a thing that bugs me a lot when people put like this tremendous amount of stock in live action as if like animation is like, well, that's, that's cool. But that's like the little, you know, it reminds me of the attitude towards video games in terms of adaptations of video games. It's like, well, yeah, that's just the little, like, the cartoons, the little drawings on the screen, not, like, if it's, like, actors on a, on a stage. I don't know what, it's just, it bugs me whenever I hear people, it like, do that. It is your pet it's annoying. peeve. Um, I was gonna say, yeah, um, it is. you'd mentioned, uh, you know, obviously getting the actors to play their animated, you know, the versions of their characters, and kind of looking back, whatever happened with, um, the what if thing, wasn't that... Shouldn't that have been their opportunity to really like experiment and try some stuff out? And uh, it never seems to have stuck. The well, season two the problem, experimentation was absolutely awful, judging by the titles. Yeah, the, the problem is that these premises are just insane. Like, they're really stupid ideas. They're not like the kind of inch. I don't know. The, the one that always sticks out to me is what if, what if Tony died in Iron Man 1? What if, the, what if the attack killed him? What happens? What does it look like when you get rid of Iron Man at that point? Um and then go forward from there, rather than like, well, what happens if Doctor Strange loses his heart rather than his hands? What the fuck does that mean? What, what is that premise? Well, I'll have you know that's one of the more favored episodes of What If, so there. Okay, alright, well, okay, I guess it's more favored than What If Killmonger Saved Iron Man? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's an idea that they had. I don't get it. I don't know, man. They, they they don't really use the the chances. It's they never have. interesting stuff. What if the bomb killed T'Challa instead of his father? You know that's that. It's like it was that, never any... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I, dude, that's just off the off be... the top of my fucking head. I just came up with one. You know and why it's... wouldn't it be? What if just one thing that happened in the movie went a little bit differently, rather than what happens if the entire backstory what if, of um... a character is completely reinvented and changed? What if Iron Man was successful in killing Winter Soldier, as in Bucky? Yeah, that's uh, that's an idea. What if, um, I mean, you know, what, what if, uh, what if, what Lucky if Loki killed Captain won America at in, the end of uh, in Avengers? Soldier. What if Loki won? Yeah. Oh, well. What if, uh, yeah. We, remember we, we said, uh, we can't be doing this. Traveling through <laughs> we'll the multiverse, the, the yeah. multiverse of madness, he could have gone to realms where the what ifs were being played out, but oh well. All of it is such an oh well. We don't use thing. multiverse for anything interesting, Mom. No. Paint world, there you go. Suggesting it. Paint world, true. No, they mm. go on red. 
<laughs> go on, Red Man. Whoa, on red. calm down, Rags. That's, that is crazy imagination. You oh, oh, oh topsy turvy universe. I don't want to see Justin bomb. It became clear recently, based on reporting in MCU The Reign of Marvel Studios by Joanna Robinson, Dave Gonzalez, and Gavin Edwards, that in 2020, you, Kevin Feige, were pressured by Disney CEO Bob Chapek to announce a bunch of projects you weren't anywhere near ready to announce. Who can say why? Maybe to inflate Disney's portfolio and convince investors that things were- I mean, I think it's pretty obvious why they did it. It's because they just launched Disney Plus and they wanted to, they're trying to build that platform and give COVID people- boom, a baby. Subscribe. Yep, and it, yeah. it, it, it like, helped destroy them. It, any, it backfired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a tremendous mistake. For Marvel, for Star Wars, it, yeah, it was a really bad idea. We're going great. I don't know, maybe that. But the two projects the report cites are Fantastic Four and Armor Wars. Now I think Fantastic Four, while probably not ready at the time, was worth announcing since there's no doubt this gets made. Well, it was it, worth announcing five years before it came out, was it? It was that worth announcing no at the time, time since there's made. no doubt it yeah, because I mean, there's no doubt this gets made. It's like you should announce things that get made. I don't even yes. I just don't know what to do with this. I mean I don't know why you'd announce with it so early, but well, I mean, is there a, don't if, if it's presented don't as made. imagine they had a fucking thing where they said these are some ideas that we're not sure are actually going to happen, and then they present. <laughs> I imagine There's all of us yeah, like, thinking hmm. about you know well, just thinking about Disney them. stock price, but you know, yeah. thinking about Madam Web and the. Amazon I think that's what a lot of people seem to forget. That was like an investor thing. That like a lot of people think of it like, oh yeah, it's fun for the fans. It's like the purpose of that is to tell investors what they're doing. It's give us money, if. you'll get more money back. But Armor yeah, Wars doubts abound. After all, it was originally envisioned as a Disney everywhere. Plus series and eventually retooled. Why are you picking on Armor Wars yeah, so hard? I don't understand. Why, you, why does Blade it have the, the Anthem problem. font? It's picking on the same thing, but Blade has this problem as well. Blade was meant to come out way earlier than it's coming out. It's changed directors, it's changed writers, hasn't it? A lot of these projects have been tumultuous. Captain America 4 changed directors. Um uh there's like it's not like armor armor wars maybe is the the one where it's the most like what actually is happening there but it's far from the most like it's not the only tumultuous production yeah so that's it, virtually me, all of them right now. yeah I, I was like why doesn't this apply to basically all of phase four and five like, I don't <laughs> if most anything of the is, less i know about it the more of a chance it, it, it might have is it just because armor wars is the next one or close to the next one that isn't like guaranteed uh, I, I think it is the closest one to being cancelled, I would I would say it's probably the one that, if you ask me which project upcoming is least likely to happen, I'd probably say that one. It's no, rumored to be coming maybe out Vision, sometime in the, 2026. Maybe the Vision show. Maybe that's the one that I'd be like, I don't know about that one. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd apply it uniquely to Armor Wars. Wait, uh, so it's really, it's because he cares to... about Armor Wars. He doesn't want to see a project he's invested in get ruined. So he's not invested in all the other ones? I Because I was about to say, like, I mean, surely he would agree that, like, Agatha is a much worse idea than a War Machine film or TV show. War Machine's, like, a character who's been part of Marvel for ages that people have wanted to see more of. As a it's prospect, weird that they Armor haven't... Wars makes more sense than a lot of other projects. Yeah, I almost feel like it's really out of place now that Tony's been out of the picture for a while. This seems like something that you want to hit after Tony dies in this uh, element of... It, it's way his, too late, but, you know... Yeah, like the, the element late. of his legacy and what happens with his stuff and his estate and things of that nature could be the... You know, general plot of you know what happens and with the stuff. To remind created, everybody, but, you know, Rodi has been a scroll for like. Oh ages. God, you're in right. Civil War. Fuck. Oh, in you're Civil right. War. Oh. No, mm -hmm. why did they? They didn't have to, but they did. They and then did. someone they it was said, really "Do cool. it." That's what happened. They they were like, "Wouldn't that be a cool reveal?" Oh, and then they were, that's and a then... nobody like that moment. Oh yeah, that's a that's oh, a nobody, nobody like that. Liked everybody that. hated that. That guy well, the at the funeral. Liked it. That wasn't Rodi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, into a feature that... film. Uncertainty is in this thing's DNA. And... Uh, uncertainty has been in all of the MCU's DNA. I don't even know what we, we're talking yeah. about here. This is what I mean. Why are you picking and, on Armour Wars? Stop. It's the same for all of the it. Thing. You need to remember that when it got announced, certainty was the perspective on Marvel. That when they announced something, they weren't like DC, where DC announces shit, and there's no reason to expect that it will actually come out. Back then, everybody's expectation was, dude, Marvel's on top of the world. Anything they announce is going to come out. They don't cancel stuff, typically. Uh, I think the only thing they cancelled slash pivoted on was um was uh, uh Inhumans because I think that was gonna be a film 
and then that got pivoted into like a TV show that was you know adjacent, right, like Marvel Television. But everything else is there. there was this, the uncertainty exists now because the shit ain't making money anymore. And listen, could it be cool? Of course. Here's a possible pitch for how this movie could go. Could whoa, it be cool? whoa, 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 why, why bother pitching the film? You don't want it to happen. Yeah. What you the f- cancel point, it. Your point is to cancel it. Don't pitch shit for it. Yeah, this, this <laughs> is like, happening. dude, you gotta hide this a little better. Like, you know, you want to pitch to the world your idea for almost. That's cool and everything, but like, you, this doesn't make any sense being here. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. James Rhodes' war machine is freed from the scrolls and cleans up the mess that is Stark Industries, which fell into disarray while Rhodey was captured. Why? I thought Pepper would have been handling it pretty well. Yeah, why would yeah. Pepper? Pepper was Tony's... better at handling it than Tony. I like how we have to assassinate Pepper for his <laughs> idea. <laughs> Sorry, Pepper. Also, and all the people that he probably hired that just didn't get screen time because they weren't, you know, needed for the plots. Because it's a whole, like, it's a whole ass company. It's, a lot of people work there. Mm-hmm. Justin Hammer bought it up, and because of mismanagement. Whoa! Why would, why would he be able to buy it up? up? Sorry, what? Why would this have happened? Pepper Hammer is in charge. Have, I figured that the story would be that Justin Hammer is currently in jail. So, well, not like only that, prison or something. Nobody would allow anybody who has any power no. in stock industries would never allow Justin fucking Hammer to buy it. That's never gonna happen. I don't know. I feel like surely the pitch would. I feel like you got to make a show where make the show where Justin Hammer's the lead. He's just gotten out of federal prison. Yeah, and he's got to rebuild. He's got to rebuild his life. The government wants to take it under themselves. <laughs> with the government wants to make it a federal project or something like that. I mean, that seems like a potential, are, like, I feel like there's something you could do there. There are ways like to write that, certain things, but this is so at odds with the current state of the world. The yeah. funny part is, I guess, like, you could just do it. The M2 doesn't care. Like, you could just invent whatever the fuck you want and start doing it, like, from the get-go. But it's just funny that his idea is so incongruent already with what we know. Management, it was pilfered, and the tech is going to cause an arms race that will destroy the world. What? How, did the the that the how did this happen? How did this happen? The yeah. Avengers, <laughs> Epper, all of them let this happen when Tony at this point has a per- an insane legacy, like a golden legacy that they wouldn't want tarnished in any way, shape, or form. Because remember, B- Tony Stark got out of weapons manufacturing. The idea that Tony Stark then dies, someone buys the company, and then goes into weapons manufacturing, that'd be like a huge controversy in, well, in, in the Marvel world. It's, it's worse than that. He's saying that like it got pilfered and all of the development of all technology just got released into the world, and now there's a huge arms race everywhere. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, you, you've already, you've destroyed the foundations for, this is a secret invasion level mistake. Yeah. Because this is not something you can fix now. This is like a permanent problem that you have to deal with in the MCU that anybody, anywhere out in the world can just create Tony Stark level technology. Well, well we already wasn't... have that problem because Ironheart can already do yeah. that in her little garage. So, Rhodey, former CEO Pepper Potts. Oh, uh, yeah, who just allowed that to happen. How huh? did this yeah. happen? <laughs> he now remembers it. Current CEO Justin Hammer and hotshot new Stark intern Riri Williams need to work together to stop the various what? factions from acquiring this ultimate weapon. You said they already Dude, had this it, didn't you? Uh, I want, I want the story of Justin Hammer rebuilding his life after he gets out of jail. That's yeah, what and I you want. know what? Sam Honestly, Rockwell would be on board if you paid him oh, probably like oh, even a yeah, million and said it's all going to be about it, Justin it, Hammer. It'd be really funny. And and it's like, are there any action scenes? No, this is about Justin Hammer trying to rebuild his life. Yeah, and he fucking so the first job scenes. he gets is like, you know, at a like, toy store or something, right? And yeah, you exactly. You do so much with that. There's a story there. And then he finally gets, like, a white-collar job, and he starts to, I don't know, he creates, like, a Ponzi scheme or something. Yes, and yes, we like, do. A, <laughs> like, we never let him actually achieve anything through, like, a genuine no. sense of work. He finds ways around everything. That's, like, his whole yeah, thing. Yeah, and that maybe there's a character who's trying to get him to understand. Maybe you should create things. Maybe you should add to the world. And he's like, yeah, but I can game the system. <laughs> like, that's what I'm good at. I want to game the system. I want to exploit all of the loopholes. And the funny thing is, like, money. designing this film, trying to make it really fun, and interesting and then also maybe give him a bit of an arc and we push him all the way up to having a relatively powerful corporate position and then that's the end that budget's gonna be tiny we can make that tiny yeah exactly it'd be like 20 you know 10 20 million bucks maybe maybe yeah we could, i feel like we and then shrink and the you hell probably out of make it. it you make at least a hundred million dollars at least probably give it the market the, that's where the main part of the budget will go is marketing pretty much Easy sell, but this market just does not exist. Yes, outside I think the Justin apartment. Hammer show would be an easy sell. We have so many characters with stories people are itching to see. More Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Midnight Suns. I I, no. I like how he mentions characters that Marvel Marvel Studios doesn't even have. 
technically. Also, they this, don't have Spider-Man. This is from Werewolf by Night, by the way, this screenshot. And he's used the not many people want. color version as well. I was just curious. I would have thought you'd want to mm -hmm. use the original version. I don't even know version. what this is. Yeah, well, yeah, you, it, most people, I think all of chat are going to be like, what is this? <laughs> but um, yeah. I don't know why he said that this is something that people are invested in uh, compared to Armor Wars specifically. I feel like it's a similar investment in both of those. Mm-hmm. All the X teams. If we're limiting the amount of movies, and I shows, mean, they're working did, on that, buddy. They're working put, on it to appeal to you. How do you put Midnight Suns on the level of X Men and Peter Parker? How do you do that? Yeah, that's pretty crazy. I don't understand that's that. uh, that's not true. That's just not the case. No, we can make per year, which I think is a good idea. Armor Wars just doesn't feel like it's worth being one of three movies released in 2026. Here's the future of Marvel, and let's work with the idea that you can make three movies a year, which seems possible. Homecoming, Ragnarok, Guardians 2, all in one year. It can be done. 2025. Yeah. Nobody. I like it, 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 it can be done, done if they're done, making, man. if they're decent enough to start, you know, turning profits and people have confidence yeah, we can, in the brand. They could yeah, do like 10 do per year, but it, yeah. Whether well, it's. That's not how it works. <laughs> whether it's one or a hundred. I don't care. I want him to be good. That's the, that's the, a lot of what he talks about are all going to result out of other things. When they're mm -hmm. writing them really well, let's say we, we spoke to them and they were like, listen, for what you want to do, like scripting it out really far ahead of time, redrafting it, getting peer reviews of different things, and then making sure it fits in, clarifying it with the fucking law expert, the MCU expert, that's going to take like a whole two months before we even start production or something like that. I'd be like, okay. Mm -hmm. Like, what? What do you mean? We can't tell. It's like, what I'm trying to get at is adding that amount of time on and then adding all the time you need for the CG. And it goes, at this rate, we'll only be able to make like three movies a year. Like, okay. I guess I just find it funny that he doesn't even understand why you might be making less movies in a year. It's like, Call of Duty makes a game per year. Why doesn't every game do this? It's like, well, there's a cost, isn't there? Yeah. It's fucking what Call of Duty is. That's the but cost when you, of when you make a lot of year. money. You can afford to do these things. Mm -hmm. Well, and just I hate this recommendation of maybe we should do three years. Like we'll do as many as we can when yeah, nailing exactly. the important things. Yep, we'll do as many as is viable. Yeah, as long There'll as we one, have stories that we three, want to tell and that five. we can tell well. Whatever it ends up mm -hmm. being, it ends up being. Five. We're already breaking the three movie rule, but I'll allow it because twenty twenty four only has Deadpool three. We've got uh, cap. So yeah, but relevant. that's that's only because of the strike. If there wasn't the strikes, that'd be three. Four Thunderbolts, Fantastic Four, and Blade. No room for armor wars there. What? Okay. Why, why, why are we doing this? <laughs> is three I movie rule? This, is so good. this video is so bizarre. Yeah. Then what let's bizarre... look at twenty twenty six. Kang <sighs> Dynasty. That's happening. Shang-Chi 2, uh, probably we'll, where we'll, this goes. You don't even know, nah, man. You don't even know. Um, nah, I, I don't think so. You, he's just, the guy who's directing Shang-Chi is doing Kang Dynasty, so they'd have to get someone new, and we've heard nothing about it. I, don't, I just, I don't think so. I think they want to fast track uh, Doctor Strange 3. That'd be my guess. They want to get that shit out quick, and they want to get Fantastic Four out, and they want to start figuring out what they're doing with X-Men. That would be my guess. Probably. Not Shang-Chi. Come on. Then we can do Spider-Man 4, sometimes the Spider-Man movies. Dude, we don't even know if that's... This is so... We, don't we even, need to we, we need to work we, on having one movie that's a success, okay? Yeah, We need to work exactly. on that, all it's right? Not, we need to be like, hold up. We need to fuck this time. We need to get back to basics. This is like a big... This is like Assassin's Creed 1 shit. It's like, no, 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 no. We're starting... You got to start over, man. You got to remember what got you here. You also need to understand that uh, uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man movie, like, the, he treats this as though it's just, like, a flick of the fingers, like, we got it. And it's like, do you understand how many legal battles they have to have over whether or not they, not only they can make it, make it a part of their continuity, but that they can even profit from it? It's like, there's all the... Just Spider-Man movie. You're like, what it, is, you... it is pretty funny, like, just Spider-Man movie. I see, it's so funny. I see people say, like, Sony should just give it back to Marvel. Why the fuck would they do that? No. Fuck no. The, they, they're never going to give it away. They're going to hold on to it for the rest of the existence I, of their company. I'm not joking. I, say I don't think they should make him a part of the MCU anymore. If Sony is smart, they need to get him out. They do. Uh, they need to be. They like, probably they, well. They, I so they should do what they're doing. Build their Madam Web. Well, Morbius, so Venom. they shouldn't do that either. <laughs> what they honestly probably should be doing is their own standalone Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland and name it appropriately so it can kind of be its own new continuity. But clearly picks on after the Homecoming trilogy. 
And it's just, sure. just just work on that as a foundation. And then start grabbing grab can, the characters that people want to see. Like throw in Black Cat, throw in like well, and, and you can do Goblin, throw like, in I, Harry. I'm not very tempted by it, but you can do like Spider Man versus Venom, and it's Tom Hardy's Venom. Oh, so that, can, that would uh that, that would probably make a lot of money, well, honestly. I think the Venom films are kind of cringy, right? But if it was good, it's like yeah, fuck it, whatever. Well, we can do that. Yeah. But it's just so funny to hear to him speculate with, uh, on, like, yeah, we'll toss a Spider Man into phase six or whatever. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Why do you think this is? I, I don't. As if we're just going to take this diamond and throw it in the swamp, whatever. Well, it's just funny because there is currently no. There's no agreement yet. It's not on, their diamond, Rags. <laughs> but it is well, their it's, swamp. It's, I mean, no, I'm talking about guess. Sony, what they, yeah, like, sarcastically, what Sony well, has. Well, so his recommendation is for the MCU to do it. It's not theirs to so do like, it with. It's not theirs to do it with. They don't have the film rights. And if, yeah, if they because... wanted to get him back, they'd probably have to pay, like, 15, 20 billion dollars. Would be Sony... set some insane price for that. Sony has managed to essentially take this super popular character and successfully, uh, like, sort of piggyback off of the success of the MCU to make yeah. giant piles of cash. Yes. And now they can detach themselves from it yes. safely whenever the fuck they want, which is yeah. a great position for Sony like, to everybody be Everybody will meme about Madam Web or whatever, you know, because it's probably going to be... <laughs> yes. it's, it's, it's just funny to say what, the When you Madam say Web. the word Madam Web, oh, I can't think about how her mother was in the Amazon <laughs> researching spiders when she was killed. It's, funny. it's just a funny, it's a funny set of words connected that, together. But the, but the, I know where the I'll point, be Valentine's Day. The, the point being, not with my loved ones. I'll be in the theater watching Madam Web. Web. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's but the point <laughs> being that that sure, like all that's cringe and everything. But you know, you could make like a Spider Man four and just do it and not have any connection to the MCU, and it would probably still make like like over a billion dollars. I think I've got, a, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I'm gonna steal this idea from the Discord, right? Okay. Matt, okay, here's a pitch. All right, here's a pitch. Radioactive <laughs> man bites spider. <laughs> Radioactive. Oh, so it would be like man bat, but it would be man spider. Mm. Yeah, yeah. That would be that'd be scary. If you have radioactive scary man bites man, you get man man. <laughs> but uh, but man. it's a radioactive. So you're saying radioactive, radioactive man, man bites Simpsons horse and makes a Simpsons. He bites. So okay, so it'd be a Simpsons crossover because you have radioactive. After a terrible man, sushi accident, the first mermaid is born. So anyway, oh, also that's a big old uh, advertisement for like next week's EFAP where we'll be covering Madam Web. So get excited, Madam Web. <laughs> Uh, checking, in on, we, checking in on the Sony side of out. things. We're gonna find out why he was in the Amazon yes. with when she yeah. was researching spiders. Right she died, she yes. died. Right before she died. <laughs> 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 it was, it's like Morbius 2 like before the movie's even out everyone everybody was... knows it's Morbius everybody knows right. even the lead actress knows it's Morbius <laughs> even Bill Morbius. even like it was what the, it's brought me so much joy and then we're gonna have to see it unfortunately yeah it's mm -hmm. probably just gonna be like a lame movie oh it's gonna be terrible isn't it but hey cross that mm. bridge when we come to it Anyway, I mean, we still got one more from him, so who knows what that'll uh, be. Man, I'm three. disappointed in myself. I, I, you overestimated hardcore. <laughs> I, I was not in the brain of like consumer mode on this one. I thought I was, but well, I didn't go far uh, enough. It'll be exciting when we reach that last one. Okay. But if we want to do Armor Wars in 2026, that means no Thor 5, no Guardians 4, no Silver Surfer. There's not going to be another Guardians movie. I hate this, They're though. Done. I just They're hate done. this. They're done. None of this is yeah. focused on Let fundamentally building this, up these films. It, it is pretty funny. The idea of like, oh, well, if there's Armor Wars, that means there's no Hawkeye movie. And it's like, why would that mean anything? Like, if, if Armor Wars is a better movie than your hypothetical Hawkeye movie, then I'd rather see that. If it's good, it's good. Regardless of whether it's called Armor Wars or Guardians 4 or Thor 5. What were his, um, his first one was more connectivity and small scenes, which Rags got. What was his second yeah. one and third one? Uh, his second one was more Avengers movies. Remember? You well, need to brand. He said to be fair, call things Avengers movies. more. His, his, his second one was use the Avengers IP more. Yeah, pretty much. And then the third yeah. one was um, less money, spend less money yeah, on one film. Money. One film needs to cost less than Man, this fucking million. list. And then so number four was uh, get rid of number Armor four Wars. Is no Armor Wars, cancel it. 
which is not one that we <laughs> oh, were going to guess in our no, lifetime. We were never going to guess that. I think if you gave us a hundred guesses, we wouldn't have gotten it. You'd be like, no, you have to cancel Armor Wars, of course. That's what will save the MCU. This is such a joke list. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Young Avengers, no Black Panther 3, no Good. Doctor Strange 3, Good. no Hulk solo movie. Good. Let's just do none of them nope. ever. No I mean, Eternals yeah. 2, none yeah. of that. And 2027 I is I think Armor Wars, Wars is a safer bet than Eternals 2. Probably, because Eternals 2 makes people think of Eternals. Which is which a problem. It's just got a bad reputation. It's such a... Do you see the thing recently? Uh, damn it. I, I always call him Dinesh, because I keep forgetting the actor's name. When Dinesh said that he had to go to, like, therapy because of the bad reviews that uh, Eternals got. Yep. Disappointing. Yeah. I and, and not only that, but that as part of his interview, he basically revealed that there were other people in the cast who felt similarly, which I wonder if that's going to get him in trouble. Just basically openly admitting that a lot of the people who were involved in that film felt bad during, like, the promotion because the film got reviewed badly. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. Which is, yeah. like... Like I know it's not like it's it's a it's a thing that you want to laugh at because you should, but at the same time it's like, man, I I can't I haven't been in that position. You you kind of feel bad for him. You they know? feel expect, bad for him a little bit. They yeah, expect what they're making um, is good, and they do try. We never said that the yeah, actors are the problem the, in the MCU. Well, I mean, it's 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 rarely the actors' problem. Like usually the actors are pretty good, uh, but the script sucks. Some great artwork here. This is good. We've had some we've had some quality memes today. We've been having some good ones. Yeah, Kamal uh, Nan Johnny. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Yeah, that he would that he was talking in the interview. And you know we got X Men right around the corner after that. So one. I need to other make movie. you guys watch Silicon Valley. That's a fucking good show. I'd rather watch the porn parody Silicon Valley. That was just a little just a little joke. Just a little just a little joke. I don't think and again, it, sorry. none of those other ones I mentioned. Just, Instead, just... we're doing Armor Wars. So cancel it or shift it into a TV show or special presentation. How how does he not bring up Harkness it by this logic? TV it's show. insane. Agatha Harkness the TV is shows are ex an echo. as expensive of movies. Like, why doesn't he mention that Echo should have been canceled then? Echo absolutely should have been canceled. Mm -hmm. Echo should have been destroyed a long time ago or Marvel Signature, or whatever we're calling these now. But let's not use one of our three theatrical releases on Armor War. You made you that rule up. that using three, you just made that rule <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Right, one, the this end. is the second time he mentioned something that was his idea and then criticized himself for, for having it. Yeah. It's kind of weird, yeah. Also, yeah, so a third of the video, more than a third of the video is donated to, or committed to, words, uh, number five. So this is the final point. Okay, so this is the oh big god, one. you're right, yeah, the time. Will it be one yes, yeah. that was referenced All by right. either of you? Let's see. Number five, make one very specific crossover. Okay. Oh, okay, so, so I get zero not. points then. I'm afraid not, yeah. Technically, that, that might mean that you win, because if my brain is operating on the same wavelength as Nando, then maybe Yours I is definitely yeah, but you got, only got, got one. one. What's funny, Rags, you is one. you're about to, this is the one I remember, you're about to get a half point, I think. Uh, but I'll, I'll let him say it first. Marvel, right? And that's led to a fine amount of cross-promotion. Peter Parker loves Star Wars. Ultron sings the Pinocchio song. Sometimes it's cool, sometimes it's weird. So that's not a crossover, that is a that's reference. A Pinocchio Remember exists in their world. Remember when we talked about Lord of the Rings, and that's a crossover when <laughs> EFAP mentions Lord of the Rings? Yeah, was, This is the Lord of the Rings EFAP crossover when, that we've been waiting for. When Lego Palpatine is being played with by Peter, that is not a Star Wars and Marvel crossover. That is Lego Palpatine is in universe of Marvel and he is playing with Lego. It's not the same. Uh, but do you know which group of characters the MCU has done nothing with? And no! Fact, Disney uh, uh, oh, X Men. Freeze yeah, gonna get a might get a point for X Men. No, no but I well, he said he said that you might get half a point. Well, you should so probably have gathered shit. crossover does not mean anything. He means universe crossing over, as in oh, yeah. just referencing things that not, are not already happening well, in the world. For what he's about to suggest is a crossover, but what he's referenced so far are just references. And he's done next okay. to nothing with the Muppets. I love the Muppets. What? Wait. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come on. Wait, wait, wait. No, come on. Come no, on. this isn't. No. I need everyone this to understand. Meme, right? This is, this is in the context of how to save the MCU. And, he, and he's like, this is Muppets. A joke. This is a meme, right? This is, this is, a, is meme. a meme. Yeah, this is a meme. This is real. 
No, this isn't. Well, no, what do you what do you mean by what do you mean this, this isn't is real? real. So what do you mean? He said what do you mean? A Marvel real. Muppets crossover. This is a. Meme. He believes that to save you... the MCU, we need to cross over with the Muppets. No, he isn't. <laughs> um, no, he doesn't. He is not only joke, serious. Like, he's going to he's pitch the movie you to you. Ride. All That's why you uh, sit down and drink lots of water. He's going okay, to pitch so... the movie to you. So get ready. Okay. This so is... so where where okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna That's slow us down here. And just make the observation that the Muppets, I like the Muppets. I like Kermit. Look at, all them. Look at Kermit. Look at Kermit the Frog. Why would you drag him? Why would you drag him into the MCU kicking and screaming? <laughs> Why would you do that no, to him? Don't yeah, me, I no. see him. I see him on the ground digging his no. you know, his hands into the into the uh into the carpet or like the tile. Like a Spider-Man too, the lady getting dragged into the darkness, but it's Kermit going, no! <laughs> he's getting no, dragged in. Why would you do that to him? No. Um, the reason why I said rags might get a half point, I guess zero points, but it's so funny. This will be contextualized as multiverse, and one of the things rags uh, said at the beginning. Is it because the Muppets own Disney? Is to uh, do the not multiverse, Disney, but sorry, good. The other way no. So what I'm saying is, is that he will argue <laughs> in narrative that they reach the Muppets through the multiverse, and that one of the things you said, Fringy, was his point would be less or no multiverse, and rags said I think maybe the opposite, and I think this. But he didn't make it one of his points. <laughs> oh, you had to take I, I it. Did, I, I technically see, yeah. didn't make it one of my points, but I was seriously you considering the idea. doing the exact it's crazy. opposite of what Fringy suggested. It's crazy because, yeah, we, we were all just like, no way. And it's like, yes way. <laughs> he's, 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 he's Man, and this, this is because, like, Disney owns the Muppets, so well, that's probably where the thinking goes. You're, you've definitely, because that, that's what he does say. But um, the other thing about this that I find so fucking hilarious is that, like, the only thing you can say about why this would be beneficial is to sap the Muppets because of how yeah, bad sap MCU the value doing. of the Muppets because the MCU is in shit, but people still like the Muppets. So why don't you ruin them too, God, isn't dude? That this weird? is the most this is the most <laughs> consumed video that we've seen in a, in a while. This is it's so consumer while. brain. Yeah. Is it not the, the perfect video of... for us? Because the opening is don't just say write better. Don't just say spend more time doing. No, they need writing. to go visit they the, the Muppets. Muppets. They need to go to the Muppets universe. <laughs> we need to have Iron Man and Kermit the Frog together I'm you, man, fighting MCU the Chitauri. MCU. Oh, so the MCU is All so right. fucked. <laughs> <laughs> when Holy it's like primary shit. sort of speakers for its saving, saving like the people who still love it, this is their recommendation. Muppets MCU. You're like, okay. Holy shit. They always work on me. They're silly, charming. Yeah, but classic. the reason why they work is because they're actually characters that are like written yep. and presented in a way that's consistent and charming. Comedy characters that Disney bought for $75 million and in my opinion, Man, underused. Every so that's, often there's a Man, 75, that's it? When did they buy them again? Was that in the 90s? Or was oh, that in the no. 80s? Or was it even earlier than that? Because the Muppets was started in the... Sev or was it the 60s? Damn it, I can't remember. Um, man, did you I understand that what they're... Million dollars for the Muppets? Wow. I will, I will say this, though. If we get Statler and Waldorf making fun of MCU movies in-universe... Maybe there's something to so that. That's what we would do, Rags. That's not what Disney would <laughs> that do. Is... Show or special that they barely advertise, and then it comes and goes, and Disney says, well, I guess people aren't into the Muppets. And listen, that recent musical show was fine. I think Muppets Now was pretty funny. And Earth to Ned, while not technically a Muppets thing, but a Jim Henson company Dude, thing, Dude, these Puppets, was... man. They look great. They're look at them. Just it's so funny so because... Life. Every clip you see, Injected. you're like, why the fuck would I want the MCU's sticky fucking yeah, fingers on this? Yeah, why would I want the this? MCU next yeah. this? Look at this the, craftsmanship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. However, I think their most successful <laughs> project since the Disney <laughs> buyout kind of should be the blueprint for how to <laughs> That's do Muppet funny stuff. imagery. <laughs> a few years ago, Disney created the Muppets Haunted Mansion, which is the best Haunted Mansion thing Disney has produced in the last few years. And a big part of its and success has... Years. Is that a big list? Uh, is is that just, a big list? Yeah, is he just taking a shot at the other Haunted Mansion, I think? Well, because there's the movie that came out recently. Yeah, I know, but we don't want it. That's their two, right? So that's and the best one the that they've one done in uh, years, which is well, two? he said in the last few years because there was the one that came out with uh with um Eddie Murphy in the early, but that was not a that few was a years. while ago. That was like, yeah. Why would you say in the last few years? There's not that many. Well, right? there's so, only like two. I'm say, curious. Maybe I just is it a way them. to shit on that other movie without being more specific? I guess so. But why not just say that it's way better than which everybody would believe that a Muppets haunted mansion would be better than that? Yep. That's not even surprising. Well, um, I have heard that it's better to be positive than negative. 
basically constant. Oh, right, so, I see. Yeah. So what you need to do is be negative by implication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to do the with cowardly the way of being fit. negative. <laughs> into existing stories. We know who the Muppets are. Even kids who've never seen them before. Here Dude, Kermit's so good, man. Like, he's just like, that's like one of the best designed characters. Look at him. He's wonderful. Look at this character. Look at he's him. He's so great. Everyone loves Kermit. And you know, you, and I know you'll be distracted banjo. by images of Muppets, but you gotta no, listen Kermit. to what his points are too, guys, okay? We, do, we literally yeah, don't. Right. It's yeah. our show. We literally don't. <laughs> Fuck we you, can just I look at funny. We can just look at funny Muppets. For the next seven because minutes in call it a day. We know the Muppets are. Even kids who've never seen them before hear one sentence. Have you, seen, have you guys seen the interviews of like He's Jim the... Henson on uh on like late night talk shows with Kermit? No, I haven't. I think I have like, ages ago. They're really they're really funny. <laughs> they're really really good. Just like I think I think what's really fun about those interviews is how much it's just like treating it totally in character. Like even though he's Do sitting they... there, and even though you can see. Him standing there, well, sitting there doing all of the uh, movements. It's like that you're so like absorbed in the performance that you forget that he's a puppet that's sitting it, there. It sounds like it might have the same energy as like all the like the Sesame Street outtakes, but they stay oh, in yeah, character yeah, yeah. for the outtakes, and so it's it's amazingly it's super funny well, to listen to uh, and to watch when they stay in character when they mess up. The thing is, is that it's, it's, it's like, it's, it, it is that, that, that's like the one thing they do. They do so much training to become, like, there, there's an immense amount of training that gets involved because actually doing this stuff convincingly is it's like. It's acting, I, yeah. I'd say it's, it's deceptively difficult because I think a lot of people would think, well, you put your hand in there and then like, you, you know, you do the math things and then, and then you do it in sync and then you got it. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's like, it is so intensely complicated and difficult to convince someone that a puppet is alive and yeah, that, that, they, that they're like a person, a person with feelings and a personality yeah yeah I, of course you see it with like you know big bird everybody's probably seen the the di the diagram of like big yeah. bird and and how uh a, a, like how difficult it was and, and like the posture that you had to be in to do it um but i mean it, even, it is just as simple as like how good are you at coordinating you know, doing all of the 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 um lip sync, I guess you would call it, while also moving around, while also making sure that your one other hand, that is the one of the two hands that you actually have that you can use, is uh is convincingly coming across to a camera that you can't see in a frame that you can't see. Well, I, I think actually they use our uh, little cameras when they're they're doing it so that they can see how they look. But how that's all coming across is really difficult. People, I, I just. Look, all right. I just want people to have more appreciation for these like alternative what forms better of, way of, of creating to character. Get everyone there than to cross them over with the MCU. Yeah, the crossover. This uh, will be uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I came for Spider Man, but I stayed. It, it for did a great Kermit. like payoff. <laughs> That's the final. This is so painful. <laughs> yes, it is. The whole video is painful. We know who the Muppets are. Even kids who've never seen them before hear one sentence out of Kermit's mouth and they get him. He's That's the right, leader, he's, iconic. he's sort of timid and friendly. Oh, uh, are you saying he should be the leader of the Avengers, but Muppets? Well, <laughs> let's, let's hear him out. Let's hear this pitch. This is what this video is all built for. In the group, Piggy is loud, violent, and loves the camera. Fozzie is eager, according, and takes every opportunity to I make a joke. Hat. Gonzo is strange, brave, <laughs> and frequently injured. So it is easy to take an existing story and Muppetify it. I mean, this video hit Nebula right around Christmas, and one of the oh, most- I love, oh, I love a Muppet Christmas carol. This video Still hit don't. Nebula. Oh, don't care about Nebula, hit Nebula. <laughs> but, yeah. oh, Nebula the, can go straight to hell, I don't Muppet care. Muppet Christmas is indeed wonderful. I love a Muppet Christmas carol. In Christmas movies of all- Do you- oh wait, do you prefer a Muppet Christmas carol or a Muppet Treasure Island? I haven't seen the Muppet Treasure Island. That should be something we watch then. I'd love to rewatch. We it. should, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I would be up for that. For sure. It's got Tim Curry is a uh, long time silver in it. Yeah. All time is the Muppets Christmas Carol. It works because a the Muppets are somehow able to exist simultaneously <laughs> in a state of pure so sincerity great and absurd at it. comedy. <laughs> they can play a sad scene completely straight and punctuate it with a silly joke. And b it is very fun to watch the Muppets make fun of a thing you already know, a familiar story or genre or theme park ride. Taking something like the Christmas Carol that's been done oh. to death and throwing the Muppets in can remind everyone why we love the original thing that the Muppets are Muppetifying. Also, the Muppets. 
Yeah, but remember the reason why you like the original thing. The Do reason why you like the original thing is because it was good. good. Yeah, the, yes. like, you have to remember, chat, and obviously us, that everything he's saying, he's trying to argue these are all things for why they should cross over with the MCU. How, who's writing this thing? And then, yeah. who's directing it? And then who's, like, producing and what kind of... Blah, blah, blah. And once you answer all these questions, you realize, oh, right, it doesn't fucking matter that it's the Muppets crossing over the MCU. It matters how good it yeah. is. Your exactly. problem is you're making me want the Muppets. You're not making me want the no. Muppets MCU crossover. Exactly. I just want the Muppets. Muppets have a story tradition of hanging out with pop culture icons. Stars like Roger Moore would show up to the Muppet Show and make jokes about being James Bond. Or Christopher Reeve popped in to protect Kermit from Miss Piggy. Mark Hamill's Muppet Show appearance was the first time audiences saw Luke's costume from Empire Strikes Back. Putting the Muppets in the same room as an- has nothing to do with nice. anything, honestly. Um, okay. Avenger. Okay, Could just therefore make people... we should have them cross over with the Avengers. Well, this is mm -hmm. like saying the first time we saw Kashyyyk was in the Star Wars Chris holiday special, so that means we should make more holiday specials. Yeah, it's just Okay. Great. Thanks, man. It's like, okay. We're excited about that character by association. And we have a really simple in here. Here's a very quick pitch. After the events of Doctor Strange 2, Strange is Oh my America god. Oh no. <laughs> no. I told you guys. Oh, no. I told you. Here comes the pitch, and it's a multiverse oh, thing. Oh my god! Oh no! It's so unnecessary. It falls but... into the Muppet verse. Yep. Oh god! If you're watching Multiverse of Madness at this point, they go to the paint world, the the cartoon world, whatever, whatever, and then they drop into the Muppet world. We'd be like, no! Like, how are they? Oh, like what deal was made? That let this happen. But it's like, no, that's what's going to save the MCU. Save the MCU. A Muppet movie. I feel like if you made a really good Muppet movie that's making fun of the MCU, that's more beneficial to the Muppet IP than to the MCU IP. Oh, yeah. Explore her multiverse hopping abilities. They star jump through a bunch of different... I will say, though, I like the idea of Benedict Cumberbatch playing a role in a Muppet movie, but... Yeah, not, but not Doctor yeah, Strange. Not this, <laughs> yeah, obviously not <laughs> this, but no I just way. think, you know, that'd be nice to have him, you know. Him as, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch. Wouldn't it be funny if he was himself, playing man. Smaug or something? Oh, yeah. <laughs> The Muppets, he's, Lord of the he's Rings. in there, he's got the green outfit on yeah. with all the little motion yeah, yeah, that, bubbles on his face. Yeah. And he's crawling around with the Muppets and they're like, hmm, who are you supposed to be? He's like, I am <laughs> Smaug the Dragon. Ugh. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Oh, okay, you're, you're a really good dragon, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Cumberbatch. <laughs> You're uh, I'm, I'm really, I'm really impressed by your Kermit voice. Good oh, gee, it's, it's quite good. Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> These, something good came out of this fucking video. <laughs> <laughs> We're all just remembering how good Muppets is. It's got nothing to do like, with them. Like the Muppets, it's really doing like the, the thing. Muppets. It's sapping the Muppets. Get the fuck away. Get yeah. your little vampire fangs out of here. In cartoon dimension, paint dimension. And after America has had enough, Strange tells America to send them home and she makes a star portal. But when they get to the Sanctum Sanctorum, they are greeted by Gonzo dressed as Doc. Okay, we're going to pause the video because it sucks. Look at this meme. It's really good. <laughs> 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 I love these memes. <laughs> <laughs> His face. <laughs> oh, I'm dying here. Okay. I was after you know, and we learned that America. There were people who thought there was a chance that you would have been able to guess all of his points. We got one. No, there was no <laughs> one and a half at a stretch. Traveled to the Muppet Marvel Universe, and they're in the middle of an Avengers crisis. Let's say Ultron is back, and he's destroying everyone. So Gonzo Strange asks for a regular... So again, this is just, let me pitch a Muppets movie this MCU style, and you're just like, okay. The, 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 there's nothing to say about this. Strange and America's help. Strange says it's too dangerous, but America doesn't care. The Muppets need their help, and they're not going home until Ultron's defeated. So basically, this story is just them going around and hanging... I mean, that's the problem with the MC right now, is that America doesn't care. Aha. Uh -huh. Hanging out with the Avengers. Doctor Strange and America oh, Chavez or Michael Caine. Or it's more than just America rags, but that's okay. Or Tim <laughs> Curry. Now I thought, just Yay! exactly about which Muppets could play which Avengers, and here are my picks. Kermit is Spider-Man. Stop! I don't care! <laughs> like, I just don't, I don't care I don't, about I don't, your pitch! I get it, your idea, but...
That's <laughs> like this is a thinly veiled here's my pitch idea video. Basically. Yeah. He's done a few pitches. But his ideas are shit and his video sucks. Yes. Well, his his video demonstrates a severe lack of awareness of like how anything works. It's 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 a bit sad. And it's so funny that you'd circle all the way back around to what are you saying? That the the answer is to just make better things? You're like, yes. 100% yes. Pretty much. That's the short answer. The long answer is here's what we think means better. Yeah. And it's not make it's sure not that make a Muppet, Muppet movie. No. Not, not make a Muppet <laughs> Avengers crossover movie or cancel Armor Wars specifically. Or spend less money. That's the specific information. You're like, okay. Or make sure that your post credit scene sets up a movie that's coming out in two years. Jesus. He's small, jumps, he's the heart of the team. Sam the Eagle is Captain America. He's small, jumps, he's the heart of the team. Mm. That's what makes him Spider-Man. That's what makes Kermit Spider-Man. Mm. All right. Okay. For the record, I'm not a huge fan of America. For the record, I'm not a huge fan of this one because it's a little on the nose, but that's where he landed. Then change it. It's your fucking idea. If you say, this is my idea, I'm not really a fan of it. That's the point where you say, oh shit, I should just keep this to my damn self. Uh, Fozzie uh. is Thor with a Mjolnir rubber chicken. Miss Piggy is Captain Marvel. Bunsen is... Ooh. Why? Because it's girl. Why? What? Oh. I think, okay. I, think it's I mean, it's the multiverse. Yeah. It's the multiverse. You don't have to have them be... I just think it's funny because a lot of people would have cast the same way, but for different reasons. It's Iron Man, Beaker is Hulk. Yes, I realized that Bunsen is the green one, but Hulk Beaker is funnier. The green one. Now we're getting racial. All right. <laughs> Pepe is Hawkeye. Scooter is Black Widow. Do you like how he tried to give some level of a reason with one, and then some awkward and comment with two, and then just yeah. gave up? <laughs> oh, there are like four Muppet women, and we need the other ones for other stuff. Dr. Teeth oh. in the Electric Mayhem, or the All Guardians right. of the Galaxy. Rizzo oh. is Ant-Man. Yolanda is Wasp. Uncle Deadly is Vision. Camilla is Wanda. The Swedish Chef is Ultron. I know they have Oh my god, robot, how many Swedish people? How many characters? None of this matters. Can we just throw it in every Spider single character from the movie? Done. Or if our Stanley cameos, they pop up every so often and make fun of them. We call it Doctor Strange in the Muppet Verse of Madness. Release it uh, in theater. Lame, lame, God. lame, 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 lame. lame. Release it on Disney Plus. But Megan, this is number one reason the, the, to save Marvel. Like how you do it, it's insane. Weird stuff like that is exactly what Disney needs to be doing with both of them. They've done weird shit for like five years. They need to calm down with their weird shit and start doing normal shit. How about that? They need to make some normal movies. How about yeah, a movie some normal those. good movies? Where a hero learns to be a hero and saves people at the end. Well, let's do that. Yeah, let's, let's, nice. let's go wild and do that. Muppets and the Avengers to make people remember why they love both. So, Kevin, that's the advice. <laughs> oh, hey, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin, that's the advice, Kevin. Oh, hey, Kev. Kevin, my friend, that's the advice. Yo, Kev. I do Can love that. When it says, like, oh, hey, Kevin, like, he knows him personally. I was like, I think if Kevin watched this, he would just say, like, is this a fucking joke? Yes, he would say that, yes. <laughs> like, I am pulling my hair out trying to save this company. Just I'd kidnap a thousand children about? before I let this company die. He pulled it all out for oh, you. Oh, my God. Point. <laughs> uh... Well, and that's why he wears the cap, because he's been you, working okay, his like, out, genuinely entertaining oh, the yeah. idea of Kevin, Kevin being in the call with us right now, and I said to him, you need to slap the Avengers IP on more movies, such as, but not necessarily limited to, Doctor Strange, for example. I think he'd be like, no. Like, okay, well, yeah, you need to spend less like money, and he'd be like, sure, we need to make more money, is I think what you mean. And I'd be like, yeah, it's like, yeah. I'd rather make more money, but, you know, okay, we'll watch your budget, Nando. Sure. And he's like, cancel Nando? Armor okay, Wars. Okay. He'd, be, he'd just be like, Okay. Why? <laughs> well, that's when you'd stop listening. You'd be like, right. Yeah. And then you go, like, you need more. two years away at least. So. You need more okay. tiny scenes after the credits of characters phoning other characters to set up that they're going to be coming around in future stuff. And you'd be like, yep, yeah, what we're already doing. Okay. And then I'd be like, uh, yeah. them, them Muppets. 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 We're like, what do you mean Muppets? Oh, like, Muppets. A, like in Doctor Strange, they go to like the Muppets world. Oh, and then he just gets up and leaves. <laughs> yeah, you you would just be like, okay, thanks. <laughs> you you saved Marvel. Good job. Anyway, back to back to doing my job. <laughs> I just love this. So, Kevin, those are my ideas, Kevin. The fuck, <laughs> like, like first off, if... <laughs> I don't know you. Don't call me fucking Kevin. All right. Well, it's just funny. They're on a first name basis. Yeah. It's... <laughs> oh, Kevin, we've been through so much together. Now where are the Muppets? 
Where are the Muppets, Kevin? I'm happy. I prefer called him Kevin in like meme ways, but he did seem very like yeah. sincere. Like Kevin, I'm here to help. <laughs> That's just funny to me. Hey, Kevin. I've never understood that when people do that. Like as if they know these people personally. You don't, Mr. Feige. Well, well, I guess it's funny, because if you said Mr. Feige, I'd probably find that cringe, too. The only acceptable one is, those are my suggestions, Kevin Feige. That's the only it one. It would only work acceptable. if he was, like, playing a character. Like, he was acting like a should... secretary or something at the company, presenting yeah. ideas. And you're like, well, you see, Mr. Feige, sir, um, I have some ideas for you. Uh, uh, God. You should uh, okay. cancel Armor Wars. You almost want, though, like, they should be directed at just for anyone who has any influence in the way that the MCU mm -hmm. will play out, please. Like, if you genuinely believe this is the solution, which I'm not even sure that he actually does. I don't think he does. This just Surely sounds like stuff that he wants to see. Is... Yeah, he just, well, he needed a video to make, and this was a topic he could do, and he could frame it through the lens of, ah, uh, Kevin. I just want to help you out, Kevin. Yeah, man. But then in reality, it was just him just rambling a bunch of stuff and pitching the films that he would rather want to see that are never going to happen. So I don't even really understand the goal, really. Unless it's some goal of, like, trying to... I, I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't get the angle. Make the movies feel connected by deliberately adding natural world-building moments. That's not what you said. <laughs> That's not even what he said. No. <laughs> not natural at all. Some of them were just stupid. Like, we need to have that moment where Valkyrie has a phone call with Captain Marvel. It's like, no, you don't. It's like, oh, well, it would have been natural. No, it wouldn't. You're putting it in when it had no reason to be there. This is just like, it's def definition of unnatural. Make at least one movie per phase in Avengers movie. No. <laughs> That's not what you said. You said to call stuff Dark Avengers and like and to slap the Avengers label rename. on other yeah. films. So yeah, so no, but said, also that should. Uh, never how be... long is the ad that he's doing at the end of this video? Because we've got four minutes left, and it looks like he's wrapping up. What's Maybe the we'll ad? Skip is it. It nebula? There's only so much Nebula I can take. Okay. Make at least <laughs> one sub 150 million dollar movie per phase. That's one not sub relevant to anything. It doesn't. Phase. It's not anything. It's just dumb. It doesn't solve any problems. It doesn't save the MCU. He's cancel armor wars. I, I still find that one so funny. Like cancel armor war. That that movie's like two years away. We don't need to be. We need to be looking at like what are we going to do in the next few months in terms of turning this shit around. Not. I wonder what. Armor Wars, two years from now, what we're going to do with that. I can't, if we'd skipped to here, and he just listed all we would be baffled. And then you watch the whole video, and you're actually just, you're still baffled. And do a Muppets MCU crossover. I Stop. I <laughs> you're welcome. No, no, no. You're welcome. You're welcome, oh, like any star. Thanks, Nando. How you're generous a real American I? hero. I'm, a real I'm patriot. saving the MCU out of the kindness Saving of it. my heart. But I want to anyway, make sure to check out my videos on Nebula. Yep. Instead of looking at the future of Marvel, I want to look at the past of DC. Because I've said a lot what? of things oh. over the last... Oh, is this, oh, this is ten? the Nebula video. This is the ad. Ten years? This is the Nebula oh video, yeah. yeah. Ten years since look, the he's DC... Even changed he has the new background. shirt. Yeah, he's, and he's got a new oh, shirt, toys. too. Toys are different. Oh, yeah, and he's... also, yeah, all the toys. Oh, look, he's got Ocean Master there. <laughs> wow. Ocean Master and uh, Hawkman. He just ended with Aquaman The Lost Kingdom. I wanted to say something nice, so I'm going to do my In Defense of the DCEU video. It oh is two parts. The okay. first part covers everything from All Man right. of Steel on to Nebula. Shazam. All right, maybe the first part, first part will be on YouTube. Right now on yeah. this video. Yeah, yeah, so Nebula. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Is How about no? Simple. How about no? He's the creator-owned <laughs> subscription streaming service that Get I this helped fast, to create. Right. I was there at the beginning. So it's all of my videos. Oh, oh that's Nebula. funny. That's oh, really funny that he's there. Like Dear I was Kevin. there at the beginning. I helped create it because he wants to let you know that he was there on the ground floor. <laughs> I, <can't. laughs> I was my there God, when I created funny, alternative no, paywall YouTube. Like, it's just funny because there was a weird air of arrogance there that was bizarre. Of like I was there. I would like rewind it and play it back, and you okay. notice what I mean. Creator owned subscription streaming service that I helped to create. I was there at the beginning. Yeah, the, 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 you still I, I like it. Me. Uh, uh, to a distinguish him from uh, other people who would have come on later. Yeah. Creator owned subscription streaming service that I helped to create. I was there at the beginning. The way that he, yeah, the way he stresses that, that I yeah, helped to create. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay. He's got yeah, that. that's really Again, uh, weird. You do not impress you, me you for being a part like of the that. creation of Nebula when it's just yeah, YouTube, you, but with money. That's it. You don't. You don't say that I helped to create. You say that I am proud to have been a part of something yeah. like that. Yeah, something yeah, that makes yeah, you sound exactly. like less of an asshole. 
<laughs> all of my videos. Also, your ideas are shit. All well, of my videos go on. Wait, what are these Earth? videos? Who should be the real bad guy in Avengers Secret Wars? We got Doctor Doom. We got uh, Wanda. There we got Kang. Not... Is that Punisher there in the is, background? Is that not indicative of the problem though? That's yeah. not the issue. It's who's writing it and how they're writing mm -hmm. it. it. Doesn't matter who's the bad guy. At oh, point. my pitch for young man. He just makes so he just makes videos about Marvel. Well, uh, here let he me does go. DC let sometimes. me click on his and DC. Let's go on his YouTube early and ad free, and that includes the Nebula Cut videos only. Well, it's just everything that was on that screen there was Marvel. Mm -hmm. um, Every single one. Yeah, we got Marvel, 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 Marvel. Um, fan casting booster gold. I don't know if that is. I guess it's. It looks, I, I don't know if that is. Uh, let's see. Re my rewrite of Secret Invasion is 56 minutes long. Jeez. Holy shit. Wow. Why I stopped making one small change videos, even though. Oh, even though the banner of his Nebula page says one small change can make a big difference. Oh yeah, he did. And four, remember the first time we covered ago, him, he stopped. was his one small change for Joker. Do you remember? And he made. I think he said he wanted the girlfriend. I think he said he wanted a completely imaginary or not imaginary or something like that. We covered him so, all the way back I then. It was I horrible. Know what you're talking about. He's got my pitches for Thor five. Um, my pitch for a Midnight Suns movie. Uh, Star Wars droids are a mess. That's oh, he's the problem, got. Yeah. Oh, let me, let me, let me show you what the thumbnail is too. This is. Hmm. Look at this thumbnail. Got a C three PO there. This um, doesn't work. We just C three PO in the thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has a he has a ten months ago in defense of Phase Four. Uh -huh. Um, well, remember, it, he, he has to admit that Marvel's falling apart, but he's still on the line of like, well, hey, you know, it's, a, it's, not a, it's not a disaster. It's not great. But, you know, and it's like, just give him time, everybody. Eventually, he'll make the video of how the Mar how the MCU fell apart. That's what, that's what it'll be. And, and it's like, how the fuck would you have insight on it when you were saying it was fine all the way up to the Marvels well, you were still saying it's fine? It be, it'll be like how the Avengers fell apart, and then the next video will be like, I don't know, like another positive video about a recent Marvel thing because yeah. he is uh he is locked in. If all he's doing is like talking about Marvel, um and that's like what he's built his channel on, then he's kinda locked into that. Like if yeah, Marvel like... stops existing, then he's in a bit of trouble. Which obviously that's probably not gonna happen, but Yeah. yeah. Well it'll be a while before they're gone forever. Yeah, exactly. He said, hey, I watched the Nando V Movies videos on Nebula. Why aren't the Nando Cut videos on Nebula? And I was like, yeah, good question. So I put them on there. All my Nando V Movies videos go up one video early. So right now, the okay. next video that's going to go on YouTube in a couple of weeks is on Nebula. Yeah, all you have to okay. do is pay more to watch the same stuff. Cool. Right. And that's my in defense uh, of the DCEU Part 1 video. There's also that's like a line I don't feel like I'll cross is like having to pay to get access to my content it doesn't it doesn't feel right like i'm fine um, with it just don't like sell not, it to me like it's a crazy better service than youtube it makes no sense at all sell it to me is yeah, what it is it's um, premium service you get access to my stuff early for money that's what it is it's like patreon or yeah, whatever yeah. have you stop telling me that nebula is an amazing website that allows people to express it. it's like no you just you you, you just put no one's paywall. there that's all you did. no no one fucking cares about nebula they care about YouTube and Twitch. The videos. They want so the videos. You paywalled yeah. them. That's fine. You can do that. You can make them member only. You could put it through Patreon, subscribe style, whatever you want. But stop selling it as though it's this awesome new thing. What are you doing? Nebula is just paywalled YouTube. That's all it is. Also, all kinds of cool Nebula exclusive content. Patrick Willems holiday special. Oh, boy. Wow. Patrick Willems. <laughs> Have you noticed how so every he... time we stumble across I a Nebula ad, say, it has yeah. him in it? Patrick yeah, Willems. Uh, yeah. Weird. Yeah, it's weird. Star Wars. He has his own tweet framed on the wall. He does because he's a funny man. Jet that lag. sounds like you should frame the one where he ripped into JJ. Uh, he should ruining his favorite movie, DLJ. The new yeah. movie about Dracula's ex-girlfriends that Abby is working on. Woohoo! A bunch of other cool stuff. I don't we fucking can't really care talk about, but about I think Dracula's you guys are gonna really like. All that stuff is on Nebula, along with a bunch of other videos that I made exclusively for Nebula. Like if you like our videos and. When you say you made them exclusively for Nebula, you mean you made them exclusively for paywalling. You made them for you. You made them for YouTube, and you can double dip with Nebula, is what you mean. Yeah. Uh, why can't they just that's say, say that's mean. what it is? That is what it is. By hour, I have a Why not just be honest so and say? So just just say, hey guys, <laughs> this is my job. 
could you give to could you give to Patreon? Every you time know, we get to the Patreon Nebula ads, they treat us as though it's this wonderful to... fucking website. I just don't get it. Stop. Creators on Nebula that you already watch. Like you have Broy de Chanel. No one okay. watches anything on Nebula. No, I don't have anyone I already watch on Nebula. No one does. Hey. Got you don't know Sebastian, that. Sebastian, Lady Knight the like Brave, Jesse Gender, Captain Midnight. Jesse Hello Gender. Future Me, talking about Avatar. There's going to be a lot of that in the next couple we... months. Oh, that Thomas was the guy. We, we watched his writing advice where one of them was like, hey, there's ways to create drama that don't involve death. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was, what? Again, yes. what? That was the anniversary, right? Yeah, do you remember that? I, again, it was one of those things where it's like, if that's the kind of thing where you learn for the first time, wait, there are ways to create this stakes like, that don't involve death. You were like so far away from basic, being able to write. Basic, basic stuff. You, yeah, are, this is like you, you got a long way to go. It ain't an impossibility that you can get to the point where you can start writing stuff. But if that's like a revelation to you that you can create drama in ways that don't involve life or death confrontations, you're just really far away. <laughs> like you are. Or yeah, you're condescending like crazy even... to people who need writing advice. <laughs> Yeah, like you're teaching a writing class of like first graders who have already watched many movies in their lives that have stakes that don't regard death because oh. that's pretty much all children's stuff. Someone in chat's kind of almost nailed it. It's basically video essay only fans. That was that's what this is. Ooh, it does. Oh yeah, that's I like that video essay only fans. I'm talking about the curse, one of my favorite shows of the last year, Princess Weeks. Wow. Big Joel, I love Big Joel. Patrick Willems. Oh, yeah, him it's again. The, like, framing, <laughs> it's the framing. Yeah, like, so much like space. that on the. Yeah, yeah it's like I'm. It's so like much, Mr. Yeah, Robot, it's which uh, uh, neither of you have watched. There's a lot yeah. of Mr. Robot has a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of shots where there's a like a startling amount of empty space <laughs> above the characters. But George in this case, it just looks kind of. The, man, what, what, I don't, is the pitch like that he's just hoping that you recognize one of them? I yeah, don't know. know. These I don't are all know. like super lefty people. Like, that's kind of an interesting coincidence. I don't think hmm. you're going to find right wingers on Nebula, Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Walsh on Nebula. <laughs> Matt Walsh on Nebula. <laughs> Playing Mario Kart or something would be great. <laughs> Wait, therapist what? reacts talking about blue eyed samurai. That's it. Look at show... that meme there. You gotta put that it's, meme. Up. Oh, <laughs> it's really, it's a really good meme. <laughs> Kermit's great. <laughs> the memes have been really good today. You guys have been doing because really Kermit good. is so memeable that they've unlocked. He is. Unlocked Do you remember him. the? Uh, it was the the Kermit in Half Life. I'm a frog. <laughs> I'm talking to what's her name? That's a good meme. Very good. We're almost His through. face, man. It's just. Yeah, no, I know. Anyway, oh, I yeah. really enjoyed. And then there are a bunch of other channels that I love that are not exclusively film and television. So, like, Leo Vader, I think his videos are super funny. He is on Nebula. Legal Eagle, very helpful every time there's some new legal-related story that is on Nebula. Extra okay. credits, I've been watching them for years. They are on... Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, <laughs> extra credits. Extra credits. Oh, yeah, great. Oh, we love extra yeah, credits. Yeah, we love them. On Nebula. I'm telling you, go on Nebula, check it out. There's so much cool stuff. We're always adding new creators. Has he mentioned the paywall yet? To Nebula, uh, which is great. Also, well, I think it's, it's, it's just you downplay it as much as we can't. Don't talk about the capitalist schemes of the lefty YouTubers. <laughs> the don't talk about don't. We, and by we, I mean, oh, look, everything great oh, about Puss and Boots. Everything great about Puss and Boots. Yeah, that was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that video was shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was miserable. <laughs> Someone at Nebula curates these rails. So, like, right now, there's one that's a little How much do you think 20. he watches Nebula? Don't, None. Don't. He doesn't. What he bad. watch If it's on YouTube, he'll watch it, but he won't go to. No, they don't do that. 23. So you got like Film Joys, Best Films of 2023 video, Thomas Flight's Top 10 Movies of Man, 2023. Man, this really does feel like just throw everything at the wall and they hope also, that there's one that... Like, do they not blend in yeah. so hard? They all blend in. None of these seem like they have any sort of identity. Like Stories of Old, Best Movies of 2023. Why didn't I make a Best Movies of 2023? I haven't finished all the movies of 2023. That's probably why. Maybe I'll I, make one when I mean, you, you, you never I'd will. Surprised. You won't. I'd be surprised if you did. <laughs> that seems impossible. I've seen the three ones that everyone loves that I haven't seen yet. So listen, Nebula is great. Now I know a lot of you guys, a lot of people that watch my videos, people tell me on Twitter, on the Discord channel, that oh, they watch Nebula videos is. early on Nebula and they give me some feedback. Sometimes I'm able to incorporate that. That is very cool. And that's ne not Nebula exclusive. You didn't have well, to no, have Nebula for that. No, yeah, you do. That's just funny to me. It annoys like, me yeah. so much. <laughs> Don't <laughs> tell. Next you'll tell me like, man, you can upload videos to nebula and they'll 1080p that like 720p like they, they have several options it's so great 
Nebula is fifty dollars a year, which is already a steep. There you go. But nah, not you use fifty bucks 50 a year. Bucks you don't like, have to pay normally. That's not, that's not nothing. A year. That's not that's... nothing. Okay. Well, it's just, it doesn't matter how yeah, much it is. If it's one dollar uh... a month or a year, rather, it's just money you don't need to pay. So. Really, like, yeah. if, the, if the advert, no, I think what, it's, money. It's, uh, what they've done with Nebula, the Nebula is avoid is admitting that they just want you to donate more money to them, which is fine. You can ask for donations if you want. There's a whole series of ways to do that. You don't have to. Why have we circumvented it, it into you want to buy this service? And you're like, cool, okay, service. What does it do? It's like it provides you access to my videos. I already had that, and it's like, no, not the well, ones that second, I take away from YouTuber. you. YouTuber. You're like, oh, okay. Oh. But well, uh, I don't want to encourage it, it, that it, behavior. Uh, it's uh, bundled with curiosity stream, oh, right? Which okay. is like a well, that I That's think probably it got is. the useful I've stuff seen, on it, right? I, That's like documentaries. Well, curiosity stream is documentaries, I think. Um, but it's a, it's uh, yeah, it's not that's like usually like one dream with. or something. I, I guess it's just, but again, like the fifty bucks, it's like, I mean, it's a price. Like, I mean, it's, that's, I mean uh, yeah, it, I'm fine with the fifty others, bucks. I mean, just call it what it is, please. Just call it what it is. I'm fine with I, I YouTubers just... who only release videos based on, like, uh, if you pay for them. It's fine with me. If you want to do it that well, way, I mean, do it that way. Just call it what it is. Don't call it Nebula. Well, I mean, Otherwise you can call it Nebula, really I guess, bad. but the, every one of these ads presents as a wonderful service. Nebula. It doesn't make any sense at all. It's the code Nando. Remember, one of the, he doesn't try it, but one of them says, like, oh. Nebula allows us to express ourselves, you know? Where YouTube does wow. it. like, no fucking way. The, well, yeah, it's because you, the, the you guys I, really have to worry about being uh, suppressed and censored on YouTube. I mean, that's because that's uh, that's one that you see. Uh, like, I've seen uh, real life law, like that. That if it's like covering a war, like either a war that's currently happening or a past war, that it will get demonetized. That happen, which, yeah. I mean, yeah, that'll happen. And so then it's like, oh well. well but yeah, every I mean, video we just saw, that's not getting demonetized on YouTube. Top yeah, movies in 2023. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, 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 sure. Like if you're just talking about like movies, you'll be fine. Yeah. But if you're covering like active wars that are happening right now, like yeah, you probably are gonna get demonetized for that. And if you're putting an immense amount of, you know, time and, and research and animations and stuff like that, yeah, you wanna make some money off of that. So, and like, then, yeah, and, and again, sense. if you said like so, you know, I, I understand people watching it. Regularly, but I'm putting a paywall on it because it takes so much effort to make. I need to make money from it. I, I, I have no issue with that whatsoever. But if that person, that same person said, I'm not doing that. I'm offering you a better service where you get to see the video. I already it's could see because, the video. I don't um, understand what you mean by that. Mm. At checkout, N-A-N-D-O. Go to go.nebula.tv slash Nando. You can get Nebula for $30 for the whole year. Wow. $2. See? Dad, like you can take money off of the previous money. It's like, what do you mean? He's charging for something I already had. And fifty cents a month. It's an incredible deal. So go check it out. It, this, this to me is not like, too far like... away from offering me bottles of oxygen. I'm just like, uh, like as in air, basically. Yeah. It's better to just say, if you'd like to support me, give to my Patreon or subscribe star, because I actually get like basically everything that you send goes to me. It's not part of a larger subscription service that i am a part of that so like I, no not just, just a part like of remember he helped oh yeah create he, he it. created he it there. he's a fucking you know, pioneer that's true i just thought bottles of air that doesn't even apply because you at least be buying the bottle and you can use that for things so well, <laughs> that doesn't count that's true yeah a bottle one of the best i didn't have the bottle it is currently the I guess it's like I'm buying atmosphere from people and they hand it to me. <laughs> like, thank you, man. I'm going to put it in my, uh, my box of atmosphere. And it is currently the only way to watch my videos before anybody else does. Like, genuinely, I make them. My editor works with me on them. Nobody else sees them. Awesome. And then they go right to Nebula. So you're like the first people to take a look at it. Besides wow. that, thank you to everybody. I can't wait to be in that illustrious club. Oh, and then, and then we've still got the massive list here anyway. This what I mean. It's just, uh, to me, it's a way to try and get more support by not selling it's... it as Patreon. And also, it's like, so all the people who already give you money through Patreon, do they, do they get I don't know if they get early access, yeah, I don't know. Nebula people, well, or do at they that point, get early access? At, at that point, you should just switch over anyway. If you were a patron, and then they start up Nebula, and they ask you to pay for both, you'd be like, oh, I'll just switch over. This is what I mean. Like, I just don't understand the point. It's the same thing. I don't know how many people even know this. I think with the nature, you know how we've talked about this before, when people watch videos, oftentimes it's how they feel, not what they heard. You find a lot of people have said, yes. like, uh, ever since Definitely. watching EFAP, they, it's changed the way they view video essays, because we unequivocally listen to everything that's said several times. 
we don't just we're not playing a game and listening out in the background go right through which by the way nothing wrong with that i do that with videos as well point being a video can come across one way and when you go through it the way that we do it comes off a completely different fucking way and nebula the nature the tone in which they sell it to you i think that that gives off a sense of like wow nebula seems pretty cool man and it's like what is it though and you go well, you know, it's a place where you can find some really awesome videos. It's like awesome videos that you already had access to and that they paywalled. It's, it's not a service. It's just YouTube with a paywall. I don't understand like how they've convinced you otherwise. And it's because they use very specific language to the point where I wonder if it's in the contract for selling it. Kind of like um, um, BetterHelp. I don't know if it would be that. I think it might just come down to a simple... Was that actually something in the BetterHelp? Like, was that something... Was it BetterHelp or was it... That other one, that Twitter one about being like freedom of speech. Remember which which rags? Do you remember what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, candid, candid. Candid, I, candid, candid. I think had requirements in the uh, the contract for how you sell it, what words you use. Yeah, and you couldn't speak. <laughs> the of it in oh god, that was a uh, that was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Oh my god, that was years ago. All right, we're done. <laughs> like, that's yep. done, 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 done. Damn. Uh, yeah, that was the most consumer video that we've seen in a while. Uh, yeah, we, we were completely wrong on most of what points we expected him to make. Yeah. Yeah, that I, uh, was... I, uh, I think... Yeah. Um, I think hmm, I'm wondering how much of it was that I was, in the, I was in the mind of, like, a different kind of video essayist. I wasn't in the mind of... Uh, I needed to be more like that, that peak fire guy. What was his name? That oh, guy? I, I think I needed to channel him more. Yeah. I think I was channeling more of, like, the video essayist who kind of, like, pretends that they're more enlightened than that, but all they do is talk about Marvel and DC anyway. It was fucking I think nuts. I was in that mindset. If he I made mean, a top mindset, five was... things to do, he might be, it might be better than this. The Peak Fire uh, guy. What, like, uh, oh, he might, yeah, maybe. Because um, this one seemed a little delusional, honestly. Like, semi-delusional. Or, or, like, yeah, out of touch, you know what mind. I mean? It like, had totally almost... out of touch with reality. Almost like, um, like an, um, if someone was to say, yeah, this is a, this is an MCU specializing YouTuber with almost 300,000 subs on YouTube. And then you watch this, you're like, no, they aren't. This is a person, this is a homeless man who wandered into your home and used your computer to make a video. This is wild. He likes the Muppets. When we dip our heads into these spaces, it's just... It's like it's like I'm an alien studying a new species on some faraway planet. You like some Muppets? That's great. Yeah, we I'll, all I'll like, like the Muppets, Muppets too. I don't want to mm -hmm. see them Everyone cross over the with Muppets. the Avengers. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't want anything. We like crossing over the Avengers. No, thank you. Uh, um, yeah. So the other thing we we're going to talk about was uh, the fate of. Suicide Squad Killer Justice League, which oh shit, are we? Yo, are also, we, yeah. Also, we we can quickly talk about uh the game itself afterward. But I was just gonna make a quick comment on how its its player base has like shrunk dramatically, even from launch, which is already mm -hmm. too small to maintain. You know, fuck all. Um, the comparison that's often made would be with the Avengers game launching at like thirty two k ish, and this launches a around twelve thirteen k. It's already down to and Avengers was not successful. Here, let's check no, here. Um, it's already today written. there was Bro, hello? five Hi. Well That's hello? literally what I was about to say. <laughs> like, He's just reading the numbers. Rag like Mola has the numbers. So I got them better. Yeah, I doubt it. So starting at between ah. twelve and thirteen K that each day just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking, but now it's sort of leveling out. And so we look at we're looking at like a standard player peak of about five thousand, which is still nowhere near enough to satisfy like the point of fucking selling this thing. So Kind of hoping come back for season one. Don't for be the back. Destruction of the game. Um, it's weird to hope for that, especially in the environment of how games are treated. But like this one is a bit of a blight upon the future of gaming. We say there's such a thing as anti stories or anti films. Some of the ones I would describe in terms of how they're made. This to me feels like an anti game. Um, this is not where games should be going, nor should games learn from it. Like the a lot of people want to focus on the Sweet Baby Ink stuff, but I want to focus more so in conjunction with that, the uh, Rocksteady's decision for games as service, you know, stuff, which, to be fair, a lot of people have been covering as well. But what a, what a fucking mess of a game. For those in chat who didn't watch uh, me play the game, Supercut's coming out tomorrow. Uh, it's all ready to go, I think, anyway. I need to proof it, just to make sure. Should be I coming out. I saw the early access that you put on Nebula. I it put it on really Nebula good. for rags, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I used I used code Mahler and got twenty dollars off my fifty dollars a year subscription. I did say we wouldn't talk about it on EFAP, but what I meant was like a full episode. I didn't mean like yeah, never that's not mentioning it. I don't want to play that is it. Not no. I've yeah. not played it and I, don't want it. Well, and, and I want it mentioned uh, so hate... that the people who only watch mainline EFAP know what this was somewhat, you know, as an event. Like I played it, it was horrible. There's not much of anything I like about the game at all, and. uh the supercut will be a way to sort of explore exactly what the problem was in a quicker way than watching my playthroughs of it. But it's um, it's a disgusting game in more than just the storytelling elements, which I'm sure you've all heard about. Um, yes. But before I go on, I was actually going to ask, because Rags had seen that, what were your thoughts of, of the game, of what you saw? I uh, watched Mahler Supercut, that is true. And I hate this game. Uh, it looks like it is a slog to play, super generic, and at the same time, garishly hideous. Not just in terms of its UI, but in terms of all the effects and everything happening. It sounded the it horrifically annoying. All of the characters constantly ch talking, chatting, going on and on and on. No good jokes, no funny dialogue. I don't think I've ever seen something that tries to make so many witty jokes and funny comments and stuff, but misses. Um, I, I hate it. It's just icky and nasty. Uh, the story is terrible. The characters are awful. Um, it's, got the, it's got all the gaming stuff wrong with it, the... the the season this and the live service that and you're you, the if there's some internet or sign up issue you can't play the game single player um it's super disrespectful to the dc franchise and the heroes i hate all of the characters uh harley is particularly insufferable in this game um it's i despise this game i hate it i've never played it and i hate this game i hope it fails and if i i I don't. I don't want to talk about it. Really, <laughs> that's why we're probably we... not going to say much more than. I think there. You could talk about it, but it would mostly be about here's what they should have done, because what they actually did can be summed up pretty concisely as nonsensical and disrespectful merged together. Um, when you've got fucking typos in the thank you Kevin message at the end, and then your loot box pops up right afterwards, it's just all, it's just icky and grimy and nasty. I hope this game fucking crashes and burns. Which I, I, think uh, it will. I, I agree with the assessment from, again, I haven't played it from what I have seen and heard from the people who played it. Uh, I totally agree with the assessment of it being an anti-game in the sense that I don't even understand how they could have thought that this was a game that would appeal to anybody. I just don't, I don't understand, like, its existence or a lot of the decisions that were made, yeah, uh, this in is that game. game. I don't, make. I don't understand, like, what was the pitch for the end of the Arkham version of Batman is tied up to a park bench and got shot in the face by Harley Quinn. Like, how is that pitch. an idea that anybody would pitch and go, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's such a good idea. We should do you that. You kill the Justice League. That's the game. And you're like, that, that's the kind of a game you don't make. You don't make that game. Um, the thing is, I, I, would, I would just want to, again, hone in on, this is a Batman that you've had in three slash four games, depending on how you feel about Arkham Origins. That is one of the one of the more liked versions of Batman, played by the iconic voice of Batman, and you decide it would be a good idea for that character's end to be shot in the face by Harley Quinn. Yeah, I Harley Quinn dresses him down, makes fun of him, and shoots him in the head. Yeah, and then that's it, and he's done. And meanwhile, Wonder Woman, a character who does not have any of this history that exists in these other better games, gets more of a heroic send off than Batman. I just don't have understand. Have you seen his video, Fringy? Well, no, he hasn't. Uh, I would advise you watch it. it I've, it's, seen, uh, it is, it's I've wild. seen some of the stream. I was there to watch some of the yeah, stream, it's, and it, it looked miserable. Oh, it's so much worse. Now that I have context for everything, it is so much worse. Um, obviously, a lot of people have compared it to Joel uh, because it is the same thing, uh, and it's getting a little bit tiresome, <laughs> i got to say. Like, the, I don't know why they thought this, shot. this was a good idea. Wonder Woman. Look at this. Yeah, I know. It's just hilarious. Meanwhile, the Batman who has history in this world that characters are played as in beloved installments across multiple games 
It's just like, shoot him in the face, whatever. He doesn't die as a hero. He doesn't die sacrificing himself for something good. He doesn't die with any character that he knows or that it's been established. It's, he, and he doesn't even have to die. That's the thing. No. He, I, I just let everyone just watch the video when it's well, and then, And then, of course, you know, to, to tie back into the gameplay stuff, it just looks like a really lame uh, slog Mega to get slop. through. Yeah. It uh, definitely is like the infection of you need to make a game where maybe you do have four characters who are meant to have unique attributes, but there needs to be commonalities because it's a live service game where we want that kind of uniformity. So just have them all run around with guns and shoot these just generic looking enemies with big numbers popping out and big crazy effects and oh look here's a new gun that you got it's just, it's just it's just so lame this game is lame it's lame it's super lame from what i've seen <laughs> lame is i know like i just think it's all well, i have to say to people is like, like it's a cancerous anyone who hasn't seen the full context it's so much worse it just the more you know about this game the worse it gets um there's there's i think three moments in my full playthrough of disconnecting from the server and my internet is fine, by the way, so it's not me at the time. Like the stream continues. Well, you kept, um, yeah, you kept streaming, yeah. So it's it, it's just like the saddest and grossest thing. It's one of the most like off-putting things as someone who's invested in gaming as an art form and an industry that's successful. Seeing that you've been disconnected from the server, so you get. It's not even like uh oh, you know, the game's got an interruption, so we'll give you a check. It's like nope, sent back to the last checkpoint. Oh, go to the main menu. And also, it's funny that people keep pointing out that uh, the store loads faster than just regular UI elements. Yes, yep, the, like you can those... try to change your weapon or change your character, and or like try to make any changes, and it will be loading. But then you pop over to the store, and it loads instantly. That's hilarious. They make that sure you can always spend gaming. money. I wish I I wish I'd, I'd checked that when I got disconnected, but obviously I wasn't thinking about the store when trying to play my single player campaign. Though I should have been, because mm -hmm. I was looking for particular aesthetics for King Shark, and I saw many that were locked that said you you have to buy this in the store, and I was just like, you gotta be fucking <laughs> kidding me. And, That's um, so funny. It's so sad to compare to how games used to work but i've also got this part right it's slowed down it's like look at this ui and i know the memes have spread around already but just look at this shit absolutely oh, it's insanely so ugly it's hideous and and you know it's good to have information sure but how could i possibly track all of this shit at once so that escort well, lex I mean, to truck noise. speed stop it's tower noise. shield integrity combat flare challenge the radar the description of what my individual buttons do my like you know specific moves and their cooldowns the tracker of the car that i'm supposed to look after the enemy tower it's got a link on there and then like the health bars of everything that i'm fighting all the numbers spraying off critical hits spraying off as bigger and more significant and then just particle effects from the general explosions in the game obviously my gun my ammo the, the fact that it actually, like, links up, oh, if you want to use your melee attack, make sure you press the left mouse click. Like, that'll show up. It's like, thanks, It's uh, I guess. Like... It's so funny when you compare this to a game like Max Payne 3, where the UI occupies maybe 2% of the screen in the bottom right-hand corner. There's your health. There's your ammo. There's your painkillers that you got. There you go. And that's Surely... it. Dead space, Super right? Minimalist. The goat yeah. for a lot of this. Yeah. Oh well, well, I yep. was, uh, I wasn't gonna, because you got games like Dead Space, or you could point to. Didn't Metro have like a game mode where there was no UI at all, where like every single piece of information was something that was in game? Well, not no, to I say that every game sure. is in a position that they can do that. Not every game is in a position where it could have no UI and still function, uh, as that well. But like this is excessive. <laughs> What's happening in this game? Um, I will also say this this game is seventy dollars. This is yeah, a seventy dollar game that is full of premium currency, uh, seasons to come. It's got it's it's everything that you would expect in a free to play game, except it's seventy dollars to get in the door. So, yep, that shit creeps up on you because people because uh, people get into it and they spend money on it. So. But, uh, you know, this is this is Rocksteady's first game in nine years. Arkham Knight came out in 2015. This is the product of uh, at least seven years of development, as I understand and it. Surely it's reasonable to uh, assume this could sink them. It'll certainly get them layoffs. Uh, I, I could imagine that this... Because the thing is, you know, this is Warner Brothers published this, so a game that they can compare it to that came out around the same time last year as Hogwarts Legacy, which I believe was one of, if not possibly, the, the top-selling game of the year. They will be comparing this to that. They probably have higher expectations for this than that because I think that was their first game for Hogwarts. 
maybe maybe the first game of that kind, whereas this is Rocksteady, they've made like multiple, you know, very successful, commercially yeah. successful, well received games. This is multiple years of development and live service. So there's big expectations and big costs that would have been associated with this game. And it's 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 like it's it's basically dead on arrival. Um could they turn it around? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> some, if, some if, games, if you completely change the game, sure. Some or games maybe. have turned it around, but there for every live service game that turned it around, you got like four or five that's a graveyard, yeah, yeah. behind yeah. them. There is a there is a there is not that much space. Um there really isn't that much space in the live service realm. There are a few games that are incredibly dominant. And then there are a few more games that are modestly successful. They're successful enough to continue to exist. But then there is a graveyard of failed live service games. But the sad fact is that basically every company, no matter how big a failure there is, they'll keep trying because one success can make up for several failures. You know, Call of Duty makes more money in three months than some publishers make in an entire year alone. I mean, you get the same problem that you have with... um... With, like, the streaming services. And I yeah, kind of hope yeah. that there is a critical mass of how many live services, even the most, you know, normie gamer will it will be willing or can afford to pay for. Um, oh, and um, so, also, be- before I forget yeah. to mention it, someone in chat has said, the way I see it, everybody worked on the Arkham Trilogy is long gone. This is something that needs to be emphasized when you think about, like, the companies that are, the studios that make games is I see it, I've, d- Bungie feels like the clearest example of this um, in terms of like an attitude, or you can look at something like Naughty Dog, right? I'll, that, give, you, at the end I'll give you a couple good examples that you should use, all right? You should uh, use okay. Back for Blood from the developers of Left <laughs> for Dead, right? Well, so that should be your first yeah. one. Your next one needs to be Obsidian from the makers of New Vegas because of Outer Worlds. Right. And mm-hmm. that like ugh, not good from what I've heard and all the reviews I've seen. And that game is fucking dead. It's gone. And the third one will probably be. Uh, ooh. I mean, I. Hmm, Bioware is, a, is another one that's been pointed Bioware's out. Bioware is a really good example. Pointer. Yeah. The, the, um, the our own arcane. Being, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could go on and on, but yeah. It's, essentially, the, the point that's worth remembering is that it's the team it's the team that makes the game. Like, the name of the company, the studio itself, that doesn't, that doesn't describe the, the same team that necessarily worked on the games that you liked. And when you're this many years removed, and the team is a lot bigger, and a lot of the people who were there before aren't there anymore, sure, same name, but it's not the same team. And it's like, it's, it's always worth remembering. It's like, well, it's the team, the, the people that were there that make the game. And just because it says Rocksteady, I mean, it's the same Rocksteady, just like it's not the same Bioware, not the same Bungie, not the same Naughty Dog. I wanted to talk quickly about the boss fights. Uh, Yeah, sure. Absolutely shocking. You got, in a game built this way, you might think, like, well, what do you expect? And it's like, that's kind of the problem. It's like, you, you, you presented the Flash, he's got super fastness, and so you're like, oh, how do we beat him? Um... Instead of going over the story parts that none of it makes any sense, you guys can check it out in Supercut, it's all pointed out. Uh, you eventually get to a point where you unlock the ability to shoot him by shooting him with a special shot. So you have to shoot him and then shoot him and then he's dead. Um, okay. So it's like, well that sounds really shit and terrible, and it's like, yes, it is. And he spends the whole fight speed forcing around all over the place, starting up tornadoes, like, firing speed force energy balls at you and stuff, and you're just like, you could just kill us. And the weird thing is they show him killing Lex Luthor, by not even, like, knowing what happened. It's one of those things, right, where Lex is standing there, and then Lex has got blood where his heart is. And he's just like, what the fuck? And it's like, yeah, the Flash just took your heart out without even realizing it. That's how fast he is. Of course he can do that. And he's evil, for Christ's sake. So of course he's gonna do whatever he needs to do to kill him, but no, it doesn't happen when it comes to Team Suicide Squad. Because of course, why would it? And then, um, you know, Green Lantern next up, boss fight is just him generating, uh, you know, constructs that I think... You could get away with that in a broad concept. You'd be like, well, yeah, that sounds like a Green Lantern fight. It's like, okay, so what does he do? It's like he creates gun turrets, guns, and big sea mines. And you got to shoot them all, and then you can shoot him. It's probably the most creative fight in the whole game, to be honest with you. Which, um, man, for a game that's pitched as Kill the Justice League, your boss fights have got to be 
really good. Yeah, you might say the game rests on them somewhat. That's a spectacle, but... Uh, I'd say it rests on them massively. And yeah, this is what it was, and uh, obviously people are pointing out, it's like, yeah, he was a marine and everything, but like, surely he's gonna create more than assault rifles and turrets and helicopters that shoot at you. It's like, it's all just shoots at you stuff, and it's like, nothing creative. Outside of the beginning of the game, where he just creates a construct that wraps around all of you, rendering you all useless, but he doesn't do that in the fight with you. Doesn't do it and several other times. Batman won. When you just stand there and shoot <laughs> well, at the big Batman until you win. Well, before that, like, you know, you get the Wonder Woman death, which is just, she stabs uh, Superman in the heart with kryptonite, right? And it goes and right through. And calls him kal right? Yeah, but that him doesn't kill him. Yeah. yeah, he's actually fine. And as people pointed out, it's like, how is it that she's able to stab through him into his heart with kryptonite, but it doesn't kill him? And uh, yeah, the answer okay. from the game is his DNA has been altered so that green kryptonite isn't as big of a deal to him. It's like, yet it can mm -hmm. stab through his heart. Mm. Okay, you have to build gr gold kryptonite. So yeah, Wonder Woman gets lasered, she's out. And then uh, you eventually fight Batman because you need to capture Batman to get Batman's DNA to figure out what DNA changes were made to Superman to synthesize a new kryptonite to be able to kill him. And so of course, when you meet Batman, you have to uh, shoot him extensively as a giant, big, spooky Batman. Because what else would it be? <laughs> some metal clips in the supercut as well that you guys will enjoy, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, so for anyone who's wondering, this is the Batman fight. Arguably the most important fight of the whole game, and it's just shoot. Shoot the big Batman. Uh, unbelievable. That's insane. That's ridiculous. It's great. So sad. I can't believe that that was something that they were like, yeah, ship it. Yeah, that's good enough. This is, you would think that fighting Batman would be like a, a scary, tense cat and mouse in the darkness style. Oh, uh, well, of, Rags, know. remember, they, they did that when you meet Batman for the first time and it's all on rails. Yeah, that's and true. It is kind completely, of completely scripted yeah. where you just run around and there are the minds that you trigger. Because they it couldn't doesn't handle having a choice. You have, to get, you have to just get to the certain point and then Batman will knock that character out and then you have to get to the next place and then Batman will knock them out. Like, they may, it's like faux interactive. It's, like it's all not a lie. Even it's anti-game. <laughs> There's so many elements that are anti-game. This is a lie. This is not what it should feel like to fight Batman. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, it's the fear toxins. Like, that was your choice. You've made this this. Why? It's just so crazy because the idea of fighting Batman as a boss battle is insane. Like, that's that's like that's really potentially very hype, but uh, not like this. Look at this. Well, and what's it's the worst thing as well is you, you knock his health all the way down, big white screen flash, and then... And uh, I love no. that. I love he the big white no. flash on after no. the dark. And then battle. it just shows this. That's great. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. Okay, that's, that's yeah. it for Batman. All right, I, I guess you got him. Well, and that's the thing, I wish it was it for yeah. Batman, actually, but it ain't. <laughs> like, true, yeah. Don't worry, after my disconnection, I then get back into the game so I'm able to watch Harley kill him. Uh... So that's the end of him, and then you get the Superman boss fight, which is shoot Superman over and over and over and over and over again. How creative. It's like, well, yeah, you can't just shoot him. You have to shoot him with a special bullet first. Like, oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Wow. Ooh. Look at look at him fly around Keep and look at you toes. shooting. Yeah, look at you go. And uh, yeah, it's wow. unreal that you'd be like, so you fight Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, and The Flash. How are those boss fights? What like, the all the are same. What are you wearing, Mahler? What do you mean? He's... You're, you're Superman. Yeah, He's, that's yeah, the that's cool right. bonus King outfit. Shock, Superman. Look at King Shot go. It's so like nuts, how... dude, because you, you kill Superman, he falls over, and then no, nobody really cares. They comment on it, like, briefly, and then the campaign just Which continues. Is... Like, you just killed yeah, Superman. Superman. It's Superman. It almost he felt was like the... it got added in later or something. I what, he wasn't him. added in later, though. He was the <laughs> face of the, the, yeah. the Justice League that you're going to fight. He was in the marketing from the very beginning. The, the Flash it, seems that was... to be the one most present. In, uh, in terms of getting the most story, yeah. Uh, at, well, and Wonder Woman. And like it does kind of feel like but... um, well, they, they've got a weird balance because Green Lantern has a significant kind of role in the campaign. Superman's the one with almost the least significant role. Which is weird when he was the face well, of the marketing Superman. of you're going to fight Superman. the Justice League. <laughs> yeah, he's Superman. He's the leader of the Justice League. And like, we're doing nothing with him. Wow.
Well, then you have to do a bunch I, of busy work, and then you can fight the final fight boss Brainiac. fight being Brainiac. And uh, and then and then they're like high five, and then it says Brainiac defeated. Like it's like you just defeated a boss in like a raid or something like. A oh, it is so. In that was the first thing I thought when I entered the arena. I was like, this looks like Destiny, where it's like a, a yeah. raid boss arena, creepy alien that's gonna get you. And yeah, uh, for him, you have to shoot him with special bullets, and you can shoot him with regular bullets. Um, the big change here is that he can absorb enemies for health, and you can poison them before he does, so it deals more damage to him. That's that's a creative oh, wow. thing that's that they did. Oh, wow, that's a slight modifier. It's so yeah. funny because they'd be like, what, well, so you making fun of us for that? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm serious, and when I say that is a significant upgrade, and it's surprising, you just seem to not understand that that's how we make boss fights. We add all these layers, all these different choices, all these different like, risk and reward skill level things that require me to actually, like, my loadout would matter, my decision on who I'm using would matter, what do what I'm doing at what times matters, who I'm against matters, all the fucking environmental hazards and levels matters, but no, just shoot, 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 just keep shooting. You played as uh, King Shark the whole time, is he your favorite character? So I was offered by the game to obviously play as any of the four, and they tell you that depending on the mission, you'll get a damage bonus by changing to the relevant character. So, for example, if you are going to do a Green Lantern-related thing, you have to play as Deadshot because he's got a personal beef with him. Uh, I decided to forego that and simply play as King Shark because I found <laughs> Boomerang and Harley's voice acting to be horrifying to listen to. It is horrific. Uh, within, like, moments, I already can't stand listening to him. And then Deadshot's just lame. He's just guy with gun. He's got like barely any King personality. Shark King Shark's the only like, one I guess I don't I kinda, hate. Yeah, yeah, I tolerate King Shark. He's fine. Yeah, I tolerate him, but it's weird because he's just sort of, he's pretty generic too. They don't do anything with King Shark as well. He's super generic, but it doesn't, well, yeah, like, he, yeah, he ain't he ain't the King Shark from the Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, he's no. not that King Shark. This is just, like but, lame, shitty King Shark that's just kind of normal. But the thing is, compared to no, again, no. oh, I'm Captain Boomerang. I'm Ooh. from Australia. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, and I got my boomerang in Ned Kelly. Oh bloody hell, Bloomin. Oh, oh gee, well, just, what a sh oh look at that Sheila, like just rattling off all of the most generic Australian things ever. This, this part that a lot of people shit on lie was like he says to Deadshot, like, "Aren't you supposed to be white?" And then he says, uh, uh, "Aren't you supposed to be shutting your damn mouth, kangaroo-looking ass?" He doesn't look. He doesn't. It's look just, it doesn't. Look, it's, it's like, oh my kangaroo. god, kangaroo-looking ass. from Australia. He and, looks like a kangaroo, even though he absolutely doesn't. Uh, doesn't. Well, and as if it's yeah. not funny enough, they would have King Shark say, "Because you're Australian." Okay. Just, I swear, I think that like all of these discount Drax characters just suck. They do. Yeah. It's it's just. By the way, if if, if you're looking for the Australian opinion on Boomerang, he's he is. Played by an Australian, you can mo most characters that you see that are like Australian, they're usually not played by an Australian, and it's fairly obvious to me. He's Australian, but he's playing it up big time. He is like he is he is drawing it out as much as he possibly can. His uh his old Australian accent there, it's uh pretty excessive. I don't know. I compared him to uh, Pim's dad. Who is funny because oh, of the contrast. Uh, yeah, 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 that's, that, that's a good example. Oh, it's down in the bloody mines! <laughs> it's, it's extreme, <laughs> and it's, uh, in contrast to Pim. Hours. Exactly, it's <laughs> yeah. funny as fuck, but then, you know, he's just Whereas constant. Whereas Pim has a much more, uh, normal Australian voice. Well, there's a, he, yeah, so something it's... I do in the Supercut is play, uh, a, a, an audio read of some of the comments that made it into the streams, right, and someone highlighted that if you told the actress for, for being... Tara Strong, I guess, and, and the guy for uh, Boomerang, if you told them I need to deliver a somber line, like, they could do it as actors, but they'd no longer sound like Harley or Boomerang. Mm -hmm. it, you can't. Well, they have, like, Harley. one mode, and it's horrifically annoying. Yeah. Well, there's a certain way that Harley Quinn speaks all the time that's it's getting really grating. Um, I'm tired of Harley Quinn. I'm tired... Can we, like, can we just, like, not... Can we retire that character for a while? Can we not... I just don't, I don't, I'm tired of that character. As you should be. Um, yeah, and I'm so we've gone over... i to be occupied by other more interesting characters in the Batman rogues gallery. I'm hoping we, like, this starts to set in now. Can we be done with her? Like, this is, this is ridiculous. Yeah. She's failed so many times. This is absurd. Oh, and um, it, it is pretty crazy. And it's not to do with Margot Robbie or Tara Strong. It's what the people who are designing this character are telling them to do. I mean, remember mm -hmm. Birds of Prey? Like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. Um, Nobody does. Yeah, the 
dramatic disrespect that's been given to the franchise, the IP, the characters, and then, of course, following on from the Arkham games. But it's mysteriously missing for almost everything to do with Wonder Woman in the game. She's the only character from DC, essentially, who gets unscathed. Um, most of them are, like, hyper retarded. She spends the whole game very heroically establishing she wants to save the Justice League no matter what, and she dies uh, saving the world from Superman somewhat. You know what I mean? Like, it's very odd, and the Suicide Squad treat her with extreme reverence, um, despite the fact that they hate almost everyone else, including but not limited to The Flash, who saves their lives personally twice, which is two times more than anyone else in the game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Very, very fucking and, odd, and, uh... Yeah, then with the whip and the... It's... I mean, it... Well, and, uh, and, and uh, not to mention the biographies, right, where his mentions, uh her power in stopping toxic masculinity while the rest of them are either neutrally described as a sort of history or shat on. Jon Stewart for the I fact don't... that he's a space cop which is fucked up. Like like the, the, the bio takes issue with him being a space cop and then the flashes which takes issue with him being too far up his own ass. <laughs> which on top of everything else when you read that you're like I think I'm done with this game. <laughs> like, I th think that's about that. Um... Well, it's... something that I've seen, which has been fascinating, is um, there's been plenty of like mainstream, main you know, journal outlets that have have reviewed the game. Like, well, the writing's good, but it, the gameplay lets it down. There's like if you, more if than if you few reviews that say that. Fuck me! Like we're well, actually see, IGN doomed. one. IGN said something like that. Let me see if I can find. IGN their little came blurb. through. They did. They gave it a five out of ten, but um, you know the the little blurb where they talk about uh, let me let me just get to it. Uh, hold on, down, 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 down. Uh, so, <laughs> um, oh, oh, wow. So this is the verdict. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is a thoroughly frustrating game to play. There are things to enjoy here, with combat that's snappy enough to carry it through a genuinely good DC comic story, <laughs> artfully dressed in high production Jesus value. Jesus Christ. But everything genuinely else just good. falls around it. Engaging mission design is nearly non-existent, the looter shooter mechanics are tight and dull, and the grotesquely repetitive post-game leaves it uh, little to nothing uh, to do of interest. The result is a bit of a mess that doesn't ever impress with any of its numerous ill-conceived ideas. It's not bad, it's just disappointing from Rocksteady, pioneers of single-player story action chasing already outdated multiplayer trends. A city of tomorrow built on unstable on the unstable foundations of yesterday. 5 out of 10. <laughs> A genuinely like good say, PC comic story. <laughs> the, image, the image that's been going around that someone made is, uh, that about sums up the game pretty well. Yeah, so this this is something else to just mention. It, it was, I think Fringy mentioned it already, uh, or Rags as well, but the game has a sudden ending. It just sort of stops. Um, you kill Brainiac. It is Brainiac, very awkward. They inject him with a thing, or they data spike him or whatever, and it just says, Brainiac eliminated. And you're like, okay. And then it says, story completed. But you're like, what? Like, it just feels so fucking weird. It's, it's like We didn't even get the epilogue cutscene. We just had them high five. And it's like, okay. And then it just cuts into the credits with way music that's way too unsuitable and loud. You skip that, and then it just cuts into uh, essentially a eulogy for Batman in Universe that is obviously supposed to be taken as a tribute to Kevin Conroy. And the tribute itself is clearly like slapdash and rushed, but it's still, I guess, appreciated. Yeah. But then, yeah, like, it's as just soon like as it finishes, over a PNG, yeah. as soon as it finishes, slap bang of you've you've unlocked a new. Uh, Thing mission Open accomplished. You've got plenty more brainiacs to kill. You've got a new gun, and then you have King Sharks. You playing as like, Look forward to like season one. I'm nerding out. Yeah, and all this shit that's live service crap. Remember, Batman's fucking dead. Is so gross. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, look at this. I mean, it's like, oh, you got all this shit unlocked. Yeah. It's like, oof. And um, I suppose on top of that, what's funny is like the the nightmare I just showed you of like fighting bosses, right? And and the Brainiac is no different than all the other ones. You kill him, and then they say like, "Oh, you got twelve more to kill." And it was funny because at the time of the stream, I was like, "No way, I have to kill twelve of these fuckers to like complete the campaign." They were like, "No, no, 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 no. That that'll be the season pass sort of stuff." And I was like, "I I hate games. <laughs> I just hate them. <laughs> like, what's going on?" And it's like, "No, I don't hate games. Nor do I hate necessarily all this coming out of modern game industry. It's just these 
this trend, this disgusting, malignant tumor on the gaming industry re represented by this game specifically. Almost all the design choices made, both story and mechanically, I'm just like, please stop. We need to Man, back it up. Like Seeing all of the little Suicide Squad there dressed up as all of these different characters and their crazy skins, it's like, man, mm -hmm. fucking hell, you yeah, know, like, doesn't help, what, does it? we don't, it's just, it just keeps reminding you, ah, yes, this is a product, uh, they want you to spend money on this, and show off all of your crazy skins and how much cooler your skins are, but there's new skins that are coming next season and you want those, because they're really cool and they make you look cool. It's like a, it's, it's all so fucking lame. I think this game might, it'll probably get the first season, and then after that, it'll be on life support if it isn't I'm guessing outright, six months. Discontinued. Yeah, I think six it'll, months. I it'll think it will get the first dead. season. It'll be like, oh good, that thing Because the first season's content is probably either mostly, probably already or done. Halfway done, yeah, yeah. It's, it's already had a lot of work stuff into it, but then after that, they're just gonna put the game on life support. And then it'll be like, I guess, what, uh, what's Rocksteady doing next? And I guess that'll be the question. Do they, do they continue to exist after this game? There's, there's a real question mark there, I'd say, on whether or not, depending on when all is said and done, how well the game actually sold. Because um, obviously you got the play numbers, but like numbers, you know, numbers of how many copies were sold. And if they say we shipped this many copies, that'll be an indication that it probably didn't sell very well. Because yep. there's something you'll notice. If a game has sold well, they will just tell you how many copies they sold. If a yep. game has not sold quite so well, they'll say we shipped this many copies or it sold really fast. These are or, the sort of we're so happy here. with the reception or we've made yeah, so many fans yeah, 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 or yeah. some bullshit like that. Mm -hmm. It'll just be, yeah, it'll just be company speak. Well, and that's, that's so anyway. That's that game. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's that game. That's right. If you I can call it that, like I'm right back. It. And uh, fortunately, the year has just begun. There's other games. I hear Tekken Eight's pretty cool. That just came oh, out. There you go. <laughs> um. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, you got that. Not. Uh, wasn't expecting this one. You know, Suicide mm. Squad to be what it was, but. I say at the beginning, it's like, I want, to, I want to know the context, give it a chance, and it's like, holy fuck, there was so much about this game that wasn't even being, not necessarily not talked about, but that I hadn't seen. And, uh, it was enlightening. Like I said, what I'm playing right now is the supercut that I made, completed, like, yesterday, so this will be out on Moolah soon enough. I'll probably do a premiere so you guys can chat with each other as you see the horrors unfold, if you didn't watch the live stream itself. And, uh, more context given to this portion of the episode. Of which brings us uh, to the end of tonight's episode. Anyway, uh, what a what a dense efab that was, eh? Oh yeah, yeah. I was goddamn. I was not ready for that video. No, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of a surprise. <laughs> I was not ready for it's it. It's just funny too because it's like, have you covered the top whatever reasons for how to save the MCU before? And it's like, yeah, we haven't covered these. <laughs> this is, yeah, this not is this shit, one. Man. We haven't seen one like this. The crazy shit. City when? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I've got it installed and it's ready to go. I just need to find slots that are good to play it because I got real BBC tomorrow. And then are we are we plan something for Wednesday. I'm not 100 percent sure actually. It's uh, about later. <laughs> um, hmm. but anyway, the, there's a lot of things that are coming out now because uh, they're all reaching the completion of their editing. One thing that's worth mentioning is the Lord of the Rings EFA movies are now they were split into individual movies and they've just been sitting unlisted. They've never made it this far. As in, they're probably going to be released. The day I release Fellowship, we'll be seeing on a Sunday. Oh, sorry, I skipped around in my own head. Sunday is possible. I need to check what I'm doing tomorrow. I might I might do City then. Um, Monday, I already skipped ahead because I thought Sunday was off and Monday. I, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it because I've got um, something IRL I got to do at an awkward time. But it, point being, um, I, I want to stream City. So you'll be getting it. It's set up and ready to go. It's, uh, I didn't mean to say real movie seats tomorrow. Anyway, the Lord of the Rings EFAP movies will be re-released as individual films to finally evade copyright. I think that it'll, it'll work. If it doesn't, we'll just, we're going to give up at that point. When they do, I'm going to change all of the thumbnails to match the original trilogy going unlisted and those coming out as individuals, and I'll link them if you want to go back to the comment section on it, but that's going to be how it works, um, which I don't know if it's going to be weird for any kind of 
playlists. I think it'll still make sense. It's just the trying to make everything make sense. Like I said, and, uh, Loki's still coming out. That should be Wednesdays. And we have begun watching Halo Season 2. Uh-huh. It so, sucks. It's shit. So, what you guys can God. expect is that that will be coming out as individual TV episodes. But that once the season's mm -hmm. done... We will be having an EFAP episode to cover the whole thing with John, ER, and Actman. Uh, hopefully, when they come, we, we've let them know. But the team we've got for EFAP TV is different, so that we have a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a mix. You know, it's gonna be nice and fun. Everyone's looking forward to Halo, right? Halo season two. Oh yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Well, I'm right. seeing more than a yeah. few people saying, "Wait, it's out." Which, by the way, that's <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, not great for a show that costs a lot of money to make. Yeah, uh, that there are that many people who are surprised that it's even out. That's right, Halo season two. It's right, mm -hmm. it's out. They release the first two episodes, and we'll get a new present every week. Yeah, think yeah, the next on next right. one's out in like five days. So. It's not good. What? Yes, it's gonna be. Yeah, I know. It's what a surprise. Oh, but they they listen to the feedback. It's gonna they're gonna look. It's Reach. Remember Reach? Oh wow. Oh yeah. That's oh yeah. yeah. So. Um, I think that was all I wanted to mention about the future things. So, what do you, uh, you anything you guys want to mention? Oh well, I'm I'm just working. Uh, I'm working on uh, no. I'm working on those Halo episodes. So that's that's one. Of them working on. Yeah, and the the Loki ones yeah, are yeah. all Fringy's work as well. So they're uh, being, they're all enjoy. they're all done. Yeah, they're, yeah. There's nothing stopping We're just them. Just bouncing from great show to great show. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, well, you know, get excited for whatever may come next. You know, uh, and, uh, I guess for now though, we're gonna wish you a wonderful night to to, to sleep right, in everyone. or to wake up in, and a happy new year. That too. So yeah, bye bye. Goodbye, see everyone. Everybody. Thanks for being bye here. Bye. We will see, see you later. And don't forget to subscribe to Nebula, where you can get EFAP episodes and movies one week in advance. Don't actually. <laughs>